long, play games, win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24-7. Ford F-Series has been keeping the good times rolling as the best-selling truck in America 44 years straight. And with the smartest F-150 and most capable Super Duty ever built, this dynasty will keep right on rolling. Drive the new 2021 F-150 at your Southern Quality Ford dealer, proud partner of the LSU Tigers. Based on 1977 through 2020 calendar year sales. Tiger fans, did you know that Rouse's Markets has their very own digital coupons? Digital coupons are coupons you can access online. Get offers for your favorite national brands at www.rouse's.com and redeem them at any Rouse's Markets. With Rouse's Markets digital coupons, there's no need to keep track of paper coupons. Everything is online. Just present your phone number at checkout. Digital coupons, just one more way you save shopping at Rouse's Markets. Official supermarket of LSU Athletics. Two superstar athletes and um, one guy who talks about superstar athletes. Once again, here are former Tigers, Brandon Taylor and Marlon Favorite, along with your host, Hunt Palmer. This is LSU Game Day from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, the Whataburger Jr. Broadcaster Program gives Tiger fans between the ages of 6 and 12 the opportunity to join us live on air to be interviewed before each LSU home game. To enter your child, all you have to do, download the LSU Sports mobile app, click on the Whataburger Jr. Broadcaster ad, and hit the like button for your chance to win. Winners will also receive four tickets to the next home game against Texas A&M. Make sure to visit the new Whataburger locations near Burbank and Nicholson coming soon. This time for our Whataburger Jr. Broadcaster Program, Henry Nicholson is our guest. Everybody give it up for Henry. Henry, how we doing? Doing good. Doing good. Where are, you, where are you from, Henry? New Iberia. New Iberia. Where do you go to school? Highland Baptist. All right. Like to hear it. All right. What's your favorite thing to do when you come to Baton Rouge to watch the Tigers play? Definitely tailgate. Tailgating? All right. You can play a little football, get some good food to eat. I love to hear it. Love to hear it. All right. Um, tell me about who, who's your favorite player on the team? Definitely Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Jets. That team was fun to watch. You're, you're a wide receiver guy. I see you got the Jamar Chase jersey on. You like Jets Jefferson. Yes, you sir. play some wide receiver? Yes, sir. I love to hear that. All right. Tell me about uh, what you expect to see from the Tigers on the field tonight. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but okay. it's not going to be close. All right. So what are we thinking score-wise? Definitely 35 17. 35-17. We'll take that. We'll take a win any way we can get it this year. It's been a little bit of a bumpy ride. But I appreciate you joining us, Henry. Anybody you want to say hey to out there? My family. <laughs> give him a wave. Everybody, give it up for Henry Nicholson. He's our Whataburger Jr. announcer of the game. Henry, enjoy the game. Go Tigers. Thank you. Go Tigers. We'll take another timeout, come back, get you some scores. Before that, we will go to last week's rewind for LSU and Arkansas right here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. This is Tiger Rewind. An audio archive of LSU Fighting Tiger football's last time out on the gridiron from the LSU Sports Radio Network. It's back to the gridiron and back to football this week after the annual bye. A matchup that in many years past drew the focus of college football. A few years in recent history, it was the game at the center of the sports universe. Not quite that luster coming in this evening, but nonetheless, a rivalry that endures and will endure for many years to come. Number two in the first college football playoff rankings, the Alabama Crimson Tide welcome in your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Atkins waiting on the snap. He'll get it, and they're going to try to fake it. He'll throw it, and catch made at the 45-yard line of Alabama. It's going to be Jack Mashburn inside the 35, the 30, all the way down near the Alabama 25-yard line. The jump pass from Avery Atkins, who faked the punt, ran right up to the middle to the line of scrimmage, then went airborne. Not sure his vertical, but he got high enough. And he drops the pass to Mashburn, and Mashburn... Drives deep into Bama territory. They pull it out of the gadget bag, and it works against the Crimson Tide. The Tigers back in business. Johnson trying to drop it off into the flat. Does to Brian Thomas near side. He will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. And Brian Thomas Jr. with his first touchdown on the season. First career touchdown for the freshman wideout. And an eight-yard touchdown gets the Tigers on the board. 6-0 LSU. Much has been made this week coming into this game. How thin LSU was across the board defensively, but certainly in the secondary. Young with pressure coming. He'll go down. 
down at midfield. Tigers bring the blitz. Mike Jones Jr. gets to him and gets home. A loss of 12. Trip receivers wide side of the field to the left. Lone receiver Devontae Lee to the right side. Johnson taking some time. Now calls for the football. He has it. Looking left. Drops it off underneath. Besh has it at the five. Besh squirts through two defenders into the end zone. Touchdown. Fighting Tigers. Eight-yard touchdown pass. A good five of that earned after the catch for Jack Besh. His second touchdown of the season, and the Tigers have made it a ball game once again with 2.27 remaining here in the third quarter. It's 20 to 13 with a point after upcoming. There's 10 on the play clock. LSU's got to hurry. They got to get half a yard. Nearly everybody in the box for Alabama. Ty Davis Price has the first down and then some. Ty Davis Price near side 30, 20, 15, 10, pulled down from behind and around the seven yard line. Hey now. A 38 yard run on fourth and less than a yard. Young calls for the snap. He's got it. Backpedaling. In trouble. And brought down. Ball is out. Tigers fall on it. There's a scrum. Mass of humanity down around the 41-yard line. LSU lobbying. They have it. And they do. Tiger football. But it all is predicated on this fourth and 10 from the 38-yard line of the Tigers down 20 to 14 with 18 seconds remaining. Johnson looking. Still looking, still looking, delivers. Catch made by Thomas in midfield. Breaks one tackle, gets out of bounds at the Alabama 45-yard line. We've got time, Chris, for two plays here. Got to get something out of bounds to take the shot. Tigers trailing by six, 20 to 14. Johnson with the snap. Johnson throws to the sideline. Catch made. Jeray Jenkins out of bounds at the 30. Nick Saban almost makes the tackle. He's so upset. He stepped right in front of Nick Saban, who looked like he wanted to absolutely tackle Jeray Jenkins. So with five seconds, this is it. Johnson's got to get it to the end zone. Flag is out. Throws it to the end zone, and it is broken up. But a flag came out. Clock hits triple zeros on that incompletion in the end zone. But let's see. Hold the phone. We'll see what the infraction is all about. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 61. The penalty is defined. The game is over. That'll do it. Alabama survives here in Tuscaloosa, but not without a group of fighting Tigers bringing the heat from Baton Rouge. 20 to 14 is the final here at Bryant Denny Stadium. That was a Tiger Rewind. Tiger Rewind. LSU Game Day continues after this quick break on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Back 
back with more LSU Game Day. Time now to go around the SEC. The latest scores and standings in the Southeastern Conference on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Uh, let's take a spin around the Southeastern Conference. Morning slate was an absolute snoozer. Number one, Georgia 56, Charleston Southern at 7. Georgia remains undefeated and will be atop the college football playoff rankings once again this week. Texas A&M blasts Prairie View in their tune-up for LSU, 52-3, the final in that one. Mississippi State crushed Tennessee State, 55-10, and Kentucky handled New Mexico State, second straight beating by the Aggies in the SEC game. Kentucky 56, New Mexico State 16. 230 window was quite interesting. Alabama's offense championship level. Their defense is not. Alabama does survive though against Arkansas though. 42-35 the final. Arkansas had an onside kick with a minute to go. Alabama recovered it, ran out the clock and the Hogs come up short against number two Alabama who will have the Iron Bowl next week. Of course, two games in progress right now. We are going to overtime in Columbia, Missouri. 16-16 to is the final guys. I think if Missouri wins this game, I don't believe Dan Mullen will be retained at Florida. That's what I believe. Yeah. Um, so, and the other one in uh, that is in progress: Auburn seven, South Carolina zero. That is in Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina has two tries to get bowl eligible. They have Auburn tonight at home. Then they will play Clemson next week. Shane Beamer trying to get bowl eligible in his first year in Columbia, South Carolina. This evening slate, Vanderbilt traveling to Ole Miss Senior Day in the Grove. They'll also honor Matt Corral, who has announced he will not be back next year. And South Alabama will head to Knoxville, Tennessee for a 6.30 kickoff on ESPNU. All season long, keep an eye out for members of the Bingle Brigade presented by Tabasco. The Bingle Brigade is loaded up and ready to give out LSU and Tabasco branded giveaway items to Tiger fans at most LSU athletic events. Tabasco, the official hot sauce of the LSU Tigers. Take a timeout, come back with more. It's LSU Game Day presented by Yearview on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Acme Oyster House Action. Looks like a fried crawfish tail story of oyster shooter champion, Steve. Yeah, I'd say char-grilled in an herb butter sauce, Bob. True words never spoken, setting the soft-shell crab platter for all of us. Well said, a game of onion rings, craw puppies versus hush puppies. Indeed, this team never misses on the food. Jill? Oh, can't argue with crab cakes and gumbo down here, Bob. One team, one stomach. Thanks, Jill. Back after this tasty commercial message. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Hargrove is a proud supporter of the Tigers with over 2,000 teammates and 500 in the Baton Rouge area. More than just an engineering, automation, and project execution firm, what Hargrove builds best are relationships. Hargrove knows that what matters most is making a difference in our communities. Through the Hargrove Foundation, they contribute to hundreds of causes across the country, including many here in the Baton Rouge area. Experience the difference of working alongside a 100% employee-owned team. To learn more, visit Hargrove-EPC.com. One winning team. That's Hargrove. Go Tigers! Our Lady of the Lake, just like LSU, is anchored by deep roots put down almost a century ago. We share a singular vision to advance health, education, and research to serve the incredible people of Louisiana. Our partnership with LSU is inspired by our passions for knowledge and our commitments to our community and healthy Louisiana families. Together, there's nowhere we can't go. Our Lady of the Lake is proud to be the health care provider of LSU Athletics. With Early Paycheck, you can get your direct deposit up to two days earlier. That's another reason banking with Capital One is the easiest decision ever. Even easier than deciding to open the biggest birthday gift first. Happy birthday to you. Which one are you going to open first? The pony. Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is banking with Capital One even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. No fees or minimums on new consumer accounts. Capital One and A member FDIC. Hollingsworth Richards Ford is a proud sponsor of the LSU Tigers. For over 30 years, we've been a member of LSU's transportation team. And when you buy your new Ford at Hollingsworth Richards Ford, you'll get peace of mind with our nationwide lifetime powertrain warranty. That's right. A nationwide powertrain warranty with every new Ford purchase. Only at Hollingsworth Richards Ford, located at 7787 Florida Boulevard. Or online 24-7 at HollingsworthRichardsFord.com. Go Tigers! See dealer for details. 
previewing today's LSU matchup, updating scores, and giving out opinions like beads at Mardi Gras. This is LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Acadian Ambulance would like to remind everyone to drive safely. Always wear your seatbelt. Never text and drive. LSU and ULM tonight inside Tiger Stadium. An 8 o'clock kickoff. Thousands lining Victory Hill just to our left, waiting for the Tigers to come down the hill and enter the stadium. Kickoff just after 8 o'clock, as I said, tonight in Death Valley. Hunt Palmer, Brandon Taylor, Marlon Favorite with you. Guys, let's talk a little bit about this LSU offense. I think the story this week, obviously, with Garrett Nussmeyer getting all but two series, the first two series last week, it was his opportunity. Uh, and Ed Ogeron said he did not beat Max Johnson out. Therefore, Max is going to be the starter. The decision was made later in the week that Garrett Nussmeyer will take his redshirt year, so he will not play in any of the last two games this year. So it's Max Johnson's show. He obviously was great at the end of last year in a couple of games, and then this year it's just kind of been inconsistent for Max. What do you want to see from him in this one? Uh, Hunt, I really want to see a quarterback. You took the word right out of my mouth. Go play con- consistent ball tonight. Short. Long pass, short pass, um, checks, everything you have to do today, make it look crisp because you want to prepare for, like I said, this, this two-week, you know, ride out of the home games. So I, I just really want to see a guy look uniform in the pocket, take everything that you did at practice this week that, that solidified you as the guy for this week and apply tonight in, a, in tonight's play. My concern last week was the psyche of the two quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Would, you, would you embrace the challenge of going out there and, and competing for the job, or would you feel like every mistake may be the last play you get to play in the game? There's just, it's just a tough thing mentally to deal with. Max doesn't have to deal with that because Garrett's not coming in this game. The backup quarterback is, is a matter of doubt, a, a, a red shirt. So, I mean, a, a, a a walk on so it's max's team um and and he's gonna go out there and play and it's his for four quarters if that's what it takes so he's he's been pretty good with the intermediate stuff and the short stuff it's the deep ball where max has struggled a little bit just hasn't put enough air on it hadn't been accurate with it just hasn't been his strength that's something i hope changes tonight brandon well hunt you gotta you can't put it out we can't put it all on max yeah, his his wide receiving core it's just been like his offensive line it's been interchanged throughout yep. the entire season Throughout the entire time he's been playing here at LSU, right? To be honest, like, and it's it's hard to get consistent, accurate deep ball throws when you your your, your wide receiver core is interchangeable yeah. because every player is different. But what I want to see from Max is solidify your starting position going into next season, mm-hmm. like. You're just not the starter for the night. Don't just be the starter for the night. Be the starter for the 2022 team as well because leave no doubt and go out there and be confident. Had that same killer instinct we seen when you came in and played yeah. against Florida. He has it in him. He just has to get it out and bring it out. And the entire team has to do that as well with him. It just can't be on him. Yeah, it'd be great for him to get off to a really good start tonight. And and something else that's going to help him a little bit is LSU's running game, which they've kind of found here over the mm-hmm. last month. Ty Davis Price has run for over 100 yards uh, multiple times over the last couple of months. Ran for over 100 last week. Ran for over 100 against Alabama. Um, I, I still am shocked at that because of how terrible LSU's run game was early in the season. But they found something, and Max can, can lean on that a little bit tonight too, Faye. Yeah, they developed a rhythm. You know, you have a new OC coming in. You have a new offensive line coming, uh, offensive line coach coming in. Uh, it, it's, it's a little, it's a learning each other process. That came alive, as you mentioned, about a month ago, really against Florida. We, well, truthfully, against Kentucky, we started to see a little spark. Um, and, and it was a loss. Hello, somebody. But we saw a little spark in our running game and then against Florida and so on and so forth. So something to build off. Of. And, look, here's another thing, guys, we're not mentioning. We do know that there's going to be a coaching change around here. Here's yep. an opportunity for these guys when whoever comes in here, when they're looking at – like I got my iPad right now for our folks looking at us on Facebook – if I, if I have my iPad out right now, I'm looking at some film. How did this guy do? Okay, after the, the coach was announced that the coach was not going to resume with the team, did their play go down? All that stuff matters moving forward. So, hey, just remember, Tigers, that's your resume up, up on the line as well. Yeah, when you talk about the run game, the playmakers on the outside also have to help Max a little bit. And the only guy who's really been consistent – for the entirety of the season has been Jack Besh. Everybody else has kind of been moving parts, whether it's injuries, whereas this guy had a breakout game here, this guy here. They haven't had any consistently. Outside of Besh, though, Brandon, who do you point to to say, hey, this guy needs to needs to step up? Uh, 
It's really hard to say. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's, it's been I me. Mean, you had Jerry Ray Jenkins. He had a breakout game. And then where has he been? Yeah. It's, it's, I think that he needs to lean on Bess a lot more than what he has been doing. That's just safety net. That's That should be your first read off top to me. Because one, any team that has a great tight end, as you can tell, the 2019 team. Yep. You have a dominant offense, and you feed from the inside to the out. One thing I know about Max Johnson, his his throws in between the hashes are phenomenal. Everything outside of the hashes are kind of shaky. So work that inside of the hash and then build your confidence and then start making your throws outside. I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but Jacob Hester on, on local radio this week said – Basically, 70% of the plays Besh is on the field are passes. 70% or more than 70% of the plays Jack Mashburn's on the field have been runs. you gotta, you got to vary that a little bit. That's too easy for opposing defensive coordinators to look at it and say, hey, okay, this guy's in there, they're running power. This guy's in there, they're throwing something in short and intermediate. you got to mix it up a little bit, Faith. You, you, you have to mix it up because, again, the, the, uh, some of these staffs in the SEC has 20, 30, and sometimes it's Alabama, 40 different <laughs> analysts. So it, it's tons of people watching film. Hey, I noticed every time, uh, I remember this when I was a D coordinator at, uh, at Dillacell. I can remember just, okay, how many times they did this play out of 12 personnel? Who's in on, on, on 21? And, and they pay attention to that rhythm. I mean, it's like playing checkers at that point for them. But if you mix it up, if you do a little run with Best on the field, and another guy, too, that emerged and, and, and I thought should have been should be used a lot today and moving forward is, is Malik Neighbors. Yeah, I'm going to talk about him. He, he, he's a guy that, that has been some for sure hands outside of Best, but mixing it up is important, huh? Look, Neighbors is a guy that I talked about a lot in August uh, and have mentioned him multiple times on this pregame show, and he's not really um, made a huge impact thus far. And I, it's in there. And I don't know if it's going to come out at any point this year, if, we'll, if you have to wait until next year, because he kind of fell behind because of the injury. But he's got something to him. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a dog in him. There's some fight in him. And, and I saw it in August, and then he kind of got lost in the shuffle, and it's hard to catch back up. Brandon, I use this example all the time, because I think Malik Neighbors has some Jarvis Landry in him. Jarvis, when he was a freshman in 11, hurt his foot in camp and never caught really back up because you're in the middle of a season, you are trying to win a championship, you can't really work. It was Reuben, it was Odell, and that it was good enough there. And then you saw what Jarvis did his, his sophomore year when he had the full spring and, and summer and off season to get back healthy. That may be what happens from Malik Neighbors next year he, he emerges, but I'm hoping over the last two weeks we find him. Oh, yes, indeed. And that's what's going on now with him in this situation. It's just you just constantly feeding that beast. And I was there, Jar- Jarvis's freshman year, and then him and Odell coming in at the same time. Odell emerging more as a freshman than Jarvis. And then that sophomore year came around, and he just took off like a wildfire. And I think that's what we will see in Neighbors, and I hope that's what we see in him. Man, Florida goes down to Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. Florida got the ball first. They scored a touchdown, kicked the extra point. Missouri scored in overtime, went for two, and got it. Missouri beats Florida. I believe Dan Mullen will be fired. Oh, yeah, I don't think be, he's going to make it out of this year. It might be a Sunday news. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if they'll let him coach against Florida State or not. Um, right now they're not even bowl eligible, so we'll see. But I, I believe Florida is going to enter this coaching pool that LSU's in, that USC's in. Uh, and it's going to be fascinating <laughs> over the next couple of weeks it to see, see how things move. That's my opinion. We, obviously no announcement on that. But Florida has lost, and I don't think Dan Mullen is going to survive this. Things are just beyond repair in Gainesville, in my opinion. Tiger fans, all LSU Sports Radio Network broadcasts are streamed free on lsusports.net. To listen live on your phone, download the new LSU mobile app. The app is free and download it on the iTunes Store or Google Play. Visit lsusports.net slash apps for details. The Golden Band from Tigerland has come down Victory Hill. They have entered the stadium. Thousands are about to follow them, and we are going to have an awesome Saturday night in Death Valley. LSU and ULM, and we're getting you ready for it right here on LSU. Game Day presented by your view on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more, for their campus voice, 
their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast, on the LSU Sports mobile app, and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. At the tailgate, at home, in the car, or on the water, your LSU Fighting Tiger football companion. This is LSU Game Day, presented by CST on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time now for our ingredients for success. They're always presented by Albertsons. Come by and get the freshest seafood in town. Keys to the game, Fave. What you got? Uh, this, this team runs speed option, so playing contain pitch, uh, making sure you're playing true on the dive. Just just being technically sound tonight is going to be huge. So I just think overall, just just, just keep you contained and, and, and play 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 it to the T. LSU's linebackers play has been great uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Blake Baker deserves a ton of credit for that. Damone Clark has been great. Micah Vasquez has been excellent. Uh, they've seen Mike Jones emerge and kind of fill his roles that outside backer spot. They didn't want to play him at nickel. They didn't want to play him. And, and when he played on the inside, he just wasn't wasn't very good. And they found him a spot on the outside where he's got some space. All those guys have been really good. My hope is that tonight Damone Clark racks up 10 or 12 more tackles and we can inch him towards leading the country in tackles, maybe winning a Buckus Award, being an All-American, because he deserves all that. Right, man, and it's just the energy that comes with LSU's linebackers. We got first-rounders, baby, Patrick Queen, you know, Devin White, and, and I that's, keep going. That's the young players right now, that's why you do not transfer. Damone Clark mm-hmm. lost his starting position last year, yeah. and now he's about to win a Buckus Award this year. Good, good point, B. You control your destiny, not we, nobody else. We shall see. Brandon Taylor, your key to the game? My key to the game is not being predictable on offense. Like <laughs> you said earlier, Hunt, we got to mix it up, change the personnel, change the players on the field, and just mix it up with good, great run, a great pass, and keep your quarterback off the ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the LSU offense. Hopefully they can hit some big plays, have some fun out there. It hadn't been a great, great stretch for them. Um, they put up more points, and they were more productive against Alabama than maybe maybe we thought, but um, they hadn't really broken free and, and gotten out there and, and made some big plays in a little while. Hopefully that's the case for them tonight. Um, you know, for me, my key to the game tonight is is going to be energy because I question it. Uh, I question the, the drive. These guys have fought so hard the last couple of weeks and have come up short. You know the end is near. You know that your coach is not going to be here in a couple of weeks. you got a lot of guys that have been hurt. And it's as I said to start the show, it's easy to get up to play Alabama on the road in front of 100,000. It's easier to get up against Arkansas in an SEC game coming out there and playing under the lights of Tiger Stadium. When you look across the way and you see the ULM helmets and you realize that you're four and six and it's an eight o'clock game and the stands aren't going to be full, there's a lot of reasons for the guys not to be able to bring their energy tonight. Now, they have not shown that they are going to do that. It's just a question that I have. And if they bring energy tonight, I think they'll play really well, and I think they'll have a lot of fun. I think they'll win the game very comfortably, but it's just something that I I have to question. We've seen games like this. Towson comes to mind. Of course, uh, Troy a couple of years ago where you just didn't didn't quite see it from the guys. You hope that didn't happen tonight, Brandon. Oh, yes, indeed. And and for these players, like, it's a pride thing. It's better to finish this season 500 than to finish it. The bowl game on the line. And you got a bowl game on the line as well. And just knowing that you can go out here and play dominant football, and then you have a Jimbo Fisher team, Hunt's favorite team, mm-hmm. coming we'll in, talk about next, them coming in next show. week. It's like this is all enough. this is this this is all planned out to be a, a, a great way to finish this season heading into the 2022 season. 
And, and I think the, the older guys are the guys that are kind of leading that charge. You would think some of those guys might be the ones that would check out and the younger guys would take the bull by the horns. We saw a lot of that last year with Max coming into play, with Kayshawn going nuts as a freshman on that team. Um, and, and you know, But the older – Damone Clark has just been a warrior on this team. I've asked the last three coaches we've done the uh, – the, the assistant coach interview of the week. I've asked the last three guys about Damone Clark just because it's so fascinating to me. Um, his career trajectory, the fact that he's wearing 18, his energy level, his his uh, his level of play has just been it's been such a treat to watch. And that's a guy who's bringing energy to this team when really he doesn't have to. It's a mindset with him. It starts from between the neck and on top of the head where you know you got the little trying the little sponge look like me. You know what I'm saying? They try, nobody don't want that a plain fade pad. that he got going on that would be. But it starts there for him and. and you can see that increase. You, you see the leadership. I was listening to uh, to, to you, Jay Healy, and Matt Muscona earlier, and they was running the player interviews. I'm listening to the maturity in his voice, the way he's celebrating and acknowledging his other teammates. He has the, the qualities of a leader. But Brandon, he, I want to echo on something Brandon said earlier, Hunt. This is the this is the privilege of not transferring, staying and fight. You have to build character. And uh, not to get off subject, but that's a surefire way to hurt your chance to go to the NFL yeah. because unless your dog is in it and it's, a, and it's a move that makes sense, clearly Joe Burrow, it made sense for him to train. He didn't want to leave Ohio State, yeah. but he was left with no choice, so it worked out for all of us. So being able to do that, you know, really matters moving forward. Those are our ingredients for success presented by Albert. Still a ton to get to here on the pregame show. <laughs> We've uh, got a game day forecast coming up. We'll go inside the mind of the Tigers as we do every single week. Brian Haldane will have a scoreboard update for you from around college football. Our assistant coach interview of the week, Tommy Moffitt. You really won't want to miss that one. It was really, really fun. He sat down with Coach uh, on Wednesday night and had uh, had a ball doing that. We, uh, we always enjoy our time with head coach, Tom, with uh, assistant co- uh, strength coach Tommy Moffitt. And Gene Pawnee uh, will jump aboard just here in a couple of segments to talk about this ULM football team. We'll come back with a lot more. This is LSU Game Day presented by your view on the LSU Sports. Radio Network. Hey, LSU fans, did you know that Planet Fitness is the official gym of LSU Athletics? That's right. And as an LSU Athletic fan, you can get a special offer of just $1 down at any of the six Baton Rouge area locations with offer code PFLSU. You'll get free fitness training, tons of cardio and strength equipment, and a totally friendly staff. Planet Fitness is a comfortable place to go at your own pace. You can find out more at planetfitness.club slash LSU. And go Tigers. Keen Miller, serving the legal needs of business and industry across Louisiana and Texas. They are dedicated to providing quality, efficient, and cost-effective legal services from offices in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport, Lake Charles, Houston, and the Woodlands. Learn more now at KeenMiller.com. That's K-E-A-N-M-I-L-L-E-R.com. Linda Perez-Clark, Managing Partner. Announcer is a non-lawyer spokesperson. Paragon Casino Resort is your place for pregame fun and postgame celebrations. Hit it big on Louisiana's favorite gaming floor. Swing by our award-winning golf course, then step inside a sports lover's dream at the draft room. With over 80 beers, next-level dining, and wall-to-wall live sports, it's your new game day HQ. When it's all done, relax at our full-service spa, then rest up in the comfort of your hotel room or RV. This is how we play at Paragon Casino Resort, located in Marksville, Louisiana. Ah, summer is here. Now's the perfect time to enjoy your amazing back yard. Unless you have a mosquito problem, contact the experts at J&J Exterminating. Whether you need a one-time treatment or a monthly control program, call us or go online for a free estimate from a fully certified technician. And take advantage of $50 off initial service. Make this summer the best ever with J&J Exterminating. J&J Exterminating. Yeah. Your team is on a three-game winning streak, and you're convinced it's because you've worn your lucky football jersey and haven't taken it off. Not for work, a wedding, or even bathing. With Cox, you can actually wear it all season long because we give you game day coverage and content 24-7. So join us and dress accordingly. Hey, Tiger fans, just say Fan Zone into your Contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. Play games, win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24-7. Boot meets ball, and we've got football in Louisiana on a Saturday night in Death Valley. Leading you up to LSU Fighting Tiger football. 
This is LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. If you're looking for a place to live near campus as the official sponsor of the Tiger Stadium student section, there's a Scion community for every lifestyle. Whether it's close to campus, luxury, or a little more space, Allite, Ion, Red Point, and Lark Baton Rouge will have what you need. Visit live-batonrouge.com for more details. Hunt Palmer, Brandon Taylor, Marlon Favorite with you, getting ready for LSU and ULM. You know, this Warhawk team, it, you know, is it's it's a non-conference game, but the intrigue there is is the coaching staff that they're bringing here into Baton Rouge. Obviously, uh, Tommy Bowden, uh, Terry Bowden, uh, the Bowden family, obviously was head coach at Auburn for years, came down from Akron. He is piloting the ship here in his first year. And his offensive coordinator, Rich Rodriguez, who LSU last saw as John Rice Plumley was running for approximately 9,000 yards uh, against <laughs> against LSU uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, back in 2019. His son Rhett has taken some snaps quarterback um, so you know interesting coaching staff interesting game uh, it could be up for debate but uh, interesting coaching staff they bring in Brandon you played in a lot of these games in state schools coming into Tiger Stadium and the guys that you know from the high school days from recruiting days and uh, and guys that really want to come in here and this is their chance to put on a show in the in the biggest arena in the state and a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the games that I played against in-state guys that I played with a lot of them I played against in high school, and mm-hmm. some of them just didn't get the same look that I got or they didn't have the same opportunity, but they could play at a, a top major university outside of state or actually LSU, but everybody can't get that same opportunity and that chance. And those guys are hungry, and, and they want to come in to prove a point, and they're going to come in here and play hard, and, and they're going to come in here and fight, and they know that this is a down year for LSU, and they want to take advantage of the opportunity. We know Rich Rodriguez, and his offense is adapted place to place, and they're real run heavy with, with when he had John Rice Plumley over there at Ole Miss at Michigan, had Denard Robinson. We remember the great West Virginia teams with Denard, with, uh, with Steve Slayton and Pat White back in, in 07. Um, you've seen Rich Rodriguez for, for years in college football, Fave. What do you, what's the key on LSU's defense to, to slowing down his offense? Well, especially you mentioned a name that uh, that we, we think we're we thankful for, and that's Pat White uh, yes. losing that game Believe for us it. in 07. Uh, but but, but just being disciplined, I think I mentioned it in the keys, just making sure that you're setting the edge if you're a defensive end, not letting your eyes get you in trouble, peeking inside, because that's what they'll hit us uh, hit us with. Um, they had a um, big play defensively uh, against uh, Kentucky to start the game off, you yeah. know, so they can they can shift the energy to their side. So again, that's not why we don't want to get caught sleeping off the wheel. And you mentioned the coaches, um, New Orleans native, uh, Eastern coach, smart, intelligent guy, Tony Hall. He comes home, well, down south today. Um, he coached at ULLM, coached out of Hawaii. So, you know, this is a team. You mentioned co- head coach, Coach Terry Bowden, that you have some in-state talent. You have a few, you know, the guys that, you know, might have been getting some looks from Clemson and then other players became uh, involved, and boom, you have those type of guys. And Brandon mentioned this earlier, too. These are the type of teams we play it on, three- or four-star guys, so you have those type of players that you want to be disciplined tonight. Let's talk about the guys up front for LSU. I know it's your favorite thing to do. Neil Farrell has been awesome from start to finish all year. Why? Because he really, and I talked to Neil this offseason, he really started to focus in on just becoming a better technician making better decisions, not not letting himself get thrown out of his gap or, or, or playing too high or making sure that, that, that he's playing with good hands. We've seen all that. He's, he's been grading out in the, the top interior um, guys in the SEC on the defensive line. So, And I think the maturity, too. You got school. I remember that Hunt graduating already can focus. My best year here was my fifth year. Wasn't our best year on nah. record. Nah. <laughs> but, but performance-wise, I had more sacks that year. I had more tackles for loss. I had Popeye arms on the field with me returning yeah. balls for me and stuff <laughs> like that. So it, it was, you know, it's, I was more mature. I finished. I was graduated already. That's Neil Farrell. He's already already got school out the way and he can just like Joe Burrow in his last year focus on just becoming a better uh, player. It's such a, a great thing for young players like Mason Smith and Jacoby and Guillory and Jaquel and Roy and those guys to have Neil Farrell, Glenn Logan, Andre Anthony, those guys in front of them to kind of lead the way. Those are guys that could have moved on and, and tried their hand their professional career but they came back and I think just invaluable for some of those young guys to get that, that year under them. Brandon, you know that as good as anybody. Oh yes indeed man because I know my junior year people, were, people was in my ear Oh, you need to go ahead and leave, leave. 
And lo and behold, the good Lord, he blessed me with a foot injury against Alabama. <laughs> and I was forced to come back to my senior yep, yep. and play the best football I ever played in my life my senior year. And that year was just magical. And it, it's basically the highlight of my football career. And, and I'm thankful for that. And the NFL is not going anywhere. It's, it, it will be there. Yep. I promise you that. And truth be told, for most players, well, for any player going into the NFL, that's you going into the end of your career. Yep. Basically, like, that's where your career will end. And it's, it's, it's easy to get in the NFL. It's hard to stay there. I promise you that. <laughs> Big Fave Big Fave can attest to that. Yeah. It, Hello, it's, somebody. It's a cutthroat <laughs> industry, and this is more like family. And just enjoy this and take it all in because it don't last forever. This way you want to stay at, Hunt. I'm telling you, if you can stay, if you can pull a Neil Farrell, do it. You want to stay in school, I swear, improve I, your stock. I, I wish I was cursing Pittman, man. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Seven years. <laughs> Two national championships, all that. Yes, indeed. Tailgating is back. Revelry and LSU Athletics bring you the two-minute turnkey tailgate. Choose your game, choose your add-ons, show up on game day and tailgate like a champion. Reserve yours today at RevelryTeam.com. Jacob Hester rolling through. Jacob, Jacob Hester, everybody. Hester, everybody. What a everybody. guy. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Take a time out. We'll come back and chat with Gene Pawnee talking about these ULM Warhawks. That's next on LSU Game Day presented by your view on the LSU Sports Radio Network. He's got a seam. He's down the near side. Has. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports Mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. Getting you ready for LSU Fighting Tiger football. Time now for Tiger Roundtable with a scouting report on the Tigers' opponent. This is LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time now to chat about these ULM Warhawks that come into Tiger Stadium. And to do that, we bring aboard Gene Pony, longtime media member here in Northeast Louisiana and uh, proud ULM alum. Gene, thank yeah, you for some time. How are you? Hey, great seeing you, honey. I appreciate the opportunity, man. Absolutely. So let's talk about this this ULM team. Obviously, the intrigue from afar is just look at the names on this coaching, on staff. coaching staff. I mean, you look at it. What that was? I was shocked when I saw that they were hiring Terry Bowden to come down to Monroe. What was your reaction to that? Well, it almost didn't happen, and all of a sudden it started gaining a little momentum when 
he got his name into it. And Terry let it be known uh, that he wanted the job. He wanted to get back into the game and uh, wanted the opportunity to be a head coach. And uh, the more and more people started networking, I guess, for lack of a better word, you know, it, it happened, and it's been a, a great thing. It really, it has really been. has. The team has played really hard. They played really well. They've strung a couple of huge upsets, which we'll talk about. But obviously, we want to get to the coaching staff as well. He brings on pretty big, pretty high-profile offensive coordinator. Well, when he brought in Rich, every and you know, there was some talk before even Terry got the gig that if he got it, Rich was coming with him. Uh, you know, he was still getting paid from Arizona, so it was not <laughs> like they had to write a big check for the guy. He was wanting to coach his son, and that was the biggest deal for him. He wanted the opportunity to be with him every day, and. Uh, uh, and while he's certainly had his struggles on the field this year, his son has uh, with Rhett, I mean, it's it's been very good. But, it, you know, the staff goes even deeper than that, too, um, honey. You know, he's got a kid named Zach Galley. I don't know if you've looked at him. Spent a couple of years on that Boise staff. He was a six-year GA over at Clemson, okay. uh, which is where Terry first met the guy. And uh, and if there's one thing the Warhawks have kind of hung their hat on a little bit is that they've played pretty good defense this year. And uh, and he's been uh, he's the reason for it. Two, I mean, massive in terms of point spread upsets against Liberty yeah. and against Troy. Talk to me about those two games. Yeah, who would have thunk it? Um, you know, most people go into that ball game much the same as they will this one, uh, thinking that they don't stand a chance. But, uh, you know, if there's one thing the Warhawks have done this year, and you'll see it tonight, i got to think you will, uh, they don't beat themselves. And that's why they won those two ball games at home, because they didn't have the big fan support. Nobody has really bought into this program yet. But at the end of the day, those guys only commit maybe two or three penalties in a ball game. They don't turn the ball over. So, uh, you know, that's what's kept them in some contact. Us, and they've made some big plays when they've had to, and it's been kind of sweet. We'll talk about some of their personnel after we take a time out, but I do want to ask, what does this, this experience mean for the players, for, for the athletic program, for the fans from up there in the 318 to come down and, and get a chance to be in Tiger Stadium for four hours? Well, you know, you've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I mean, most of those kids that grow up in Louisiana, there's a good number of them on the ULM roster. You know, everybody wants to dream of playing in Tiger Stadium. Not it doesn't pan out. You may end up at Southeastern, ULM, ULL. Or Louisiana Tech, but uh, at the end of the day, the play on, in Death Valley is kind of cool. So there's uh, the intrigue about that. But you know, they opened up the season against Kentucky earlier in the year. Going into big stadiums is not anything that they'll be in awe of. Um, but that's why I expect them to come out here and, and you know give it their best and see what happens. Let it rip. Gene yeah. Pony is our guest. We'll come back and talk about some of the X's and O's, some of these players on the ULM roster. That's next on LSU Game Day, presented by Your View on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The Indians know life here is filled with joy, and sometimes a little uncertainty. No matter your stage in life, know that you can rely on the strength of the cross and protection of the shield. Your card opens the door to a large network of top doctors to care for you. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana has been helping Louisianians get care for generations. With the right card and the right care, you can get back to what you love best. Thanks for calling Toyota. This is Jan. Hey, Jan. Toyota thought. Is it on? It is. Now's the time to find year end deals on Camry, RAV4, the all new Tundra, and more. Great. It's officially the holidays. Fire up the chestnuts, kids. So you base your family's holiday schedule around Toyota Thon? Bingo. How else will we know it's time to celebrate? Dealer inventory varies. Current offers on these vehicles end November 30th. Offers are subject to change throughout Toyota Thon, which ends on January 3rd. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, Tiger fans, when shopping for your game day essentials at your local grocery store, don't forget to pick up your favorite variety of Lay's potato chips, Doritos, and Tostitos tortilla chips. Tostitos, Doritos, and Lay's are an essential part of the game day tradition. Whether you're at the stadium or hosting Tiger fans at home, make sure Lay's and Tostitos are part of your game day ritual. Lay's, Doritos, and Tostitos are proud supporters of LSU Athletics. Go Tigers! Oh, man, I'm glad you're here. Sit down and visit with me, Mom. I'm making it all ready for supper with my family tonight. I can't wait to hug my grandbabies and pass a good time over some good food. Mmm, -hmm. Ooh, I better start my rice. You know, it seems like all the best meals start by cooking some rice. Cajun country rice, of course. It's what you gotta have when you're cooking with love. I pick it up down the street at the grocery store, and I can even buy it online at CajunCountryRice.com. Y'all stay and eat. There's plenty, yeah. 
Fans, if you were born to grill, then check out Barbecue Guys for all your grilling and outdoor living needs. With the largest selection of top-rated grills and outdoor products, best-in-class customer service, and expert product reviews, tips, and how-to videos, Barbecue Guys makes it easier than ever to shop online for backyard necessities. They're there to help you master grilling and outdoor entertaining. So visit BarbecueGuys.com. That's BBQGuys.com to learn more. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. We continue with more Tiger Roundtable on LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. I want to give a shout out to a loyal listener, Noah, out there paying attention. Happy Game Day, Noah. I'm chatting with Gene Pawnee here. Before we continue that conversation, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile App. Back here inside the TJ Ribs Tiger One Village chatting with Gene Pawnee. Gene, let's talk about some of these players on the ULM roster. At quarterback, there's been some Rhett Rodriguez. There's That's been right. some injuries. There's been some Chandler Rogers. Who do you expect to see the majority of tonight? Well, uh, my understanding is that uh, Rhett took the majority of snaps with the uh, first team through the course of the week. Uh, Chandler probably got a little bit more banged up than I think people, fans, thought he did in that Texas State ball game a, a contest they clearly thought they could have won and probably should have won down in uh, San Marcos uh, so when things didn't go very well last week and we saw a lot more red on Saturday against Arkansas State uh, we kind of figured something was up but uh, I think you're going to see both of them today they both bring a little something different to the table as it relates to their uh, skill set um, you know Chandler's a great quarterback he's got great feet so he's able to escape that pocket and he's going to have to anybody back there tonight <laughs> yeah. tells you is going to have their hands full. Well, LSU struggled. Bo Nix running all over the place. Saw the touchdown last week oh with KJ Jefferson. Gosh. Trying to something? get quarterbacks on the ground has been a bit of an issue for the Tigers. And I got to ask about one more guy because yeah. it might be the best name in the country. Boogie Knights. Tell me about Isn't him. Isn't that something? <laughs> you know, and every time they, every time he catches a, a ball in, at home, you know, they play that old song from what, 70, <laughs> whatever the heck it was. Uh, you know, his mom and dad were huge fans of the song back when uh, it came time to naming him. But, you know, he's a great kid. He's got great hands. I don't see him involved in the offense as much as he has been early in the year these last couple of games uh, I think they've just struggled to get him involved but uh, hopefully that will change a little bit tonight for the Warhawks and he's going to have to if they're going to stay in this thing. Gene thanks so much for your time enjoy the ball game uh, safe travels back up to you, Monroe man. absolutely. All right, pal. I'll step aside here let Brian Haldane pilot the ship we'll get inside the mind of the Tigers get you a weather report get you some scores we'll come back and wrap things up just before game time it's LSU game day presented by your view on the LSU sports radio network. He's got a seam he's down the near side hash Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your Fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports Mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers! We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. 
Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. As we continue on LSU Game Day, time now for your game day forecast. Now here's the weather. From inside the Capital One studio, here is Brian Haldane on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Grabbing your game day forecast. This game day weather forecast brought to you by Southern Air, official partner of LSU Athletics. Well, if you've got to have a late game, at least the weather is ideal, and ideal is about the best word to describe it. I mean, we're looking at roughly 63 degrees to kick off. Temperature should drop by about 4 degrees as the game wears on. We are looking at about 60% humidity right now. No chance of rain in the forecast tonight uh, or into the morning hours, as we do need to look into the morning hours. We're looking at about a four mile per hour breeze coming in from out of the east. Right now, right now we're at 65 degrees outside of Tiger Stadium, and that is your game day forecast, which is, of course, presented by Southern Air. Coming up, Hunt Palmer gets in a few reps with Tommy Moffitt. Also, coming up, I am going to run down your scores around the top 25 and uh, in the state as well. But first, we got a quick break coming your way. Before that break, we're going to get inside the mind of the Tigers right here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time to go inside the mind of the Tigers. Presented by Planet Fitness, home of the judgment-free zone. Visit planetfitness.com to find a location near you. Linebacker Mike Jones, Jr. You know what? It does hurt a little bit more, you know, knowing that... You know, how well we've been playing and uh, you know, we kind of still trying to get over the hump as a team but you know I feel like we use that little you know them feelings of upset you know to kind of propel us in the next week you know and just helping us uh, believe that next week you know this is gonna be the week where we do get over the hump and we you know find a way to you know maybe you know etch out a tough game or or really beat somebody down and win big linebacker Demelon Clark so you got a lot to play for. You know, you can't go out there and just just go out there and just play just to say you play. You know, it's, it's like for me, you know, you're pride on the line. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go out there, even though our record, you know, not the best, you're going to go out there and just play or you're going to go out there and just continue just to, you know, show the type of person you are. There's no surprise, you know, you know that we playing the best that have we, that we've been playing since we've been here. Um, I mean, and that's credit to Coach Baker. I mean, I just show this type of coach that Coach Baker is. Linebacker Micah Baskerville. Uh, mentally, you just got to prepare well. You know, you, you when you do that, you always anticipate and, you know, you can make plays. And then physically, just being able to play over 60 snaps a game, you know, it, it's pretty tough. I had to get used to, so. Defensive lineman Glenn Logan. Um, it's just like Coach O says, next man up mentality. Um, we all, we're all brothers. We all watch film together a lot. We just... We just have pride. We go out there and play with pride every week. Um, we, we're not going to let anyone just push us around. Um, I mean, we feel like we could beat any team. The Mind of the Tigers, presented by Planet Fitness. The guys will be back with more right after this quick break on LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, it's time for you to score with amazing John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available. Whether you're working in the fields or preparing grounds to hunt, you're always sure to win when your project is powered by Sunshine. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See your dealer for details. Offer ends December 31st, 2021. Ford F-Series has been keeping the good times rolling as the best-selling truck in America 44 years straight. 
And with the smartest F-150 and most capable Super Duty ever built, this dynasty will keep right on rolling. Drive the new 2021 F-150 at your Southern Quality Ford dealer. Proud partner of the LSU Tigers. Based on 1977 through 2020 calendar year sales. Do you have Medicare and make less than $1,615 per month? Or do you have Medicare and Medicaid? You may be eligible for extra benefits you're not getting now. And you may be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan from People's Health. Don't wait. If you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan from People's Health today, your benefits may begin the first day of next month. Call 1-855-410-7761. That's 1-855-410-7761. People's Health, your Medicare health team. When it comes to investing in your home's comfort, it's never just one thing. You want to make sure you get an air conditioned system that's reliable, affordable, energy efficient, backed by a strong warranty, and is installed by a dealer you can trust. That's why people who insist on the best choose Train. Plus, right now, Train is offering special financing. So what's not to love? Visit Train.com to find a local Train dealer today. It's hard to stop a train. Subject to credit approval. Ask for details. The Tigers are your team, and Super One Foods is your grocery store. They offer super low prices from the moment you walk in their door, starting with the hottest deals on their famous wall of values. You'll get super savings on fresh produce, meat cut fresh daily, and all of your favorite brands throughout the store. Shop Super One Foods online or in-store for super low prices on game day and every day. Go Tigers and go Super One Foods. Back with more LSU Game Day, getting you ready for LSU Fighting Tiger football. But first, let's check the latest around the college football world. From the Capital One studio, here is Brian Haldane with a scoreboard update on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Gotta love seeing some fun football at this stage of the season when so many matchups are just not. Let's run down your top 25 scores. Starting off with the Georgia Bulldogs, making it look easy today. Pounding Charleston Southern 56-7. Some of that good football I was talking about. Number two, Alabama got a decent challenge from 21st ranked Arkansas. The Tide does hold on for a 42-35 win. Number three, Oregon is at number 23, Utah. And the Utes have a lead. Actually, 147 to go in the first quarter there. Utah is up 7-0 over the Oregon Ducks. Number four, Ohio State was a 19-point favorite over a 17th-ranked Michigan State. They had that number covered by the end of the first quarter, and it only got worse from there for the Spartans. Final score, 56-7 Buckeyes. Number 5, Cincinnati, was a 48-14 winner over SMU. Similar story for number 6, Michigan, a 59-18 winner over Maryland, and 8th-ranked Notre Dame blanked Georgia Tech 55-0. Number nine, Oklahoma State is at Texas Tech, and they just got up on the board. Uh, Cowboys kicking a field goal. They have a 3-0 lead with 10.02 to go in the first quarter in that contest. Clemson went turbo on number 10, Wake Forest, 48-27, your final score there. Baylor is at Kansas State. Uh, The 11th-ranked Baylor Bears are up 17-10 over the Wildcats. Number 12, Ole Miss is hosting Vanderbilt, and Ole Miss has a 10-3 lead. Uh, just about to wrap up the first quarter in that one, and the Rebels are up 10-3 over the Commodores. Iowa State gave number 13 Oklahoma a game. Sooners survived, though, 28-21. Iowa's number 14, BYU, topping Georgia Southern, 34-17. Number 15, Wisconsin, was a 35-28 winner over Nebraska. 16th-ranked Texas A&M had no problem with Prairie View. Uh, Your Aggies are a 52-3 winner. Number 17, Iowa bested Illinois, 33-23. 18th-ranked Pittsburgh was a 48-38 winner over Virginia. It was number 19, San Diego State, beating UNLV 28-20. Number 20, NC State, North Carolina State, turned it on with a 28-point second quarter on their way to a 41-17 win over Syracuse. 22nd-ranked UTSA beat UAB 34-31. And rounding out the top 25, Mississippi State just pounded Tennessee State 55-10, your final score there. Taking a look at your in-state scores, Tulane was a 45-14 winner over South Florida. La Tech falls to Southern Miss 35-19. UL Lafayette beat Liberty 42-14. And in the Southland Conference, Northwestern State top McNeese 24-20. Incarnate were, oh, that's not an in-state school. The other in-state one we've got in the Southland Conference is Nichols at SLU. Or Nichols beats Southeastern 45-42. 
And that is a look at your scoreboard. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Hunt Palmer sat down with Tommy Moffitt. That conversation is coming your way next. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports Mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. At the tailgate, at home, in the car, or on the water, your LSU Fighting Tiger football companion. This is LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Joining now by LSU Head Strength and Conditioning Coordinator Tommy Moffitt. Coach, um, this is a program that has, has won a lot of championships in your time here and something we talk about a good bit. Not any... SEC Western Division or SEC Championships on the line for this team, but the fight has not gone anywhere. You see this team every single day working really hard. What's been your impression of these guys, even though there have been more setbacks than they would have liked? Uh, great question. And, you know, it's amazing. So today was a workout day. And uh, the attitude and the effort that these guys bring every day to the workout and to practice has been unbelievable. Uh, it's a sign of great character and and willpower and being able to block out, you know, all the distractions and focus on the task at hand. I work with players that played under you for every single day. I work with uh, Jeremy Hill on the week and then Marlon and Brandon on the weekends. And I always ask him, is it the coaches who've got to bring that fight or the players have to do it internally? And most of them say it's really got to come from the players. The coaches have their job and they have their say, but the players have to do it. Is that kind of you share that sentiment? Yeah, you know, um, and that's that in a good player, that's in their DNA. You know, they have to to love what they're doing. And uh, if they're if they love what they're doing and they're passion, passionate about what they're doing, then it comes through in their actions on a daily basis. And, um, you know, coaches can stand in front of the room and say this and say that. But you know, it boils down to how bad do you want it and what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? A guy that I've asked a couple of different coaches about because I'm so fascinated by his career trajectory at LSU is Damone Clark. Mm -hmm. Such a great contributor to such a great team in 2019. Things were tough for everybody in 2020, but the way he's played this year has just been unbelievable. What have you seen from him in the weight room, in the locker room, on the practice field, in the games? Yeah, uh, so, you know, even last year, uh, you know, the COVID year, during the COVID uh, uh, lockdown, Damone worked out every day. And uh, he and Jared Small and some other guys would find places to go run and to lift. And uh, so uh, the work eff eff effort has always been there. It's just been a matter of him being put in a position to succeed, you know, having having the right um, scheme to play in and then having somebody that 
you know, can assimilate all that information. And uh, Coach Baker, uh, and if you ask Damone, and I've heard Damone comment on how valuable Coach Baker has been for his development. And um, Blake is a great coach, and, and those two make a great team. When you see our linebackers practice, and this started in the spring, in the off season, when you saw them working with Blake and and how hard they worked and, and the type of, to, you know, um, uh, cohesion that they had and the, uh, the effort and the enthusiasm that they all worked with, you know, you knew it was going to be one of our better groups on the, on the team. It's the most important question I've asked a coach in five years doing this interview. You've seen these guys, they played under you, arm wrestling competition, Brandon Taylor or Marlon Favorite, who you got? Uh, oh, wow. So, well, there is a, uh, there's a weight disadvantage, of course. So if Marlon gets positioned correctly and gets his weight into it, then I would say Marlon would win. But all things being equal and they're, they're standing up and Marlon can't put his weight behind it, then Brandon Taylor every day. The only way Marlon beats Brandon is if he cheats. <laughs> That's Tommy Moffitt with the greatest interview I've ever gotten. Coach, thanks so much. Best of luck in the ballgame. All right. Thank you, Hunt. I appreciate it. Back with one more segment here from the TJ Ribs. Tiger One Village. We're counting down to LSU and ULM on the LSU Sports Radio Network. One of many homeowners who just dreads the winter due to inconsistent home heating? Perhaps you're an HVAC contractor who just wants to offer more reliable, higher efficiency home heating. Luxair helps keep homes warm while saving money and offers great business building programs for contractors too. Contact your Luxair dealer to find out more. Or if you're a contractor, visit solarsupplyluxair.com to learn about working with Luxair. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At H&E Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. H&E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rental, sales, parts, and service. If it's a tale worth telling, it happens at LaBerge with thousands of games to explore, hot streaks that never end, handcrafted flavors eager to please, and a vibe you'll never forget. It's a story in the making. This one, however, is to be continued. LaBerge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Must be 21 years of age or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Our Lady of the Lake, just like LSU, is anchored by deep roots put down almost a century ago. We share a singular vision to advance health, education, and research to serve the incredible people of Louisiana. Our partnership with LSU is inspired by our passions for knowledge and our commitments to our community and healthy Louisiana families. Together, there's nowhere we can't go. Our Lady of the Lake is proud to be the health care provider of LSU Athletics. Kickoff for the LSU Fighting Tigers is coming up. Welcome in, Tiger fans. We're about a minute away from kickoff. Here's the last word from the guys on LSU Game Day on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The only way Marlon beats Brandon is if he cheats. <laughs> the highlight of the pregame show. All right, y'all heard it. What do you think, Fave? Oh, man, that was classic. He said, look, he echoed. He said, Marlon has to use his weight. <laughs> if he can't use his weight, Brandon, every time. That was funny. I, 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 just probably, I could picture Coach Moffitt's face when Hunt asked him that question. He probably lit up like a light because. Oh, that was funny, man. The conversation between me, Coach Moffitt, and Marlon. And like that, that goes way back, man. Yes, like, it does. Coach Moffitt is like a, a very instrumental person in my life. Like, as far as <laughs> off the field, on the field, outside of football, his family is like a part of my family. And I watch his kids grow up, 
And man, I love that dude. But he's telling the truth. Huh. Yeah, I get him every day of the week. Huh, after Essence Weekend, every summer, I always show up about at least 12 pounds too heavy. <laughs> and boy, Moffat get me every time. Marlon, what are you doing? You're too fat. What's the problem? <laughs> and, Go and, run. Brandon, you, you say that he's been such an influence in your life. I, like I said in the interview, I work with, with Jeremy Hill every day. I work with you all on the mm-hmm. weekends. I've spent a lot of time with Hester. Flynn, all you, everybody who's come through the program feels the exact same way about that. And that's, it's through three head coaches. Hunt, it's just, I could, I'm could. i telling you, you can get a room full of players from every generation that then came through that then been with Moffitt. Mm-hmm. And you could li- sit down and listen, for, listen to stories just for hours and hours and hours about this man. Like, he's like, he is LSU. Yeah. He was at Miami when Miami was Miami. Yeah. He was at LSU when all the years LSU was one of the national when championships. Tennessee was Tennessee. When Tennessee was Tennessee. He was there. Like, everywhere he goes, he leaves his mark at the program. And I love that dude to death, bro. I'll tell you this, hon. I know, I know you're about to go real quick. He has the type of influence for strength and conditioning coaches across the country you, like Nick Saban has. Any program that has won a national championship or competed – that's it. The strength and condition tote has come through here. Yeah. At Alabama, Cochran, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's from my office cloth, man. He's definitely a gold in terms of strength and conditioning coaches. He's something else. I always enjoy our sit-down with LSU head <laughs> strength and conditioning coordinator, Tommy Moffitt. Time now to look at tonight's Built Ford Tough Series history brought to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers. Let the good times roll. LSU and ULM have met three times on the gridiron. LSU has won all three of those, trying to make it four tonight. Babe, what do you see happening on the field of Tiger Stadium tonight? I think we should run up the bag. I'm looking for 50 points. I, I really am. Um, I know at the end of the game they might score two touchdowns because we put the younger guys in. So I'm looking for like a, a 50 to 14 <laughs> or 50 to 10. That would work for me. Brandon, what you got? I don't see them scoring. I see a goose egg Ooh, tonight. That'd be interesting. Uh, I see these DBs flying around. The, the, the bunch is getting healthy. I see these linebackers just continuing to doing what they do. And I see the uh, defensive line just continuing to be better. And this offense will come out and light it up. What do we think about the white helmets, purple jerseys, white pants, Faith? I like it. I'm a bit jealous, man, because I misplaced my uh, white helmet and purple jersey. I like it. it. It got some drip to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm interested in seeing the, the cliques. So you lost it? You? you misplaced it? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's gone. How do you lose oh, Greg a hell of a football helmet? Greg Strangfell, if you're listening, man, you got to hook me up. I need my jersey. Yeah, I'm sure he's tuned in. Nothing else going on in his world right now. <laughs> trying to get ready to play a football game. He's listening to us blabber about arm wrestling, I'm sure. Brandon, you like the, new, the jerseys? I like a bunch of milk cartons running around. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, sometimes you got to switch it up. I mean, the players like it. I can remember being – watching the 07 team go to Tulane. That's what I'm saying. That yeah. first that, – that's the first time I ever seen it. Uh, y'all didn't play too hot, but oh. it was a good game. And, I mean, the players like it, so it, it's something to get the, pl- the program and uh, get the players. That was that early yeah, game. So. I was a student. Uh, the student section – Morale was not very high. There were some significant hangovers working in the student <laughs> section that morning kickoff in New Orleans. That's, uh, that's, that, that's to say the least. All right, that's going to just about do it for us here in the TJ Ribs Tiger One Village. It's been an awesome evening here. Appreciate you all for tuning in. We will be with you 30 minutes after this game and uh, at Hunt Palmer 88 and at LSU Radio. Thanks so much to Gene Ponty for jumping along. Thanks so much for Tommy Moffitt as well. Time to throw things across the street to the broadcast team. Gordy Rush, Doug Morrow in the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair. It's LSU and ULM under the lights of Tiger Stadium. Here come the Tigers. This has been LSU Game Day. This is our time. This is our game. The time for talk is over. Coming up, it's LSU Fighting Tiger Football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more, for their campus voice, 
their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. This voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. This is LSU Fighting Tiger Football. 15 10, buckle up. 5 4 3 2 1. Touchdown, Tigers. On to ULM. We're going to respect every opponent. Get ready to play those guys. Slap the games at 8 o'clock. Fans get to get ready. Who are we? LSU. Who are we? LSU. LSU Fighting Tiger Football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Part of the 23, near side by 10 5. Touchdown, Tigers! With two regular season games remaining, the Tigers step out of conference to host the Warhawks of ULM in their first meeting since 2014. The sun will soon find its home in the western sky, and it will be Saturday night in Death Valley. It's Louisiana Monroe and the Fighting Tigers of LSU with kickoff. Just around the corner. Best sound of football. Tigers going to war. One, two, three. Woo-hoo! Here come the Tigers. Now. 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 From inside legendary Tiger Stadium, with the call of the game, here is the voice of your fighting Tigers, Chris Blair. It's week number 11 of the season, and with one game remaining following tonight's contest, it represents a must-win game tonight as the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks from the Sun Belt Conference travel down to face your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Hello, everybody. This is Chris Blair alongside former Tigers Doug Morrow and Gordy Rush. Our spotter, Jim Nickel, Patrick Wright with stats, on-site engineer Joe Jackson, and the straw stirring the drink back in the Capital One Studios, Mr. Brian Haldane, welcoming you to legendary Tiger Stadium here on the campus of LSU in Baton Rouge as we get set to bring you tonight's play-by-play story. It is a must-win if the Tigers hope to see the postseason for a chance to send out head coach Ed Ogeron a bowl winner. An out-of-conference matchup to be sure, but one that once again has the Tigers depleted and certainly lacking depth at virtually any position on the field. The Warhawks have nothing to lose. Head coach Terry Bowden brings his team in with a 4-6 and six record, only two wins in the Sun Belt. His message all week, let's go down there, let's have some fun. A game in which many of the ULM players competed against and alongside many of these LSU Tigers. And that always produces that chip-on-the-shoulder attitude. I'll show them LSU should have signed me, which helps raise their level of play when they come to compete in this cathedral of college football. Two Two straight heartbreaking losses for LSU, where in many ways they were the better team, especially on defense. Can the Tigers find that motivation and energy tonight? They have to, or the chance to go bowling slips away in the night. So find your favorite chair, grab your favorite beverage, a true Saturday night in Death Valley. It's Louisiana Monroe, it's LSU, and it's coming up next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Support your LSU Tigers with Hancock Whitney, the official bank of LSU athletics. From game day to the offseason, Hancock Whitney LSU credit and debit cards are a big win for any Tiger fan. Want to get your paws on these cards? Well, apply online or visit HancockWhitney.com LSU. 
Hancock Whitney Bank, member FDIC. All accounts subject to credit approval, terms and conditions may apply. Every LSU athlete knows you never want to end a game wondering, what if? You have to give 100%. You have to pounce on every opportunity. And you can never give up. If you've been injured, what if you don't stand up for yourself? And what if you don't get the money you deserve? Call us at Dudley DeBosier. Let us fight so you don't have to wonder, what if? That's the Dudley DeBosier difference. Command Dudley DeBosier, official partner of LSU Athletics. 444-4444. Baton Rouge responsible attorney Chad Dudley. Hi, I'm Brian, an employee at BASF in Louisiana. Our team, made up of more than 100,000 employees from around the world, create chemistry every day that help make our favorite sports possible, like football, basketball, and baseball. Whether you're in the game or in the stands, look around and see BASF in action, from the turf, cup holders, and seats, to players' uniforms and protective gear. Learn more at BASF.us slash LA. BASF. We create chemistry. Hey, Tiger fans, it's time for you to score with amazing John Deere deals from Sunshine. Ask us about tractor packages with 0% financing available. Whether you're working in the fields or preparing grounds to hunt, you're always sure to win when your project is powered by Sunshine. Learn more at sunequip.com. Some restrictions apply. See your dealer for details. Offer ends December 31st, 2021. Welcome in to the countdown to kickoff for Fighting Tiger football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time now to visit with LSU head coach Ed Orgeron. Standing by with coach is former Tiger Gordy Rush. Down on the field with Coach O, pregame coach, LSU Monroe, under the uh, lights here in Tiger Stadium. Let's talk about the week of practice your team's had. Outstanding. You know, we only put the pads on Tuesday, but our guys, I asked them to stick together. They have. We got better at some situations as far as turnovers, red zone. We worked our tail off on them. Hopefully improves tonight. All right, let's talk about quarterbacks you mentioned on Monday. We'll see Max Johnson get the start tonight. Tell me about the, the week of practice he had. Yeah, good week. You know, it looked like the pressure was off. Uh, we did a lot of things with him, especially in the red zone. Hopefully tonight we can score points when we get down there. All right, let's talk uh, about uh, you, you had a couple guys nicked up. Who are we going to see back tonight, and who's questionable? Yeah, well, I think that uh, you, Michael Baskerville is very questionable tonight. I don't think he's going to play. Josh Williams will not play. The rest of the guys should be ready to go. Good, good. That's real good. Let's talk about UL Monroe. When you look at the film, they got out to a good start. Rich Rod. Uh, on offense, likes to spread the field. They go fast, and that's the thing. We got to get lined up. We got our cleats in the grass. Plus, they've beaten us in the turnover ratio. They're very good in the turnover ratio. We have to be able to take the ball away and protect the ball tonight. All right, Coach. Best of luck here in Tiger Stadium tonight. Go Tigers! All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll be back with more in the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU fans, did you know that Planet Fitness is the official gym of LSU Athletics? That's right, and as an LSU Athletic fan, you can get a special offer of just $1 down at any of the six Baton Rouge area locations with offer code PFLSU. You'll get free fitness training, tons of cardio and strength equipment, and a totally friendly staff. Planet Fitness is a comfortable place to go at your own pace. You can find out more at planetfitness.club slash LSU. And go Tigers! Hollingsworth Richards Ford is a proud sponsor of the LSU Tigers. For over 30 years, we've been a member of LSU's transportation team. And when you buy your new Ford at Hollingsworth Richards Ford, you'll get peace of mind with our nationwide lifetime powertrain warranty. That's right, a nationwide powertrain warranty with every new Ford purchase. Only at Hollingsworth Richards Ford, located at 7787 Florida Boulevard. Or online 24-7 at HollingsworthRichardsFord.com. Go Tigers! See dealer for details. With Early Paycheck, you can get your direct deposit up to two days earlier. That's another reason banking with Capital One is the easiest decision ever. Even easier than deciding to open the biggest birthday gift first. Happy birthday to you. Which one are you going to open first? The pony. Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is banking with Capital One even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. No fees or minimums on new consumer accounts. Capital One and A member FDIC. Hey, y'all. I'm Amanda Shaw. We all know Louisiana is as fun as all get out. So get out, take a road trip, and explore our state. 
fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianaisatrip.com. The action of LSU Fighting Tiger football is coming up. This is the countdown to kickoff. As we continue, time now to take a look at the starting lineups on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Super One Foods has super low prices on all your game day favorites. Up your grocery game and score big with Super One Foods. Beautiful night here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as LSU gets ready to play host to the ULM Warhawks. It's uh, kind of late in the season game, uh, which normally would be the first game of the season, but we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes when we get into the keys for the victory. Meanwhile, though, let me give you tonight's starting lineups. They are brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Take a look at the ULM offense first. At quarterback number four, Red Rodriguez, six feet, 190 pounds, a junior. The running back, number two, Malik Jackson, 5'9", 178, a sophomore. Number seven, the, at the wide receiver, Zach Jackson, six feet, 196, a junior. The other wide receiver is number 17, Boogie Knight, great football name. Boogie Knight, 5'10", 191, a junior. And number five, Jevin Fred, 6'2", 200, a junior. The left tackle, number 77, Willie Tyler, 6'7", 330, a sophomore. The left guard, number 67, Kedrell Lewis, 6'6", 310, a freshman. The center, number 57, Garrett Hirsch, 6'3", 308, a senior. The right guard, number 73, Aries Davis, 6'2", 335, a senior. The right tackle, number 59, Victor Cutler, 6'3", 296, a freshman. And the tight end, number 82, Zach Rasmussen, 6'4", 225, a junior. LSU offensively will start at quarterback, number 14, Max Johnson, 6'5", 219, a sophomore. The running back, number three, Tyron Davis Price. 6'1", 223, a junior. The wide receivers, number 10, Jare Jenkins, 6'3", 198, a junior. Number 80, Jack Besh, 6'2", 207, a freshman. And Brian Thomas, number 11, 6'5", 198, he's also a freshman. At left tackle, Garrett Dellinger, number 72, 6'5", 303, a freshman. The left guard, number 71, Xavier Hill, 6'3", 307, a freshman. The center, number 56, Liam Shanahan, 6'5", 300. He's a senior. The right guard, number 77, Marion Martinez, 6'5", 316, a sophomore. The right tackle, number 76, Austin Deculus, 6'7", 325, a senior. And at tight end, number 82, Jack Mashburn, 6'3", 224. He's a sophomore. For ULM, defensively, at one defensive end, number 44, Ty Shelby, 6'4", 260. He's a senior. The nose guard, number 91, Caleb Thomas, 6'1", 6 feet, 3'11", a junior. The defensive tackle, number five, Quincy Lede, 6'2", 288, a freshman. The other defensive end opposite Shelby, number 94, Seth Mason, 6'2", 262, a freshman. The will linebacker, number 10, Trevion Webster, 6 feet, 205, a senior. The Mike linebacker, number 9, Zach Woodard, 6'1", 235, a junior. The Sam linebacker, number 32, Quay Drake, 6'1", 220, a sophomore. At the cornerbacks, number 0, Josh Newton, 6 feet, 188, a sophomore. And number 19, Lou Tillery, 5'10", 158, he's a freshman. The, at one safety, number 15, Austin Hawley, 6'1", 199, a senior. And number two, Jabari Johnson, 6 feet, 195, a sophomore at the other safety. And the nickelback, number four, Nick Roberts, 5'11", 175, he's a junior. 
LSU will start defensively across the front, number 53, Sonny Fanua, 6'4", 258, a senior. The defensive tackles, number 97, Glenn Logan, 6'5", 303, a sophomore. The other defensive tackle, number 92, Neil Farrell, 6'4", 325, a senior. The defensive end opposite Fanua, Number eight, B.J. Ojolari, 6'3", 244. He's a sophomore. The linebackers, number 18, Damone Clark, 6'3", 240, a senior. Number 23, Micah Baskerville. We are got word that he is going to play, although it was questionable up to the beginning. Number 23, 6'2", 223, a senior. The cornerbacks, number two, Dwight McLaughlin, 6'2", 186, a sophomore. And number 25, Cordell Flott, 6'2", 170, he's a junior. The nickelback, number five, Jay Ward, 6'1", 180, a junior. The free safety, number four, Todd Harris, 5'11", 195, he's a senior. And the strong safety, number 31, Cam Lewis, 6'1", 195, he is a senior. So there you have the starting lineup for tonight's game. The LSU band out on the field entertaining the crowd. Kind of a sparse crowd at this stage. It's a late night game, one that may be well attended. It'll be an enthusiastic crowd. It's been a great and beautiful day here in Baton Rouge, and we expect this will be more beautiful once the game gets underway. I'll be back with the formula for success after we take this break on the LSU Sports Radio Network. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At H&E Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. H&E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rental, sales, parts, and service. Your team is on a three-game winning streak, and you're convinced it's because you've worn your lucky football jersey and haven't taken it off. Not for work, a wedding, or even bathing. With Cox, you can actually wear it all season long because we give you game day coverage and content 24-7. So join us and dress accordingly. Hey, Tiger fans, just say Fan Zone into your Contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. Play games, win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24-7. Hey, Tiger fans, when shopping for your game day essentials at your local grocery store, don't forget to pick up your favorite variety of Lay's potato chips, Doritos, and Tostitos tortilla chips. Tostitos, Doritos, and Lay's are an essential part of the game day tradition. Whether you're at the stadium or hosting Tiger fans at home, make sure Lay's and Tostitos are part of your game day ritual. Lay's, Doritos, and Tostitos are proud supporters of LSU Athletics. Go Tigers! Louisiana knows how to take care of its own. We carry one another when it's needed. And we need caring now, when our families and communities are suffering and our healthcare workers are tired. Let's put on a mask, protect our families, friends, neighbors, the way we do in any crisis. The good times are coming. We'll get another shot at a familiar life soon. But for now, let's wear a mask and carry on. Carry one another to the finish line. are moments away from the excitement of LSU fighting Tiger football. Game time, baby. It's game time, baby. Let's go, man. Time to get the BASF formula for success here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. The LSU band out on the field entertaining the crowd. Big block letters LSU facing the West Sands here and the band is playing the LSU alma mater right now and when the uh, national anthem begins to be played we'll go down to the field for that but meanwhile let's begin the formula for success presented by BASF BASF we create chemistry well what can you say about a game at this stage of the year 
LSU hosting an in-state rival in a smaller school. ULM is a, a school that really has no right to be on the field with LSU, particularly at this stage of the season. And normally, games with in-state schools which are smaller than LSU start out a season or maybe the second or third game of the season. This is one that is almost at the end of the season and one that is going to occupy kind of an unusual spot on the calendar. We'll have to see how the game unfolds, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit more. But first, we're going to go down to the field for the national anthem. And now, please rise and remove your caps as LSU's reserve officer training for the Pershing Rifles present the colors. And as director of bands, Damon Talley conducts our national anthem. magnificent rendition of the national anthem performed by the LSU Tiger marching band here in Tiger Stadium. It's kind of what kicks the game off. Everything else is kind of a preface to it, but once the national anthem is played, it lets you know that this is serious business and we're getting ready to watch a pretty good football game and we expect that that will happen here tonight in Tiger Stadium. Let's go to the formula for success presented by BASF and we'll talk a little bit more about the, the, the significance of this game occurring so late in the season. LSU normally will play the in-state schools early in the season and after two or three games of that type, the team starts to round into shape just in time to move into the conference schedule. This year, and actually last year because games got moved around last year, it's much different. And the effect of it is much different. LSU has started out on a somewhat unsuccessful season, although the last two games against very good conference opponents, LSU lost the games but could have easily won them and should have won both of them. That's been two losses on the Tigers' territory. They need to have wins in the remaining two games, this game against ULM and then next week against Texas A&M, a conference opponent. Without those two, they do not qualify to go to a bowl game. So that's important to these players, assuming they want to go to a bowl game, and I'm sure that they do. I'm sure that's important to them. They've worked mighty hard, and the team has improved and has fought through an awful lot of injuries and uh, problems that they have had with the starters. LSU's lost somewhere between 12 and 15 of the starters at the beginning of the season, both offense and defense. And so when you take players that were not expected to be starters and you kind of throw them in the middle of the battle, while the battle's going on, it's kind of hard for them to make adjustments sometime. LSU's players have made those adjustments to some degree, but not to the degree that offensively it's been able to show up in the points on the scoreboard column. So LSU is going to have to see if they can do that. Should not be a problem, frankly, tonight with being able to do that. The ULM team is not one that, in all fairness, should be competitive with LSU. But LSU's got to play hard, and they've got to figure out a way to score points. They've got to also prepare for the finale next week against Texas A&M. 
So what about ULM? Well, ULM, coached by Terry Bowden, of the famous Bowden family, Terry, Tommy, and the dad, uh, Bobby Bowden, famous in coaching annals in NCAA football, all of them very successful in their own right. Uh, Terry used to be coach at Auburn, played LSU four times while he was at Auburn, so he's very experienced with that. And, of course, with the heritage that he has, uh, it's uh, one of those things that he's grown up from the time that he was very young. You hear, hear the cannons exploding. That is intended. That was not anything that was unintended as the LSU team comes out onto the field. Tigers, incidentally, wearing white pants, purple jerseys, white helmets, gold and white trim uh, around those various components uh, of the uniform. We don't have ULM on the field yet. Uh, they will be coming out in just a moment. Uh, LSU's captains are also out on the field. ULM's are not here yet. LSU's captains for this game, 33. Trey Palmer, number 16. Devontae Lee, number 5. Jay Ward, number 31. Cam Lewis, number 32. Lloyd Cole. As the captains for ULM on the far side are walking slowly toward midfield. Once the captains get fixed up on the 50-yard line, the officials will bring them out for the toss of the coin. ULM's quarterback, Red Rodriguez, the son of Rich Rodriguez, one of the most prominent offensive play callers in all of college football, and one that gives ULM a chance in any game. Because of the fact that his son so well understands the offense, is a good passer. He was injured earlier in the year, seriously injured, missed most of the season, has come back now a game ago, and he is seems to be full strength, very talented thrower. Most important, he understands his father's offense, and it is a very, uh, very sophisticated offense on a college level, and one that may cause LSU some problems if they let Rodriguez have an opportunity to throw the ball. ULM should not have the manpower to stay with LSU, but all these games, you know, all around the conference, you see all kinds of teams that are having such a hard time with the lower level schools, the smaller schools, because there are so many good players out there. And so we'll have to wait and see how this one develops. Officials now getting ready to march the captains out on the field. ULM on the far side coming out. They wear gold pants, white helmets, white jerseys, and the officials getting ready to march out uh, to midfield. And, of course, as always, we have Gordy Rush out there. He's going to watch the toss of the coin. Yes, sir. Make sure it's properly done yes. and making sure that it ends up the right way. Gordy, well, I, how you doing? I, I'm good. There's a little bit of smoke here tonight. And, and I will tell you, it's warmed up. It was pretty chilly tonight in Baton Rouge, America. But it warmed up. And so in the 60s, somewhere around kickoff, as the two captains are uh, exchanging handshakes right now. And Doug, I've got some big uh, injury or actually illness news we'll talk about after the toss, so hang tight with me. Okay. And you'll let it hit the ground, okay? There's heads, that's tails. That's heads, that's tails. What's your call? Heads. He calls heads. It is tails. You've won the toss, what would you like to do? Right. Refer to the second half. Which way do you want to kick? That way, I can turn around this way. All right, so there you go. LSU has won the toss. They are. LSU wants the toss for the pair of their choice in the second half. ULM will receive on this end. All right, so they have it. LSU is going to start on defense. They're going to kick from north to south, right, left to right on your radio dial. So we heard Coach O, Doug, talk about Micah Baskerville was going to sit. He was on crutches on the game, the week leading up to Alabama, played last week against Arkansas, had a fabulous game. And so he's already out, an already thin football team. But apparently there's some sort of illness or they've gone around. There's been a bug in, in the area. And probably the big news I've got for you is that Garrett Nussmeyer has not dressed tonight. 
So Garrett is dealing with, he had high fever this morning. They opted not to dress him. So that's going to make Max Johnson the one lone scholarship quarterback. They'll go with O'Dowd, number 19, a walk-on that's been with the program, I believe, two years. Also, Falk uh, from Karen Crow is on the roster. And John Trey Kirkland, remember, play quarterback in high school and is available, I think, in Wildcat situations. So an already thin LSU team gets thin. And the, the storyline tonight is Max Johnson needs to stay healthy for four quarters. Doug. Well, Max Johnson is going to have to remain healthy because if Garrett Nussmeyer decides that he wants to keep from the red shirt counting uh, uh, against him, that he's not going to be able to play whether he has a fever or not. And we'll have to wait and see how that develops. Baskerville, we're told what's going to play, but maybe he is not. Maybe just late breaking news about the flu bug or whatever it might be uh, will keep him off the field. And that'll be a big loss to LSU's defense because he is one of the stars. He and Delon Clark have been the stars at linebacker for LSU the last couple of games with a lot of tackles and really good solid play all throughout the game. So we'll have to wait and see how that develops. Tigers will be kicking left to right as we look down on the field. That's going to be north to south. ULM will be receiving to start this. Remember, LSU won the toss. They have declined to exercise the option now and deferred to the beginning of the second half. Undoubtedly, they'll receive to start the second half. So Tigers getting ready to line it up to get ready to, to kick it off. Here to give you all the play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair. Thank you, Doug. Welcome in, Tiger fans. A late night, a true Saturday night in Death Valley. Opening kickoff brought to you, as always, by H&E Equipment Services, the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. Here's the approach by Avery Atkins. Teed up at the 35, boot meets ball. We've got football in Louisiana as the kick goes out of the back of the end zone. It's a touchback, 83% touchbacks this season off the foot of Avery Atkins and ULM will start on offense first down at 10 at the 25 as Gordy Rush told you LSU comes in thin they've been thin for most of this season a little thinner possibly but just as I made my way to the press box Michael Bonnet let me know Micah Baskerville says he's going to give it a try so we'll see how much and how close to 100 percent he is on defense he'll be out there now Brett Rodriguez, the junior out of Tucson, son of Rich Rodriguez, the offensive coordinator, lines up the Warhawks. First down at 10 at the 25, and they'll hand it off. Up the middle is going to be Malik Jackson, the sophomore running back uh, out of Jackson, Opelika, Alabama. So several yards up to about the 29-yard line, a gain of four. Second down at six, B.J. Ojolari there to meet him for the stop. Rodriguez, as Doug mentioned to you, Really a scary injury against Troy earlier this season in Sunbelt play. Able to make his way back. Had the majority of snaps last week in the tough loss to Arkansas State. Going to try the end around. They'll give it off to Jevin Frett, the junior out of Connecticut. He goes nowhere. In fact, he'll lose three yards as Damone Clark not buying on that. Able to come up and make the tackle for the Tigers. Again, Baskerville and Damone Clark put on an exhibition last week in that loss to Arkansas. Tigers come after Rodriguez. He just has to unload Damone Clark right there on him. Quarterback trying to throw it to the far side, throws it at the feet of the intended receiver. Jackson had no chance to make that play, and just like that, a quick three and out. This and ULM LSU, will have to punt it away. This LSU defense has changed their personality the last three weeks, and it is a pleasant change for anybody who's a fan of Tiger football. Trey Palmer stands back deep, stands at the 34-yard line of the Tigers. Devin McCormick will punt it away, and the kick, he lets go from the 15. Palmer backpedaling, takes it at about the 32, middle of the field, comes to the near side. The Warhawks get an arm on him and bring him down just across the 35-yard line, a punt of 42 yards, a couple of yards on the return, and LSU's offense quickly out there to get things started. While we have a moment, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification. This is Fighting Tiger Football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile App. First down and 10. Ball marked at the 36-yard line. Pistol formation here. Ty Davis Price along with Max Johnson in the backfield. TDP going to get the carry. Comes around the right edge. 
Gets to the line of scrimmage and makes his way up near the 38. Maybe a gain of two. Ty Shelby, the senior out of Houston, Texas. For Coach Terry Bowden, his defense making the stop. A gain of a couple of yards. Max Johnson in on the first two possessions last week in that loss to Arkansas. And then the football handed over to Garrett Nussmeyer for the duration. Going to be shy of the 38, only about a yard gain. Johnson comes out slinging on second down and nine, throws into the flat. Malik Neighbors has it at the 40 and tunnels his way up the far sideline to about the 43 and a half, a gain of seven. Will make it manageable on third down here for LSU again. They've struggled all season, 37% on third down this year. Third and three, two receivers left. Three wide to the right side, an empty backfield here for Max Johnson. And their opening possession of the game, third down and three. Here's the snap. Johnson has it. Looking left as they bring the blitz, gets it to Neighbors on the screen. Neighbors with room up across the 45 into Warhawk territory, near side 25 20, inside the 15, and brought down from behind around the Warhawk eight yard line. Nick Roberts eventually able to bring him down, but not after a 42-yard pitch and catch, and the Tigers just like that inside the Capital One red zone. Capital One, the official bank and credit card of the NCAA. So on third down and three, Tigers go to the screen game there, and Malik Neighbors showing what he can do after the catch, maneuvering his way middle of the field and breaks it outside to the near side. And LSU in business here. It'll be first down, goal to goal, ball marked at the ULM8. Johnson in the backfield toss to Ty Davis Price going left side. He'll put his head down at the five and get down near the three yard line. A lot of speed talking to Ed Ogeron on Wednesday night. Doug, he said watching the film in the last two weeks, he said Ty Davis Price burst when it's third and one fourth and two talking to him this week about getting that type of burst on first down. Here's the snap to Johnson. Second down and goal. Johnson going to run up the middle, and Johnson will dive into the end zone for his first rushing touchdown of the season. The three-yard scamper after the play breaks down, and Johnson gets in, and the Tigers lead 6-0 with 11.49 to go here in the first stanza. Good decisive move by Johnson as he dropped back, looked in the end zone, scanned it for his receivers, couldn't find anybody open that he wanted to throw to. So rather than hold it and wait, as he usually does, he sprinted up the middle into the end zone for the score. Cade York on to add one more. Placement is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 7-0. LSU strikes first and strikes early here in the first quarter. 11.49 to go. We'll return to Tiger Stadium in just a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, 
more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. First quarter action presented by Burns Estate Planning continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back inside the Caesar Sportsbook broadcast booth, the Tigers draw it up just the way you want it. They win the toss, they defer to the second half, they kick off to ULM. Warhawks go three and out, punt it back to LSU. And the Tigers take it five plays, 64 yards, two minutes and eight seconds. All set up by a big tunnel screen. Johnson to neighbors, rambles 48 yards, sets him up inside the red zone, inside the ULM 10. And eventually Max Johnson picks up his first rushing touchdown of the season. That's your Caesar Sportsbook scoring drive. So 7-0 our score, 11.49 to go here in the first quarter. Fans getting paid up to two days early with direct deposit. Another reason, banking with Capital One, one of the easiest decisions ever. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Term supply, see CapitalOne.com slash bank. Capital One NA, member FDIC. Chris, the, the screen play to neighbors was the perfect storm for LSU's offense. They ran the screen, and at the same time, ULM was blitzing everybody, and they ran everybody out of the play. Ensuing kickoff is end over end, takes another bounce in the end zone, and a couple of bounces later finds its way out of the back. And that'll set up ULM first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. Get 11.49 to go here in the first quarter. Tigers in a must win here tonight against the Warhawks out of the Sunbelt Conference to keep their hopes alive for a postseason opportunity. Of course, the regular season will end next week. LSU will host Texas A&M here at Tiger Stadium with kickoff just after 6 o'clock. First down at 10 at the 25. Rodriguez in the shotgun. He has two receivers right, two to the left, single back. Here's the snap, Rodriguez. Option, here's the pitch. Running right side with it. It's going to be Jackson. Jackson up across Jackson, the Jackson. 30. Runs into the boundary. Micah Baskerville chases him out. Picks up five yards. Jackson, by the way. They've used a number of running backs this season in Rich Rod's offense. Johnson coming off his best performance last week. His first 100-plus yard rushing game in the loss to Arc State. Looking for the slant on second down. It's incomplete. He was looking for Jevin Frett again. May have been deflected at the line. It was well off the mark. It'll set up third down and five. Now, I mentioned LSU has struggled on third down at 37% coming in. ULM, not much better. 35% so far through their 10 games this season. Third down and five. Ball at the ULM 30. Rodriguez, quick fire. Got a man at the 35. He'll pick up the first down up to the 39-yard line. Zach Jackson, the junior. Out of Grand Prairie, Texas, picks up nine yards, and the Warhawks pick up their first first down of the night. Darren Evans on the coverage had too big of a cushion. He gave the receiver way too much room to make that catch and pick up the first down. Working from the far side hash, they'll get it on the ground again. It'll be Malik Jackson trying to find it left side. Mike Jones there. Not putting up with it. Brings him down quickly after a one-yard gain. Jones coming off a couple of good performances. Again, the Clemson transfer. Wanted to play inside at linebacker, but really finding his way in this more 3-4 set, allowing Baskerville, Clark, and Jones to make plays all across the field. Second down and nine for the Warhawks. Rodriguez fakes to the left, now throws it off into the short side. And making the grab at the 42 is going to be Boogie Knight, the junior out of Jefferson, Ohio, leading receiver for ULM. That's his 39th catch of the year. Darren Evans was on coverage, brings him down quickly. But a pickup of seven yards will make it third down and two for the Warhawks. Just off the Tiger Eye logo. Ball at the 47-yard line. Snap to Rodriguez. Again, quick release and overthrown at the 42-yard line of LSU, but it looked like there was movement up front. Flag came out quickly. We'll see what the infraction is all about. Incomplete is the play. Offside on the defense, number 99 in the, in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. To Quaylen Roy, a little jumpy there, the sophomore, the guilty party. Our crew chief tonight, referee David Smith, umpire Rodney Lowry, head of line judge is Richard Godfrey and the replay official 
Here in the booth is Brian Thompson. Greg Penn checking in at linebacker. He also has gotten more moments as the season has gone along. First down and 10 after the infraction. Rodriguez dumps it off in the flat far side at the 45 of the Tigers. Breaking through a tackle and finding his way down the far sideline with a good pickup of 16 yards. Again, a first down for the Warhawks. So now ULM at the 32-yard line of the Tigers. 9.32 to go, and LSU up 7 to nothing. Again, the handoff and tripped up at the 29-yard line. Coming near side is Jackson. Jackson carried the ball left side. Again, LSU with good pursuit. Listening to Durante Jones this week after that gain of four yards, he said he wanted to keep ULM to the boundary. Try to keep everything, use the extra man with the sideline. Four yard gain, second down and six. Move it near side hash at the Tiger 28 yard line. Rodriguez is going to keep and he'll just dive forward down to the 25. Cordell Flott was coming up, and Rodriguez again. You have to wonder how much tough hits he can take at quarterback. So wisely, the junior quarterback goes down. It'll be third down, about four upcoming. Chris Baskerville's out of the game. Penn has been in at linebacker a little bit. They've gone nickel on this formation. We'll keep an eye on 23. Rodriguez sprint out to the right side. Again, drops it in the flat. Again, the catch made at the 23-yard line by Boogie Knight. Tigers get to him, but not before he picks up the first down and works the Warhawks inside the red zone. A gain of eight. First down at 10 ULM. We've seen that play a number of times, Doug. It's just a quick sprint out. The receiver actually goes down about four yards, comes back. And, and they're again, you're talking about the cushion Tigers are giving them. They're going to keep running it until LSU stops it. And LSU's not even covering the receiver until he gets downfield about seven or eight yards. First down and 10 now at the Tigers 16 yard line. Rodriguez with Jackson on a wing to his left. Jackson going to get the carry, try to stretch it far side. Not going to happen. Tigers bring him down. There's a flag out late, maybe a horse collar there. LSU was all over the play, but a flag came out as soon as he went to the boundary. So we'll see what David Smith says it's all about. The Tigers already won penalty on the night. Desmond Little there to make the tackle for LSU. Now we'll get the call. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 59 on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So Desmond Little getting an opportunity to play here, but a costly miscue. Ball is inside the 10 line. We'll move the football to the, just inside the nine, just shy of the eight yard line of LSU. The Tigers leading seven nothing, but the Warhawks on the march here with 7.48 to go in the first quarter. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Snap is back. Handoff up the middle and running to inside the five to about the three. There's going to be Andrew Henry. Gain of five for the Warhawks. Get closer to pay dirt here. And this is interesting. Again, LSU, we've told you. Very depleted and have been for several weeks on the defensive end. But the last two weeks, they have played hard nose against the run. But here's ULM knocking on the door. Second down goal to go from the LSU three. Again, the handoff and left tackle helicoptered as he tried to get to the goal line. LSU plays a couple of stiff hits that time against Andrew Henry. And instead of going forward, he spun around a gain of two. The ball will be placed middle of the field just inside the LSU one yard line. Boy, that was a heck of a hit. They got him low and got him up top, kept him out of the end zone. Second down, check that. Third down, goal to go from the one. Rodriguez again in the shotgun. This time the handoff, they go to a bigger running back, and he goes nowhere. It's Abraham Alsey. And he is stuffed back at about the two-yard line. He was trying to use the size to get in there, but LSU had it all covered up. So now ULM, after marching down the field, has to look at fourth down, goal to go from the LSU two, and 
Right now, Gordy Rush, it looks like they're going to stay with the offense. They are. You know, Rich Rod looked at Terry Bowden and said, we're going for it. Bowden's like, go, go, you go then. And there goes Monroe against LSU. It was a funny exchange. As a total personnel change, they're going four wides here. Shotgun snap, Rodriguez on fourth down, throws, but going to be short at the one-yard line. They release Jackson out of the backfield. The running back, the throw just not far enough. He had to come back for it, diving to make the grab at the one, and LSU's defense holds. And a turnover on downs will give it to LSU. And it'll be first down and 10 from their own one-yard line. 5.49 remaining first quarter. LSU up 7 to nothing. They dodge a bullet early. From the Warhawks, they'll have the ball, will the Tigers, when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance all without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Your team is on a three-game winning streak, and you're convinced it's because you've worn your lucky football jersey and haven't taken it off, not for work, a wedding, or even bathing. With Cox, you can actually wear it all season long because we give you game day coverage and content 24-7. So join us and dress accordingly. Hey, Tiger fans, just say Fan Zone into your Contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. Play games, win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24-7. Hello! So glad you could make it. How have you been? And with whom am I speaking on this fine day? Uh, Joe? You sure about that? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Joe. So what are you looking for today? Something fun? Joe! Have I got the perfect thing for you? You do? I do! October Scratch-Offs from the Lottery. Sounds great. Introducing the October Scratch-Offs from the Lottery. Match three tripler, win up to $3,000. Gold, win up to $12,000. And lucky seven where you could win up to $100,000. Pick up all three today. Must be at least 21 to purchase. We are proud to announce that Burns Estate Planning and Wealth Advisors are the official wealth management partner of LSU Athletics. If you're considering retirement and would like a wealth management firm that specializes in retirement services, 401k rollovers, tax strategies, as well as all your estate planning needs, give Burns Estate Planning and Wealth Advisors a call today at 1-888-592-8818. That's 1-888-592-8818. First quarter action presented by Burns Estate Planning continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Seven to nothing, LSU leads ULM here at Tiger Stadium. Fans, a reminder, stuff your stockings this season. Play $100,000 Happy Holidays from the lottery. You could win up to 15 times and again win up to 100 grand. Just visit your favorite lottery retailer. Ask for 100,000 Happy Holidays today for your chance to win up to $100,000. Must be at least 21 to purchase. Doug, that opening drive for LSU could not have gone better. Right down the field, they punch it in. Max Johnson... The quarterback with the touchdown, seven to nothing, and then give ULM a little credit. They were able to march the ball down, got to the one, had to go fourth down, goal to go from the two. LSU able to get the stop. It was a combination on the ULM drive of good playing by them where they picked up yardage, but LSU had penalties and then they gave them some plays really without covering anybody out in the flat. And so ULM just took advantage of that opening. They've gone to that flat over and over again. This touchdown attempt, had the pass been thrown a little more accurately, would have been a touchdown. First down and 10, Tigers starting from their own one yard line as Johnson about six yards deep in his own end zone. Brian Thomas out wide to the right side. Two receivers just off the line to the left. Hand off Ty Davis Price and TDP going to bowl his way across the five up to the six yard line. Get the Tigers a little breathing room here. After a gain of five, it'll be second down and five. Tiger fans shop Rouse's Markets. Official supermarket of LSU Athletic. Rouse's Markets feels like home. Go Tigers. Five and a half to go. First quarter, LSU up seven nothing. Now they'll send four wide, two to the left, two to the right. Cole Taylor, the tight end now, will motion back towards the line of scrimmage. Johnson in the shotgun. 
Ty Davis Price the featured running back Johnson two yards deep in the end zone slings it out far side over the top of the defender and a catch made out there at the 22 yard line by Jeray Jenkins Jenkins with the 17 yard grab nicely thrown by Max Johnson had one defender over in the flat just tossed it right over the top of him Jenkins makes the grab it'll be first down at 10. Now move it up to the 23 yard line of the Tigers three wide to the right side Johnson a little bit of time drops it off underneath neighbors and here goes the speedster 35 40 finally upended at about the 44 yard line of LSU a gain of 21 Zach Woodard the senior out of Thomasville Alabama had to get a hand on him otherwise neighbors about to take it yard again first down and 10 for the Tigers ball marked at the 44 here's the toss Ty Davis Price. Got the block you need on the outside, but good pursuit by the Warhawks. They trip him up after a gain of two just shy of the 46. Austin Hawley, safety, a senior out of Gladwater, Texas. Stayed at home, stayed in his lane, and made the stop for the Warhawks. Second down and eight after a little more than a yard and a half. Tigers send out two receivers left, two to the right side. Again, Cole Taylor going to motion back to the line of scrimmage. Trey Palmer in the slot to the left side. Johnson calls for the snap and has it. Ty Davis Price off the left side spins away from one defender up across midfield makes his way to about the 49 yard line of the Warhawks. A gain of five. The Tigers will look at third and three upcoming with 338 clock moving first quarter and LSU up seven to nothing. Now we'll see Jack Bass check back onto the floor. He'll join a trio of receivers to the left side. Empty backfield for Johnson here with Thomas in the slot to the right. Ty Davis Price the wide out to the right side. Johnson will have the snap. Johnson to TDP near side in the flat at the 44 or rather the 46 and he squirts through to the 44 yard line a gain of five moves the sticks and it's a first down for the fighting Tigers. That's an effective play TDP split out to the right as a flanker although he's a running back but that matches him up in a favorable position. The pass is thrown out there by Johnson. Good yardage to pick up enough for the first down. First down and 10 now at the ULM 43 yard line. Johnson looking across the middle pump fakes moves to his left pressure comes again. He'll drop it off to Ty Davis Price at the 41 inside the 40 to the 35 before stepping out of bounds. Quick decision by Max Johnson who again pumped down the middle of the field looked to his left and backside pressure breathing down on him able again to just put it right in the hands of TDP just before going to the ground. Gain of seven yards. It'll be second down and a yard. Corey Kiner now will check in. The freshman running back out of Cincinnati for LSU. Two receivers stacked to the left. Wide side of the field. Thomas, the wide out to the near side. Off to Besh. Besh on the screen. Besh, a big head of steam inside the 30, inside the 25. Battles his way down to the 20 yard line. And how about Malik Neighbors? Helping out his receiver in Besh, blocking downfield. Great play. Tigers pick up the first down. They keep moving. They reach the Capital One red zone for the second time tonight after a gain of 14 yards. I like that play too, Doug. Jack great, Besh, when he's blocking, got a head yeah. of steam, is tough to bring down. Great blocking by neighbors out in front of him too. First down and 10, shotgun snap. Johnson, quick throw to Bash and had to unleash it quickly, and it's off no good. Rather, it was Cole Taylor on that far side who checked in for Besh. And that time, they were able to slip through, get some pressure on Johnson. Gordy had to drop it off quickly. Yeah, he did, and just couldn't connect with Taylor. Uh, like to see, uh, actually point out, Chris Hilton, number 17, the true freshman speedster from Zachary, in the game. From what I understand, he can play tonight and still get that redshirt year. He's been injured in this true freshman year and hadn't been able to really get on the field too much. Hilton will be out there in the right slot. Out wide is Thomas. Here's Hilton going to get the screen and after making the catch just dropped down lost his own footing and back to the line of scrimmage that is all it will set up third down and 10 here for LSU. Sometimes that'll happen when you haven't been on the field in a game for six seven eight weeks but again he is going to be in a tremendous receiver here at LSU Josh Williams checks in at running back but he's going to line up out wide to the left another empty backfield but the snap hits Johnson between the numbers. He picks it back up, throws near side. Jure Jenkins wide open at the 10. He'll go on in. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. 
A 20 yard touchdown pass from Johnson. Not sure that's the way they drew it up. Snap hit him right between the numbers. He picked it up as he was falling down. Now got back up again and just fired it out to Jure, who was waiting at about the 14-yard line. I bet they've been practicing that all week. As Johnson, the snap came to him before he was ready for it. So it hit his hands, bounced to the ground. Everybody was alerted when that happened. They see the ball on the ground. Johnson reaches down, picks it up rather than falling on it. And so the ball is still live. The receiver still was a touchdown. The receiver out in the right flat was uncovered because everybody for ULM is alerted to what they thought was a fumble. So really interesting play. Knee by Johnson. The replay shows, I think, that his knee right. was on the ground as he picked the ball up. So it's going to be called back. But it was fun to watch anyway. Yeah, I, look, the, the fumble part's fine. He can pick up the ball and throw it. The question is, when they're going back to look at it, the replay, he got down on his knees when the ball was snapped quickly. Shanahan snapped it while Johnson was trying to audible. He got down on his knee, and was his right knee down when he picked up the ball? That's going to be the question. Yeah. To me, it looks like it, it is, and so I think it's going to be down there, and we are looking at a potential field goal from York. Sideline reports powered by your hometown John Deere dealer, Sunshine. Stay undefeated in the field with a John Deere powered by Sunshine today. So we're under official review, first of the night, brought to you by Acme Oyster House. In fact, what was so spectacular about Johnson's play whether it stands or not is the again the snap after further review the quarterback possessed the ball with his knee down between the 25 and 26 yard line it will be fourth down at that spot so again they will overturn the call but he fell twice he actually missed the snap went down to pick it up actually fell backward then got up again the ball landed right in front of him he went down to the knee and tried to bring it back up but on review it is clear. So the touchdown wiped away. Now we'll see Cade York come out for a 44 yard field goal try, kicking left to right. Ball going to be placed down on the near side hash. Placement is down. York swings the leg, and the kick is no good. Well within Cade York's range. Snap maybe a little high, maybe set the timing off between him and Atkins. Have to see it again, but. That's normally one you can put in the books for Cade York. No, pretty good snap. Placement down and just hooked it wide left. So ULM able to hold, keep it a 7-0 LSU lead with 51 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. We'll return to Tiger Stadium in a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports Mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all ship right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. 
First quarter action presented by Burns Estate Planning continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Fans with zero sugar and now even more delicious. Is the new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? We'll find out for yourself. It's a 7-0 LSU lead over Louisiana Monroe here at Tiger Stadium. Tigers just missed on a 44-yard field goal try by Cade York. As ULM will take back over when play resumes. First down and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Let's take a look at the scoreboard update presented by Cox Communication, the official communications partner of LSU Athletics. Late game tonight here at Tiger Stadium. A couple of games going on in Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina now leading Auburn, trying to take a little bit of intensity off the Iron Bowl coming up next week. Carolina leading Auburn 21 to 17. Ole Miss, not quite the lopsided lead so far. About 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Ole Miss leading 24-9 over Vanderbilt. Tennessee, no problem so far. Starting the third quarter of action, 35-7 over South Alabama out of conference. Rest of the game's pretty lopsided, especially in non-conference action. We'll get to that later. First down and 10 for the Warhawks. Again, the sprint out. This time, the pass in the flat covered up by Micah Baskerville, and it's incomplete. Jared Sparks, the intended receiver. Doug, you got your answer. That time LSU did not allow him to run free, free into the flat <laughs> on a play they've ran four or five times so far here in the first quarter. Second down at 10 at the 26. Ball at the near side hash. Rodriguez calling for the snap. Again, a single back and a wing to his right. Fakes the option pitch. Now Rodriguez is going to run, and he'll just fall forward across the 30 near the 31-yard line. Again, you can tell Gordy Rush, he doesn't want to take contact. Certainly understand that. But if he can get three, four, five yards and then yeah. go down immediately, that's what they'll take. And they, his dad's got him. The ball has come out quick. If he's throwing it, it's three-step. There's nothing down the field right now. He does not want him to take any hits. Third down and five. Ball at the 31-yard line, placed between the hash marks. Two way out wide to the right, two to the left side. Here's the option pitch coming to Jackson. Little high step, gets to the 35 far sideline. Flag comes out back at the 32. Looks like a hold. Kedell Lewis out there on the right edge as Micah Baskerville was trying to get to the ball carrier, Malik Jackson. So this one should be coming back for the Warhawks. Holding number 67 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. So everything for ULM for the most part, Doug, tonight has been on the outside. It's either been the sprint out throw in the flat, or it's been an option pitch, or it's been a zone run. Just trying to stay away from the front of that LSU defense. It'll be third and 14 after the infraction. Moves it back to the 22 yard line. And actually, ULM is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than LSU on the interior line, but not as athletic as LSU's defense. End of the first quarter here at Tiger Stadium. LSU leading 7 0. Second quarter action will come your way next when we continue on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, did you know that Rouse's Markets has their very own digital coupons? Digital coupons are coupons you can access online. Get offers for your favorite national brands at www.rouse's.com and redeem them at any Rouse's Markets. With Rouse's Markets digital coupons, there's no need to keep track of paper coupons. Everything is on online just present your phone number at checkout digital coupons just one more way you save shopping at rouse's markets official supermarket of lsu athletics support your lsu tigers with hancock whitney the official bank of lsu athletics from game day to the offseason hancock whitney lsu credit and debit cards are a big win for any tiger fan Want to get your paws on these cards? Well, apply online or visit HancockWhitney.com slash LSU. Hancock Whitney Bank, member FDIC. All accounts subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions may apply. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At h and &E Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. 
H&E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rentals, sales, parts, and service. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. The time is right, the party's just begun. Ford F-Series has been keeping the good times rolling as the best-selling truck in America 44 years straight. And with the smartest F-150 and most capable Super Duty ever built, this dynasty will keep right on rolling. Drive the new 2021 F-150 at your Southern Quality Ford dealer, proud partner of the LSU Tigers. Based on 1977 through 2020 calendar year sales. Second quarter action presented by Dudley DeBosier continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Seven to nothing, LSU leads Louisiana Monroe here on a late Saturday night in Death Valley. Second quarter action about to begin. Time now to take a look at the first quarter stats presented by Hancock Whitney, official bank of LSU athletics. Both teams with five first downs in the first 15 minutes. Tigers 16 yards on the ground. 121 through the air for a total of 137. Warhawks 26 yards on the ground, 42 through the air for a total of 68. Max Johnson, by the way, 8 of 9 passing, 121 yards. Rodriguez 5 of 8 for 42 yards. Johnson, of course, the difference in this game so far. And his first rushing touchdown of the year from three yards out to get the Tigers on the board. Since then, it's kind of been back and forth, Doug. Nobody really taking control of this game. LSU seems to have been, been more in charge of it, but they don't have much production for the amount of time that they have really controlled the ball. Started out the game, ULM held three and out, punted, and LSU scored. And from that time, and actually, off and on, LSU seems to have been more in control, but it's the same problem they've had throughout the season, Chris, and that is they can't get points on the board to pay them back for the effort that they expend offensively. Warhawks will start attacking third left down. to right. 14. 15 minutes put up on the board. Big third and 14 from their own 22. They'll stack two receivers to the right, two receivers stacked to the left. Rodriguez stands in the pocket and fires. Going to be picked off at the 40-yard line. Jay Ward has it near side. 15, 10, 5. Slips through a defender and dives in. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. Pick six on the 39-yard interception. Ward with his second interception of the season. And that'll make it 13 to nothing. And, Doug, that may help. LSU take charge. Yeah, so when you can't do it offensively, you do it defensively, and that's what LSU decided to do. During the commercial break between the first and second quarter, they obviously decided, look, if we can't score when we have the ball, let's score when they have the ball. And they did it. Great play on the ball by Jay Ward. Gordy Rush came flying out of nowhere. Looked like the receiver was just waiting for it. Ward comes flying in, takes it away, full speed down the near side. Review. The ruling on the field was the runner did not step out of bounds prior to scoring the touchdown. Yeah, and I thought he tight roped it. I didn't have a good view. I'm down here in the end zone, and I was blocked by some LSU coaches. He possibly could have stepped out of bounds. Look, LSU is in man-to-man, -man, what they call man-free. Ward's a free safety. He has no responsibility. He's playing center field like a center fielder in baseball and just reading the quarterback's eyes. He did a fantastic job of that. Broke on the football, and I think he stepped out. Now that I'm seeing it, the inside part of his right foot looked like it stepped out of bounds. They'll take a better, a closer look at it. Yeah, the first replay we got here in the booth didn't have the camera down at the sideline. We'll get a look at it here as he goes skying for it at the 40-yard line. Stays in bounds there on his first step with the ball. Trying to stay in with his third step with the left foot. And, yep, the right foot stepped out. Looks like at about the 33. So this one will probably come back. Still going to be a turnover. Third interception offered up by Rhett Rodriguez on the year. And LSU will have great field position, but something tells me they're going to take those six points off the board, and LSU will have to come out offensively. It's close. It's close. But, look, you saw it. I saw it. To me, there was enough of the inside part of his right foot look like it stepped on the white line. Again, we have seen nothing but the high cam, which you can just assume, Doug, based on that look that that foot's angled towards the boundary. But we actually didn't get confirmation that his foot was on the white line. But they'll have a better look at it here in the replay booth and obviously back in Birmingham. But it was a great play on the ball by Jay Ward. 
He's been fantastic. Well, here we come. Hold on. After further review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 33-yard line. The ball will be placed right there on the left half. So, David Smith not going to make any friends, but he and the replay booth got it right, unfortunately, for LSU. So it goes back to a 7-0 LSU lead, but the Tigers take over. First down and 10 at the ULM 33-yard line. So a chance for the offense to get going here. Two receivers sent wide to the right. One receiver and Devontae Lee, short side of the field to the left. Cole Taylor moves from left to right as the tight end. And we got tons of movement up front by the Warhawks. Not sure they ever got set. Delay of game on the defense, number nine for clapping. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Second penalty against the Warhawks, and again, clapping by the defense will get you in that kind of trouble. You know, Chris, we've seen more of these calls this year, and I assume this is something they're paying attention to, in which the defense has tried to, to draw the offense to, to move or an illegal shift. I think it's the third or fourth call we've seen in the last couple of weeks. It is. Ball moved to the 28 yard line. It'll be first down at five for LSU offensively. It's Johnson. Ball in hand. Looking downfield, now he'll drop it off underneath. Catch going to be made by Kiner, far side. Spins away from a man at the 26. Gets inside the 25. Just shy of the 24-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down by about a yard, so a four-yard gain. But again, an excellent job. A little different tonight for Max Johnson. Really releasing the ball quickly. Wanted to go downfield with it. Had nothing there. Went to the safety valve and Corey Kiner. Here's the handoff to Kiner again. Went up the middle, tried to cut it to his left. He'll pick up the first down after a gain of maybe two. Good open field tackle there at the line of scrimmage by Travion Webster. But it will be first down and 10 for LSU. Mark the ball at the 22-yard line of the Warhawks. 7-0 LSU leads. Johnson, quick fire on the screen. Lee, far side 20, trying to get through a shoestring tackle, but brought down at the 18. Gain of six on the play. It'll set up second down and four. Adam Sparks would not let go. Max Johnson, 10 for 11 so far tonight. His team up 7-0 with 13.40 to go in the second quarter. Handoff, Kiner. Kiner again trying to go left tackle, left guard. Picks up two yards to the 15 as the Tigers once again for the third time tonight. Inside the Capital One red zone, Miles Cole, the sophomore from Shreveport, makes the stop for the Warhawks. So after a couple of plays with Kiner, Ty Davis Price, junior running back from right here in Baton Rouge. He was rushed for over 100 yards in four of the last five games. Tigers two for three on third down, looking at third down and two. Johnson, high snap, but handled. Ty Davis Price right up the middle, has the first down, gets to the 10, and finally put down at the nine-yard line. A gain of six. First down and 10 for the Fighting Tigers. It'll actually be first down and goal. Tigers didn't get the call. On what we assumed initially was a pick six by Jay Ward, but now moving the ball deeper inside Warhawk territory, looking at first down goal to go from the nine. Two receivers left, one receiver in lead to the right side. Johnson quickly looks to the near sideline, now calls for the snap. Pulls from Ty Davis Price, throws into the end zone in the hands of Lee, but he couldn't hold on. Nice move by Lee and a really good throw by Max Johnson, just out of his fingertips, incomplete. This is as accurate as we've seen Johnson all season in a consistent way, and he's getting rid of the football quickly. And that's another problem that he's had. He's been hanging on to the ball too long earlier in the season, but tonight he's right on it. That pressure hanging off his left shoulder as he released the ball, but a great decision and almost had the connection. Second down, goal to go from the nine. Johnson again wants the football. He's got it. Looks right, looks back left, throws to the back of the end zone, and he was looking for Trey Palmer, but not sure if Palmer slipped or was knocked down. The fans thought he was pushed to the ground, but nonetheless, it's incomplete. No flag. It'll be third down goal to go from the nine here for LSU with 12-19 to go. Here in the second quarter, the Tigers leading 7-0. Josh Williams back onto the field. 
He'll line up wide to the right side. Now move back to join Max Johnson in the backfield. They'll combo three receivers to the left. Devontae Lee, the single receiver right side. Third down, goal to go from the nine-yard line. Johnson high snap, but handled. Now will sprint out to his left. Still looking downfield. Johnson throws on the run across his body, looking for Besh, but it was behind him, incomplete. Right in the middle of the end zone. That'll set up fourth down goal to go from the nine. It's a great job by ULM with the change in coverage. A lot of teams play man-to-man -man down here. LSU was expecting they were going to play man-to-man. -man. They played zone, and LSU had a bunch formation with the pick route. Nobody was open. Johnson tried to throw it back to Besh, but Besh drifted a little too far back into the zone. Tigers are going to have to settle for a field goal. York going to try the 27-yarder this time. Kicking towards the north end zone. He missed earlier from 44 yards. Again, this one well within his range. Placement is down. Kick is on its way. And the kick is good. That will make it 10-0 LSU. Coming at the 12.05 mark here in the second quarter. Timeout on the field. Tigers get a turnover. Come away with three points to extend their lead. 10-0 over Louisiana Monroe. Back in a moment here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports Mobile and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes, in the SEC, it just means more. He's got a seam. He's down the near side. Has. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports Mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Second quarter action presented by Dudley DeBosier continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. As we continue on this Saturday night, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification. This is Fighting Tiger Football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. A very pleasant evening. Temperatures in the 60s here, low 60s, maybe 60, may reach 59 before we're done tonight. Here at Tiger Stadium in the capital city, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU taking on Louisiana Monroe tonight out of conference, SEC versus Sunbelt. The Tigers lead 10 to nothing. Along with Doug Morrow, Gordy Rush, I'm Chris Blair. Happy to have you along with us. Here tonight, the Tigers, after a turnover, interception by Jay Ward, stepped out at the 33-yard line. The LSU offense takes over. Nine plays, 24 yards, 2 minutes, 43 seconds. Then a 27-yard field goal. Cade York, one for two in that department tonight. Fans download the Walk-Ons mobile app from your favorite app store. Visit your local Walk-Ons restaurant. Walk-Ons, the official sports restaurant of LSU Athletics. So Avery Atkins will bring out the special teams unit. He'll tee it up at the 35-yard line. Boogie Knight and Alfred Luke back deep. For the Warhawks, here's the approach by Atkins. It's a foot into this one. And they'll watch it sail into the end zone. It'll be another touchback. It'll be first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. They put in the time, effort, and hard work. They're suited up and ready because when it comes to meeting your unique health care needs, every day is game day for Our Lady of the Lake. Our Lady of the Lake, proud to be the official health care provider of LSU Athletics. So Doug the Warhawks able to move down the field in their last possession. They come up short on fourth and goal from the two. 
saw LSU being a little more aggressive in that last drive. But certainly not the start defensively we've seen in the previous two weeks against Alabama and Arkansas. We'll see what happens here. First down and 10. Rodriguez is going to hand it off, and again, it'll go to the running back, Malik Jackson. Jackson, I mentioned, had his first career 100-yard-plus rushing game last week. 22 carries, 166 yards, and two scores in the loss to Arkansas State, 27-24 in Sunbelt play. Now we'll see Chandler Rogers check in. He took the majority of snaps this season after the injury to Rodriguez. He'll be in the backfield by himself. Comes out throwing into the flat near side at the 30. Catch going to be made by Will Derrick. Out of Shreveport, a gain of five. But Rogers, junior out of Mansfield, Texas, he creates another dynamic for this Warhawk offense. He can run it. He can throw it. A true dual threat. He's got eight passing touchdowns on the year, one rushing touchdown. And has rushed for 327 yards on the year. Third down and five. Ball placed at the 30. Rogers, design run. Gets away from one defender up across the 30. Brought down from behind by Damone Clark at about the 34. Maybe about a yard shy, maybe a little less than a yard. Right on cue. There's your dual threat quarterback, Doug. You think he's going to keep it on this fourth down play? Looks like they're nope. going to go ahead and punt it away. <laughs> Didn't know what type of gambling Terry Bowden would do here tonight, but down 10 nothing with the ball at the 34. He decides to bring in the punt unit. Devin McCormick again, averaging 40 yards a punt on the year, has a long of 56. He does have one block this season. Got a punt earlier tonight at 42 yards. He'll take the snap, let it fly from the 24 of his own. Palmer, as this kick angles far side, gets out of the way, takes a bounce, and catches a Warhawk. At about the 29-yard line after a 37-yard punt. So the Tigers will take over. They lead 10-0 over ULM. 10-13 remains in the second quarter. We'll step aside for a break. Back in a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our Lady of the Lake, just like LSU, is anchored by deep roots put down almost a century ago. We share a singular vision to advance health, education, and research to serve the incredible people of Louisiana. Our partnership with LSU is inspired by our passions for knowledge and our commitments to our community and healthy Louisiana families. Together, there's nowhere we can't go. Our Lady of the Lake is proud to be the health care provider of LSU Athletics. Your team is on a three-game winning streak, and you're convinced it's because you've worn your lucky football jersey and haven't taken it off. Not for work, a wedding, or even bathing. With Cox, you can actually wear it all season long because we give you game day coverage and content 24-7. So join us and dress accordingly. Hey, Tiger fans, just say Fan Zone into your Contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. Play games, win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24-7. Are you tired of relying on other people for your next raise or paycheck? Then it may be time for you to look into working for yourself in an industry that is busier than it's ever been. Janny King, the king of clean, is looking for new franchisees who want to work for themselves, but not by themselves. Here's the best part. Janny King already has leads in this area and our franchise opportunities start at under $20,000. To find out what advantages ownership can mean for you, go to JannyKingCleans.com. That's JannyKingCleans.com now. Janny King. The King of Queen. Second quarter action presented by Dudley DeBosier continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 10-0 LSU leads Louisiana Monroe here at Tiger Stadium. 10-13 remains in the second quarter. Fans accelerate your dream with the Toyota Fuel Your Dream sweepstakes. Winner will receive a $5,000 gift card to make your dream a reality. To enter, visit toyota-fuel-your-dream.com. No purchase necessary. Real quickly, updating you on the Cox Communications scoreboard. South Carolina trying to hold on. They have the football. About two minutes and 30 seconds remain at williams Bryce Stadium. The Gamecocks up 21-17. 
late in the fourth quarter over Auburn. Ole Miss with three minutes to go in the third quarter, leading 24-9 over the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Tennessee stretching its legs now with seven and a half to go in the third quarter, up 49-7 against South Alabama. Earlier today, number one Georgia, no trouble with Charleston Southern, 56-7 the final in Athens. Kentucky put it down on New Mexico State, 56-16 the final in Lexington. Mississippi State over Tennessee State, 55 to 10. Texas A&M, the Tigers' opponent next week. No problem with Prairie View, 52 to 3 is the final. And an interesting game in Tuscaloosa. Alabama holds on, 42-35 to get the win over Arkansas. And maybe the biggest shocker, certainly in the SEC, Missouri, in overtime. Ties the game 23, or rather 23 all. They decide to go for two and get it on the first try. They defeat Florida. In Como tonight, 24-23. First down and 10. The Tigers will put it on the ground as they start from the 29-yard line. And it'll be Ty Davis Price picking up four yards right up the middle. Rolling under 10 minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Chris, you remember when Florida took Alabama to the limits? And LSU, we thought that was a good win over Florida back then. That seems like forever and a day ago second down and six Johnson with the snap looking downfield still looking has time plenty of time on loads and it's incomplete through the hands of Jeray Jenkins up at the 46 yard line he was open had a lot of zip on that throw and Jenkins may have not dug watched it all the way in went right between his two hands Jenkins right in the middle of the field as Johnson waited, 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 finally threw it to Jenkins. Jenkins could have caught that. The pass could have thrown a little bit easier to give him an easier catch to make. Third down and six for LSU. Empty backfield now. Two receivers left, two to the right. Johnson looking left again has time throws down the middle neighbors has it at the 46 across midfield he will take it to the house 20 15 10 5 touchdown Tigers Malik neighbors with the 67 yard touchdown his third score of the year shot out of an absolute cannon after making the grab on the far side hash how ran the Warhawks nobody gets near him and the well, Tigers extend the lead 16 to nothing. That's the Jeray Jenkins pattern from the previous play. Same pattern, different receiver, pass thrown about the same place, made the reception, sprinted into the end zone for the score. Cade York trying to add one more here. He's ready. Atkins places it down. Cade swings the leg, and it is good. 17-0. Quick strike for LSU. 9-19 remaining here in the second quarter. Timeout on the field. We'll return to Tiger Stadium in a moment. LSU 17. Louisiana Monroe nothing on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all ship right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast on the LSU Sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe. Subscribe today. 
second quarter action presented by Dudley DeBosier continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Malik Neighbors, one of the many talented freshman receivers for LSU out of Youngsville, Louisiana. 67 yard touchdown pass LSU extends the lead 17 to nothing with 919 to go in the second quarter LSU making quick work with that possession three plays spanning 71 yards 54 seconds neighbors with the 67 yard touchdown reception for Max Johnson longest play from scrimmage for LSU this season the previous long 64 yards on a connection from Johnson to Kayshawn Butte. But Malik Neighbors now, four receptions, 143 yards, and that score, his third receiving touchdown of the year. Tiger fans shop Rouse's Markets, official supermarket of LSU Athletic. Rouse's Markets, feels like home. Go Tigers. One thing is clear, especially in the last couple of possessions, LSU's offensive line more than doing their job. Johnson with a chance to go through his progressions. Again, early in the game, he was releasing the football very quickly, which is a good thing. He was getting rid of the ball. But the last couple of possessions, he's had time to scan the field. That time, found neighbors caught it on the run. And that was all she wrote. Suing kickoff well deep in the back of the end zone. Another touchback on the record of Avery Atkins. And ULM will take over first and 10 at the 25 with 9.19 to go. Tiger fans, stop by, see your local Southern Quality Ford dealers. Take a test drive, get amazing deals and low financing on a new car, truck, or SUV, and let the good times roll. That touchdown pass to neighbors is so important, and it shows when you consider the fact that Keishon Butte is the guy that before he was injured, he was the guy that would have been in a position to make that catch and take it to the end zone. LSU didn't have one of those people any longer once he got hurt. Neighbors is going to be that guy, and he's going to be the one that steps into the, the breach and takes the advantage away. First down and 10 at the 25. Again, second quarterback of the night going to be Chandler Rogers. Comes out firing, but well off the mark at the 35, looking for Jevin Frett. Throw nowhere close. It's incomplete. Second down and 10 quickly at the 25 yard line. Remember, fans with zero sugar and now even more delicious. Is the new Coca Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Well, find out for yourself. Second 10 at the 25. LSU will line up defensively. Rodgers in the shotgun. Pulls from the running back Jackson and a design quarterback run scampers up the far sideline across the 35 up near the 38 a run of 13 yards and he picks up the first down so Rogers showing his speed play side coming to the near side put it in the belly of Jackson and you saw that burst of speed to get to the edge first down and 10. Ball marked at the 36 yard line. LSU up 17 to nothing. 845 clock moving second quarter. Rodgers again in the shotgun. He'll send three receivers right. This time Jackson will get the handoff coming near side. Can't get to the corner and swung down at the 36 by who other than Damone Clark coming into the game. Leading the country 118 tackles following the game last week against Arkansas and adding to that total here tonight. Headhunting once again for the senior linebacker. It'll be second and 11 at the 37 yard line. Rogers empty backfield unleashes quickly and throw overthrown through the hands of Fret. Couldn't hold on. It's incomplete. That'll bring up third down and 11. Warhawks just two for seven tonight. Again, Rhett Rodriguez started the game. Last possession they went to Chandler Rogers. He'll send three wide to the left side. Quarterback draw, and he'll go nowhere. Dropped at the 35-yard line. May have lost a yard. 
And that'll set up fourth down and 12. B.J. Ojolari, along with Sony Fanua, who has played really well the last two weeks. Started his career at Mesa Community College. Had an injury coming into this year. Got back in the Auburn game. Had two tackles in that contest. Five tackles in the loss to Kentucky. Two tackles against Alabama. Had four tackles and two tackles for the loss last week to Arkansas. The punt by McCormick. Puts a boot in the air. Comes down quickly. Palmer has it middle of the field at the 22. Breaks it outside as a flag comes flying and he'll be twisted and brought down at the 35. 42-yard punt. We'll see what the return will look like after this. Penalty is assessed and we're told by David Smith, our crew chief. And Palmer last week also really did a great job in returning the punt. Gave LSU a couple of short fields to work with. Unfortunately, Tigers could not make hay with it in the loss 16-13 to Arkansas. During the return, holding number six on the receiving team. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So the Tigers will be backed up, and we got a timeout on the field. 7-17 remains second quarter. LSU leading 17-0. Fighting Tigers have the ball when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Thanks for calling Toyota. This is Jan. Hey, Jan. Toyota thought. Is it on? It is. Now's the time to find year-end deals on Camry, RAV4, the all-new Tundra, and more. Great. It's officially the holidays. Fire up the chestnuts, kids! So you base your family's holiday schedule around Toyotathon? Bingo. How else will we know it's time to celebrate? Dealer inventory varies. Current offers on these vehicles end November 30th. Offers are subject to change throughout Toyotathon, which ends on January 3rd. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Toyota. Let's go places. Tiger fans, did you know that Rouse's Markets has their very own digital coupons? Digital coupons are coupons you can access online. Get offers for your favorite national brands at www.rouse's.com and redeem them at any Rouse's Markets. With Rouse's Markets digital coupons, there's no need to keep track of paper coupons. Everything is online. Just present your phone number at checkout. Digital coupons, just one more way you save shopping at Rouse's Markets. Official supermarket of LSU Athletics. Fans, if you were born to grill, then check out Barbecue Guys for all your grilling and outdoor living needs. With the largest selection of top-rated grills and outdoor products, best-in-class customer service, and expert product reviews, tips, and how-to videos, Barbecue Guys makes it easier than ever to shop online for backyard necessities. They're there to help you master grilling and outdoor entertaining. So visit BarbecueGuys.com. That's BBQGuys.com to learn more. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. Second quarter action presented by Dudley DeBosier continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 17-0 LSU leads Louisiana Monroe. Tigers finishing out the regular season with a three-game homestand. Last week, tough loss in overtime, 16-13 to Arkansas. Out of conference tonight against the Warhawks, and then we'll finish up the season next Saturday night, 6 o'clock kickoff. It'll be LSU and Texas A&M. Tigers again, 4-6 and six on the season, trying to get bowl eligible. They'll need a win tonight. And again next week. Cox scoreboard update, final in Columbia. South Carolina holds on 21-17. T.J. Finley having to take the controls of the Auburn offense after the foot injury to Bo Nix and the Gamecocks. The coach able to celebrate another big victory there at home. It's been a tough season in the first year for Coach Beamer, but a little bit of excitement there. LSU. After the penalty, after the return by Palmer, the ball placed at the 21-yard line of the Tigers who attack right to left. 7-17 remains before halftime. ULM appears to be getting a little gassed up front. Again, having all kinds of trouble with the speed on the outside of these LSU receivers. Tigers so far tonight, just 30 yards on the ground. But Max Johnson and Malik Neighbors teaming up. 
through the air. First down at 10 Johnson working with Ty Davis Price. They'll try it on the ground. Here's TDP right side up across the 25 just shy of the 26. Davis Gain of five as Zach Woodard right side. picks up another Zach tackle Woodard. for the Warhawks. Tell you, Doug, the storyline for me tonight has been Max Johnson just looks decisive. This is the Max Johnson I remember from the end of 2020. He's getting rid of the football. He's confident in what he's doing. Second down and six for LSU. Kirkland motions behind the formation, lines up to the left side. Again, Ty Davis Price going to get the carry, stutter step momentarily, and then keeps digging across the 30. Picks up the first down as he's just shy of the 33 yard line. Good gain of seven and a half, maybe eight yards there. As we roll under six and a half to go before halftime. Again, the mission tonight is to win the football game, regardless of who the opponent is. But there also is something to be said for all of these new faces, all of these young players. Trying to build a little confidence heading into what will be a tough matchup next week against Texas A&M. But first things first, got to take care of the Warhawks. On first down, Johnson, again with time, unleashes, and again, a little overthrown at midfield, looking for Palmer coming across the middle. Went up in the air on the far side hash. But again, that one just a little too much air. Had plenty of zip. But even Palmer couldn't go up and bring it down. He's getting people open between the hash marks in the middle of the field. We've talked about it many times. That is where people come really open. And the throw is the easiest for the quarterback to make because it's the shortest that he makes. That time overthrown just a little bit. That's happened two or three times in this game. He's had a, several of them where he was on the money, and those have paid off for him. The last time they came up empty in that play, they tried it again, but now the Warhawks bring a blitz and grabbing Johnson, slinging him down at the 25 is Travion Webster. First sack of the night for this Warhawk defense who came in with 19 sacks on the year. Webster picking up his first sack. And a nine-yard loss will back up LSU third and 18. Back at their own 24. A little bit of pressure at times, especially early in that first quarter for the Warhawks. That time they get home. Williams in it running back. Johnson has time to throw. Throws over the crowd. And the catch made up around the 40-yard line by John Trey Kirkland. Who had to go up high to get it, but followed it in, made the grab, picks up 16 yards, but it's going to be just shy of the first down, looking at about fourth and a little less than three yards, and we'll see Avery Atkins come out with the punt unit. It's a great catch by Kirkland, the senior out of Lutcher, Louisiana, his fourth catch of the year, but got tripped up. He's able to come down with that and make just a forward step. He'll probably have the first down, but a good tackle by the Warhawks will force the punt. Boogie Knight stands down at the 14 yard line for ULM and they're gonna fake it. Atkins trying to throw and it's gonna be picked off. The receiver Kirkland fell down. The only man there to get it is Josh Newton. Far side to the near side inside the 35 to 30 and eventually tripped up at about the 28 yard line. So they try to go for the fake punt. Atkins had the jump pass on the fake punt against Alabama. That time was trying to throw much farther downfield to the far sideline, but Kirkland lost his footing. And nobody there but Josh Newton who picks up his second interception of the year. Well, you'd have to say that that play surprised everybody. Certainly surprised me, surprised ULM, except for the interceptor who was sitting there watching the ball come to him and didn't believe it, could not believe it. So a nice return on the INT gives the Warhawks great field position here, the 28. Now we'll see Rhett Rodriguez check back in at quarterback here. With a little life given to the ULM offense from the turnover. Option, pitch going near side. LSU has Henry hemmed in. Finally puts his toe in the ground and gets to about the 28 in the line of scrimmage, but no gain on the play. Ninth interception 
But check that. That's the 11th interception for ULM on the year. Second down at 10 at the 28. Again, Rodriguez in the shotgun. Andrew Henry on a wing to his right. Rodriguez sprint out to his right. Unloads the football, waiting for it wide open at the 16-yard line, making a man miss at the 7 and finding the end zone is Boogie Knight. Knight with his second touchdown of the year, a 27-yard strike. That one looked a little too easy. Nobody in the vicinity. We've seen that sprint out from Rodriguez time and time again tonight. But nobody knew where Boogie Knight was, and he boogies his way into the end zone. And the Warhawks are on the board. That'll make it 17-6 with 3.34 remaining and a point after upcoming. Well, LSU has proven why the previous fake punt was such a surprise because this is what happens when you're not successful with it, which they were not. Point after attempt by Sutherland is good. So it's a 10-point LSU lead. The turnover. Each team has given the ball away once tonight. LSU came away with three points on a field goal. And ULM takes that interception. And then drives down on the 27-yard touchdown pass from Rodriguez tonight. And it's 17-7 LSU by 10. It's a surprise you fake there, Chris, but the, the type of fake, you know, in a punt formation, the outside guy, the wide receiver, is what's labeled as a gunner. And most teams, most teams play man-to-man -man on that gunner. They usually put a DB that runs, and what you're trying to do is just get in the way so that's the first guy down the football field. You don't want him to make early contact with your punt returner. So to run in the to, to run a route like that at somebody that's playing man-to-man -man is, is is much a surprise as the punt to me. The middle of the football field's open, and we saw that against Alabama because everybody's committed to run, and nobody's playing man-to-man. -man. So the call was a surprise in me, the type of fake. I think everybody in agreement with you. <laughs> Not much we can add to that. Kickoff on its way. Palmer will give it a look, but it will take a bounce in the end zone about two yards deep. And with 3.34 remaining here in the second quarter, LSU has allowed the Warhawks on the board. It's a 10-point LSU lead, 17-7. And the Tiger offense has been very efficient, especially here in the second quarter. They'll get an opportunity to do it again here. Tiger fans, say fan zone into your contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. Play games, win prizes, Cox for LSU fans 24-7. So a quiet crowd here at Tiger Stadium as things got a little tight. Quick turn of events, the interception, then the 27-yard touchdown pass. Johnson out of the shotgun. Pressure breathing down, but he'll sprint out to the near side and drop it off to Besh at the 25, and Jack Besh will lunge forward to the 30 and a gain of five yards. Again, Gordy mentioned it. Doug, you mentioned it. The decisiveness tonight for Max Johnson who again may not have been 100% the last several weeks. He's taken some tough shots back there at quarterback. Looks like a different young man here tonight. Second and five at the Tiger 30. Handoff Williams goes right. Nothing there. Tried to stop on a dime, and he'll be knocked down at the 26-yard line. Loss of four. Zach Woodard again adds to his tackle total tonight. The ULM touchdown energized them defensively. LSU now with third and a little bit over eight yards to go deep in their own territory, and ULM would love to get it back one more time before half. Five wide set, three to the left, two to the right. Johnson all by his lonesome in the backfield. Third down and a short nine. Johnson steps up in the pocket. Now we'll tuck and run. And a flag comes out as he crosses the 30 up near the 34. He'll be short of the first down. Looked like that was a ULM glove that went flying. I don't see any flags down, so they were wearing gold gloves. So nonetheless, the Tigers come up short on the run by Johnson. And on fourth and a little more than a yard, Avery Atkins will come back out. He will stand at the 17-yard line of his own. Boogie Knight will stand at the 15, and dare I say, we would all be shocked <laughs> if this isn't just a traditional punt. ULM comes after it, but he gets it away. High kick angling far side and will out of bounds. goes out of bounds inside the 15. Let's see where they mark it out. Mark yep, the at about the 12. 12 so a 54-yard punt. 
And the Warhawks have possession here, just a minute 39. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining, so the Warhawks now can, with a little more pep in their step, cutting the lead 17-7, can use the sidelines, can use the clock. As Doug mentioned, that interception turned their entire body language around. Even the sideline looks different than it did the majority of the second quarter. They got three timeouts, Chris. And remember, LSU won the toss, they deferred, so LSU's gonna get the ball. Wouldn't see surprise if Rich Rod gets a first down or two and cuts it loose. Red Rodriguez, we've seen two quarterbacks tonight. Rodriguez with that scoring drive last time out. We'll man the controls here. A little delay handoff, and it's going to be Malik Jackson up the middle of the field. Tried to get to the 20, but pushed back at about the 19. He'll pick up seven yards. Set up second down and three. Fock under one minute, 25 seconds. Monroe not yet burning the first of their three timeouts. They'll line it up here. Rodriguez with a single back and a wing to his right. Two receivers right. One out wide to the left side. Jackson again will get the carry. Moves left. Cuts back to his right. Up the middle of the field. Gets the first down to the 23-yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily. The tackle made by Micah Baskerville, who again was questionable coming into this game after really battling a nagging injury for the last couple of weeks. But this week... Leading into tonight's game, it was a big question mark just moments before kickoff. But he's out there tonight again making plays. It'll be first down and 10 at the 33. Down to 47 seconds. Again, the clock continues to move. And ULM in no big hurry here. Rodriguez now gets him lined up. Two wide to the right, one to the left. Single back formation. H back to the left side of that offensive line. Takes the snap with 30 seconds on the second quarter clock. And again, they'll just keep it on the ground to Jackson up to the 26 yard line. That may be the final play of the first half. We'll be looking at second down and seven upcoming. And ULM looks to be making their way to the far side tunnel. And indeed, they will call it a half as the final eight seconds roll off the second quarter clock. So LSU had a 17 nothing lead, but a turnover by the Tigers results in a big score for the visiting Warhawks. And it's a 10 point LSU lead as we head into the halftime locker room 17 to 7. Coming up, we'll have our Capital One halftime interview with head coach Ed Ogeron. Going to be interesting to get his thoughts after his team looked like they were taking control of the game. The big turnover swings old Mo the Warhawks way, and he finds his team only up by 10 points here in this non-conference tilt between the Sun Belt and the Southeastern Conference. Gordy Rush standing by in just a few moments. We'll go down to him. Coming up, the Super One Foods halftime report. Scores from around the SEC, around the top 25. Full game stats, first half stats, and then we'll get you ready for the second half of action. Let's go Chris, down to Gordy Rush. All right, Coach, first thing jumps out at me, Max Johnson. I thought much more decisive tonight. Looks good. Yeah, looking good. You know, explosive plays are great for us. The crossing routes are great for us. Let's talk on the defensive side of the football. Our defense has played steady this game, but no, another good performance out Yeah, I really like the way our defense is attacking, getting after the quarterback. Back. They have an uh, answer for our zero blitzes. Uh, Durante is doing a great job of calling the game. Well, end of the end of the half, a little bit of a momentum. The uh, the fake punt didn't work quite like you wanted it to. Yeah, we took a shot. You know, they, you know, you're a hero when, when you make it. You're a goat when you don't. All right, got the ball starting first half. What's the message, team? They're score, start fast, play for 60 minutes. All right, best of luck. Go Tigers. Chris, thank you, Gordy. Thank you, Coach. We're at halftime here at Tiger Stadium. You're fighting Tigers of LSU, leading Louisiana Monroe 17 to seven. Step aside, we come back. We'll crank up the Super One Foods halftime report. Our score at the break, LSU 17. Louisiana Monroe 7 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Albertsons is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Just For You deals is now Albertsons For You. It's everything you love about Just For You with all new perks. Get rewarded just for being you, including personalized deals, a free item every month, and even a treat on your birthday. With Albertsons For You, you earn points every time you shop and redeem them for discounts on groceries and more. Brand new Albertsons For You members receive $5 off their next $25 or more purchase just for signing up. So download or update your Albertsons app and see your all new, all awesome perks. Albertsons, fresh foods, local flavors. Everyone loves a winner, and Waiter wants that to be you. Download the Waiter app and place an order with promo code TIGERS21 for free game day delivery. Every order earns a chance to win Waiter food credit. 
signed merch, Tiger tickets, and more. Order now with promo code TIGERS21 and get the win with Waiter. Waiter, you relax, we deliver. Looking to up your grocery game? Skip the lines, not the service, with Super One Foods Curbside. Shop SuperOneFoods.com for the lowest prices on all of your favorite brands. Select your pickup time. Our expert shoppers will do the shopping for you and load your groceries right into your car. They even offer same-day pickup when you order before 6 p.m. Score super savings and enjoy the convenience of curbside service at Super One Foods. Super low prices. Welcome in to the Super One Foods Halftime Report. Super One Foods, go Tigers, and go Super One Foods. Soon, we return to second half action of LSU Fighting Tiger football. But first, let's check the latest around the college football world. From the Capital One studio, here is Brian Haldane with a scoreboard update on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Let's go ahead and run down those scores from around the top 25. Starting off, number one, number one, Georgia, absolutely no problems today. Top ranked Georgia walk in the park with a 56 to 7 win over Charleston Southern. Number two, Alabama holds off the Hogs. They top Arkansas 42 to 35. Uh, number three, Oregon is doing battle right now at Utah, uh, and it is not looking good for the third ranked Ducks right now. 732 to go in this game. It's 38 7 Utah over Oregon. Number four, Ohio State straight up destroyed number seven, Michigan State. The line in this game was like 19 and a half. Ohio State had that covered before the end of the first quarter. 56 to seven, your final Buckeyes a winner. Number five, Cincinnati corrals the Mustangs of SMU, 48-14 there. It was number six, Michigan beating up on Maryland, 59 to 18. And eighth ranked Notre Dame blanked Georgia Tech, 55 to nothing. The, uh, let's see what we got up next. We have Oklahoma State up next. The ninth-ranked Cowboys are in action right now. And Oklahoma State has a 16-0 lead over Texas Tech. 6.50 to go in the third quarter of that matchup. Number 10, Wake Forest falls 48-27 to Clemson. Dave Aranda and his 11th-ranked Baylor Bears were 20-10 winners over Kansas State. 12th-ranked Ole Miss is hosting Vanderbilt. And with 7.05 to go in that game, Ole Miss has a 31-17 lead. Number 13, Oklahoma staved off Iowa State, uh, 28-21. Number 14, BYU was a 34-17 winner at Georgia Southern. It was 15th ranked Wisconsin, topping Nebraska, 35-28. Number 16, Texas A&M clobbered Prairie View, 52-3, your final score there. Iowa was a 10-point winner over Illinois, 33-23, as was number 18, Pittsburgh, a 10-point winner, 48-38 over Virginia. Number 20, NC State beat up on Syracuse, 41-17, your final score there, and... The only other score I'm looking at in the top 25 right now would be number 25, Mississippi State, crushing Tennessee State, 55-10. to 10. Moving to your in-state schools, Tulane, a big winner today. The Green Wave hosting the South Florida Bulls, posting up a 45-14 to 14 win. Over in, I believe this is, what is this, Conference USA? Yes, it is. Louisiana Tech falls to so- Southern Miss, 35-19. Um... The UL Raging Cajuns, a 42-14 winner over the Liberty Flames. And in the Southland Conference, Northwestern State topped McNeese 24-20, and Nichols beat Southeastern 45-42. Of course, our score at halftime right now, LSU has a 17-7 lead over the UL Monroe Warhawks. Our halftime show will continue right after this break on the LSU Sports Radio Network. He's got a seam. He's down the near side. If you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports hey Radio Network while watching your Fighting Tigers on TV, now you can. What and it's easy to do. do you want me Just to go in TV. here? You want me to do the scoring summary first? No, there's no interview. With the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers! We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more, for their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes, in the SEC, it just means more. 
LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. Second half action of LSU Fighting Tiger football is coming up. But first, the Super One Foods halftime report continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Halftime LSU leading 17 to 7 over ULM Walks. It was an unusual first half, and what we're going to do is to take a look at the team statistics first. Then I'll give you the scoring summary after the break, and then we'll have the individual statistics. Team statistics in the first half. First down, ULM three, LSU had four. ULM had nine rushes for 29 yards, LSU nine for 21. Two of five passing for ULM, one interception, LSU five of 11, one interception, total offense, 14 plays, ULM 62 yards, LSU 20 for 117. LSU punted one time for 54 yards, ULM two for 39.5. Time of possession, 835 for LSU, ULM six, 35. There you have the team statistics for the first half. We'll be back with the scoring summary after this break on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at LSU. LSU sports.net slash podcast on the LSU sports mobile app and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more for their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy more than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! As we get you set for the second half of Fighting Tiger Football, the Super One Foods Halftime Report continues. Time now for the first half recap on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 17 to 7, LSU leading ULM at half here in Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Doug Morrow along with Chris Blair and Gordy Rush, LSU band out on the field entertaining the crowd here at halftime. Not a particularly big crowd, but a nice night for football, and the people who are here are very enthusiastic. Let's take a look at the scoring summary for the first half. In the first quarter, LSU opened it up at the 11.49 mark. Max Johnson with a three-yard rush. Cade York with the extra point. Five plays, 64 yards, two minutes and eight seconds occupied on the clock for the LSU score, 7-0. Here's the snap to Johnson. Second down and goal. Johnson's going to run up the middle, and Johnson will dive into the end zone for his first rushing touchdown of the season. The three-yard scamper after the play breaks down, and Johnson gets in, and the Tigers lead 6-0 with 11.49 to go here in the first stanza. 
In the second quarter at the 12.05 mark, LSU with a Cade York 27-yard field goal. Nine plays in the drive, 24 yards, occupying two minutes and 43 seconds for the Tigers to go ahead 10-0. Again, this one well within his range. Placement is down, kick is on its way, and the kick is good. That will make it 10-0 LSU coming at the 12.05 mark here in the second quarter. Still in the second quarter at the 919 mark, LSU with a Malik Neighbors 67-yard pass from Max Johnson. Cade York with the kick. Three plays, 71 yards, taking up only 54 seconds. LSU leading 17-0. Two receivers left, two to the right. Johnson looking left, again has time, throws down the middle. Neighbors has it at the 46, across midfield. He will take it to the house. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers. Malik Neighbors with the 67-yard touchdown, his third score of the year. Shot out of an absolute cannon after making the grab on the far side hash. How ran the Warhawks, nobody gets near him. And the Tigers extend the lead 16 to nothing. And ULM decided to make it a game at the 334 mark in the second quarter. Knight with a 17 yard, uh, with a 28 yard pass reception from Rodriguez. Sutherland with the kick, two plays, 28 yards to make the score at halftime. LSU 17, ULM 7. And that is the score here at halftime. I'll be back after this break with the individual statistics from the first half after this break on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We are proud to announce that Burns Estate Planning and Wealth Advisors are the official wealth management partner of LSU Athletics. If you're considering retirement and would like a wealth management firm that specializes in retirement services, 401k rollovers, tax strategies, as well as all your estate planning needs, give Burns Estate Planning and Wealth Advisors a call today at 1-888-592-8818. That's 1-888-592-8818. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda Shaw. We all know Louisiana is as fun as all get out. So get out, take a road trip, and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianaisatrip.com. Are you one of many homeowners who just dreads the winter due to inconsistent home heating? Perhaps you're an HVAC contractor who just wants to offer more reliable, higher efficiency home heating. Lux Air helps keep homes warm while saving money and offers great business building programs for contractors too. Contact your Lux Air dealer to find out more. Or if you're a contractor, visit solarsupplyluxair.com to learn about working with Lux Air. Tigers are your team, and Super One Foods is your grocery store. They offer super low prices from the moment you walk in their door, starting with the hottest deals on their famous wall of values. You'll get super savings on fresh produce, meat cut fresh daily, and all of your favorite brands throughout the store. Shop Super One Foods online or in store for super low prices on game day and every day. Go Tigers and go Super One Foods. This has been the Super One Foods Halftime Report. Super One Foods, go Tigers, and go Super One Foods. The second half is on the way, here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 17-7, LSU leads ULM at halftime of this ball game in Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Both teams are back out on the field, loosening up, getting ready for the second half. Let's take a look at the individual statistics from the first half of tonight's action. For ULM, Malik Jackson rushed 10 times for 29 yards, a 2.8 average. Chandler Rogers, three for 17 yards, a 5.3 average. Red Rodriguez, two for eight yards, a four-yard average. Andrew Henry, three for seven yards, a 2.3 average. In rushing LSU's Ty Davis Price, 
Nine carries, 41 yards, an average of 4.6. Corey Kiner, two for four yards, an average of two yards a carry. Josh Williams, one for minus three. Max Johnson, four for 10 yards. He lost 15, so a total of minus, uh, average of minus 1.2. Red Rodriguez in throwing through 10 times for six completions, one interception, 70 yards, one touchdown. The long was 28 yards. Chandler Rogers, one of three throwing for five yards. For LSU, Max Johnson, 13 of 19, 217 yards, one touchdown, 67 yards was the long one, one sack. Avery Atkins, the punter, proved why he is the punter. He tried to, to run a fake punt. It was obviously incomplete. In fact, it was intercepted, and that's the impetus that it gave for ULM to take their possession and, and score. LSU receiving Malik Neighbors four targets, four receptions, 143 yards for one touchdown. The long was 67 yards. Jack Besh. Three targets, two receptions, 19 yards. 14 yards for the long one, Ty Davis Price, two for two. The long was nine, Jare Jenkins, two targets, one reception, 17 yards. The long was 17. Boogie Knight for ULM, three targets, three receptions, 44 yards, one touchdown. Jared Sparks, two targets, one reception, 16 yards, the long was 16. Zach Jackson, two targets, one reception for nine yards, and the long was nine. Will Derrick, one for one for five yards. So there you have the individual statistics from the first half of tonight's contest, 17 to seven, LSU leading ULM at halftime, and both teams out on the field warming up. ULM's place kicker, Trying some kicks from about the 45-yard line, 55-yard field goal kick. LSU likewise doing that. The players getting ready to move over to the sideline as we are about 35 or 40 seconds from beginning the second half. LSU is going to be receiving the kick. They won the toss. They deferred, and they will receive the kick here to start the second half. And the Tigers kind of... Let it slip away from them towards the end of the first half. Looked like they had it all in control with a 17-point lead. And then ULM scored their touchdown, and all of a sudden it became a closer game. So we'll see if LSU can convert this first possession into a score and try to separate the, the difference between these two teams. LSU, obviously the superior team, but ULM has made a play and LSU made a play that resulted in an interception, both of which were not good for LSU. So we'll see as we look out on the field, ULM's gonna be kicking from our right to our left. LSU will be receiving on our left. That's the north end here to start the third quarter. Here to give you all the play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair. 15 minutes up on the board as we start the third quarter of action. Caleb Sutherland will tee it up to 35. Kick it back to LSU to get the third quarter started. Kick is in the air, and the kick will be fielded about a yard deep in the end zone by Palmer. He's going to bring it out up the middle of the field across the 20 and slung down at the 26-yard line. So a return of 26 yards, and that's where LSU will start. First down and 10, six seconds into the third quarter. Doug told you, eight receivers for the Tigers catching footballs in that first half. In fact, when Chris Hilton Jr., Caught his first catch of the night. That meant the 18th different player LSU has had catch a pass in the 2021 season. So the Tigers open up first down and 10 from their own 26. Two receivers right, two to the left. Ty Davis Price will be the single back along with Max Johnson, who played very well there in the first half. Drops it off underneath, middle of the field to Besh. Breaks away from two tackles, coming near side, gets to the 30 before about five Warhawks able to stop him there. But a five-yard gain, and Besh had to earn every yard of it. Hard-nosed player, Jack Besh. 
Chris Lupus switch for LSU. Martinez now in at right guard. Cardell Thomas, number 58, started the game for him. Martinez now in at right, right, right guard, I should say. Second down and five. Wide side of the field to the left. They'll send two receivers and neighbors in the slot along with Jenkins out wide. Brian Thomas Jr., the lone receiver, short side of the field to the right. Second down at five. Johnson throws to the far sideline looking for neighbors, but it hits him in the hands and incomplete at the 36 yard line. We'll bring up third down and five for the Tigers here. Opening drive of the third quarter. LSU led by as many as 17 to nothing before that fake punt resulted in an interception. Two plays later, Rhett Rodriguez finds Boogie Knight to get the Warhawks on the board and cut the lead to 10. They'll bunch three receivers to the left, one lone receiver and Josh Williams to the right side. An empty backfield for Johnson. Quick screen. Gets it to Besh. Besh cuts inside the far hash mark. Gets to the 35 and to the 36. And he'll pick up the first down. Besh is going to be a tough weapon to contain, especially on those quick hitters. As quickly as he gets up to speed, standing six foot two, well over 200 pounds. He took a shot. He came off. He's trainers looking at him. He'll get back in, but just took a shot on that play. Two receivers right, one to the left. First and ten from the 36-yard line of their own. They'll try to set up a screen near side. And neighbors couldn't hold on. He's up with it, upset with himself. Warhawks trying to pick it up and go the other way, but it was a forward pass and an incompletion. It'll be second down at 10. Well, that's two drops here in the third quarter out of about four plays for neighbors. His hands are much better than that, and he's got to be very focused on making those receptions when the ball comes his way. As Gordy mentioned, Besh took a shot, came out. He checks back in now. He'll be in here on second down at 10 from the 36, ball middle of the field. Besh in motion. Lines up each back position left side of the formation two wide to the right one to the left side. Ty Davis Price will get the carry up the middle bounces off a Warhawk and then goes airborne across the 40 up to the 42 yard line a gain of six. Make it third down and four for LSU. The Tigers five for nine so far on the night and third down conversions. At a much better clip than their season average. Third and four from the 42. Johnson will empty the backfield. Five wide set, three receivers left, two to the right. Ball squarely between the hash marks. Here's the snap. Another quick fire, setting up the screen, this time to Jenkins. Jenkins, 45, and gets up to the 49-yard line. Seven yards, and enough for a Fighting Tiger first down. May see more screen passes in this game tonight than most of this season. Tigers utilizing side-to-side -side passing, using the speed. On first down and 10, Johnson, plenty of time. Pump fakes, brings it back down. Now we'll just run, see what he can get. Into Warhawk territory down to the 46-yard line on a gain of five. Johnson also making better decisions, quicker decisions. Didn't have anybody to go with the football, decided to run. So we're talking about Chris more decisive that might have been a half a second slower than you want but if everybody's covered and they've dropped zone go ahead and run pick up what you can slide get five yards second and five and again Johnson has been very mechanically sound tonight throwing the football looks like he feels a lot better second down and five at the 46 delayed handoff Ty Davis Price up the middle has a hole spins off a defender at the 37 inside the Warhawk 35 to the 34 yard line they'll mark him at the 33 it's a first down for the Fighting Tigers on a 13 yard gain TDP 60 yards rushing tonight coming off back to back 100 yard rushing games as I mentioned earlier four of his last five games he's been able to eclipse the century mark Johnson looking downfield and time runs out backside hit and going to be dropped. Quay Drake, the sophomore from Wadley, Alabama. Sheds his block and eventually gets to Max Johnson's second sack of the night for this Warhawk defense. Just when you think Johnson has it all set up where he understands his internal clock, he shows that he doesn't understand it by waiting in there a little too long before he tries to move out of the pocket. 
Second down, 15. Now back at the Warhawk 38-yard line. They'll have Thomas wide to the right, short side of the field. LSU will send out three receivers, including Neighbors, Besh, and Jenkins. Shotgun snap at the belt of Johnson. Quick fire across the middle. Catch going to be grabbed by Thomas to the 32-yard line, and it looks like enough for a first down. Nope. Again, just picked up six yards. After that loss on the sack, it'll still be second, or rather third and nine. And LSU much more efficient tonight on third down against this ULM defense. Six for ten on the evening. 10.07 clock moving third quarter. LSU up 17-7. Looking at third and nine at the 32-yard line of the Warhawks. Johnson scans the field, unloads. Catch made at the 23 near side. Out of bounds near the sticks as Thomas looks like he's got it by a yard and a half, maybe two. Nice pickup of 11 yards. And as we roll under 10 minutes, LSU with a fresh set of downs, knocking just outside the Capital One red zone. Second catch of the night for Thomas. Jenkins out wide to the left. Neighbors in the slot left side. They'll go back on the ground. Ty Davis Price with a handoff. Jumps inside the 20 to the 18. Gain of four. Second down and six. LSU a good balance here in this drive. Pass and run the opening kickoff of the third quarter. Tigers up to 311 yards total offense tonight. Johnson with 252 of that. There's the jet toss to Thomas. Thomas trying to go far side, slipped on his own, may have stayed upright, got his fanny down at the 15. They'll say he slid it around the 16. So a couple of yards. Keyshawn Johnson, the backup middle linebacker. There to make sure Thomas stayed down. It'll be third down and five from the 17 as the Tigers again inside the Capital One red zone. Bunch three receivers to the right. Ball on the far side hash as the Tigers attack left to right. Now they'll motion Besh. Besh in the H back spot. Josh Williams in it running back. Handoff Josh Williams. Play fake by Johnson. And Williams just inside the 15. Got three yards. We're going to be shy of the first down. Should be fourth and two upcoming. Cade York tonight, one of two from field goals, missed from 44 yards. Came back, able to get one for 27 yards. And it looks like LSU going to go for it here. So with 7.55 to go third quarter, looking at fourth down. And about two. Johnson lines up the Tigers. Three receivers right, one to the left. Ty Davis Price back there to block. Here comes the blitz. Johnson spins away, drops to a knee, unloads. It's incomplete. Throws it into the sideline. Not sure he released that before his knee dropped, but nonetheless, it's incomplete. And a turnover on downs. The Warhawk defense able to hold once they reached, reached inside the Capital One red zone. And a big moral victory, to say the least. They're fired up on that far sideline with another stop. Timeout on the field with 7.37 to go. Johnson a little slow getting up, making his way to the near sideline. 17-7, LSU leads Louisiana Monroe. Warhawks have the ball first and 10. When we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products, all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. 
Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast, a look inside LSU football. Join me and hear from some of the great voices of college sports on Hearing Voices. Get up to speed on the Tigers' next opponent with LSU Recon, plus replays of the Ed Ogeron Show and many more. Find them all at lsusports.net slash podcast, on the LSU Sports mobile app, and anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. We always picture the SEC student athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility. But it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Third quarter action continues. Presented by H&E Equipment Services on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 17-7, LSU leading ULM. The Warhawks take over after a turnover on downs. As we continue, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification, this is Fighting Tiger Football on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. Saturday night in Death Valley. LSU leading by 10 over ULM. 7.37 to go in the third quarter. Warhawks get the football back during that timeout. They had an official review brought to you by Acme Oyster House. They determined that Johnson had slipped. His knee was at the 24-yard line before he released that pass into the sideline, so that's where ULM will take over. And on first down from the 24, they hand it off as Malik Jacket Jackson rockets through the line of scrimmage up to about the 28-yard line, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Jackson tonight. Been hard going running the football. They've tried virtually everybody they have. He's got 12 carries on the night for 32 yards. Second down and six. Shotgun snap, Rodriguez again, handoff. This time Jackson right up the middle, huge hole across that front line for ULM, and he explodes across the 35, just shy of the 40, picks up 12 yards, and it's a first down for ULM. Under seven to go, third quarter. Brett Rodriguez. Claps. Calls for the snap. Again, they'll keep it on the ground as Jackson this time going to be met by a ton of Tigers. Gets forward progress to about the 42, a gain of two. Neil Farrell Jr. He's also really played well down the back stretch of this season. The senior out of Mobile. Able to get a hand on him quickly. Second down and eight. Here's another sprint out. Throw into the flat. A little out in front of the receiver, but nice job by Boogie Knight. Outstretched arms, he hauls it in, a four-yard gain. Makes third down a little easier here for ULM. And that's been their game plan. Run the football, sprint out, short throws. They have not thrown down the field. Again, as Gordy pointed out, midway through the second quarter, Rodriguez had that tough injury. And no surprise tonight, they're not wanting him to stand back out in the pocket long. He's delivering quickly. Another sprint out. Pressure comes. He'll just throw this one away far side. The play did not look very crisp from the start, and it will set up fourth down and four here. Now you're down 10 points. You're on the road. You're an underdog, but it looks like Terry Bowden going to bring out the punt unit. He stopped me before I gave him all the reasons you may go for it, but not willing to do it. He'll bring out Devin McCormick again. But already one fake punt attempt by LSU that went awry. We'll see if the Warhawks just want to kick it away as Palmer stands inside the LSU 10 down at the 9. McCormick puts a foot on it. Fair catch called for by Palmer. Nope, looked like he raised his arm, but he's going to try to return it up across the 15. Stopped at about the 17-yard line. He may have had an idea, but kept the arm down around the hip. Was about to wind it up. But LSU will start first down and 10 after we have another timeout. 538 remains, third quarter from Tiger Stadium. And LSU leading by 10 over ULM, 17-7 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. You've trained for this all year. 
endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now, you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Bridgeway Hospice is the official hospice of LSU Athletics. Bridgeway Hospice would like to thank you, South Louisiana, for allowing them to care for your loved ones. Help them celebrate 10 years of local hospice care by asking your health care provider for Bridgeway Hospice. They come to you in home, assisted living, or nursing facilities. Now with three locations to better care for your loved ones in the greater Baton Rouge, Acadiana, and Plaquemine areas. Bridgeway Hospice says stay safe, go local, and go Tigers. With Early Paycheck, you can get your direct deposit up to two days earlier. That's another reason banking with Capital One is the easiest decision ever. Even easier than deciding to open the biggest birthday gift first. Happy birthday to you. Which one are you going to open first? The pony. Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is banking with Capital One even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. No fees or minimums on new consumer accounts. Capital One and A member FDIC. Everyone loves a winner, and Waiter wants that to be you. Download the Waiter app and place an order with promo code TIGERS21 for free game day delivery. Every order earns a chance to win Waiter food credit, sign merch, Tiger tickets, and more. Order now with promo code TIGERS21 and get the win with Waiter. Waiter. You relax, we deliver. Third quarter action continues. Presented by H&E Equipment Services on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 538 remains third quarter at LSU. Leading 17-7 over Louisiana Monroe. The Tigers led 17-0 late in the second quarter. A botched fake punt attempt on a throw down the sideline was intercepted by Josh Newton, his second pick of the year for the Warhawks. They eventually connect Rodriguez to Boogie Knight for a 27-yard strike to make it 17-7. That was our halftime score. LSU take the third quarter kickoff, Doug. Go 15 plays, 7 minutes, 17 seconds. But they go for it on fourth down. They decide to throw the football. And Johnson slipped in the pocket. His knee went down. The throw went out of bounds nonetheless. And turnover on downs. The Tigers come up empty. So they'll start first down and 10. From their own 18-yard line here is Max Johnson and company back out on the field trying to get some separation here against this scrappy Warhawk team. There's a tough snap and handled. Handoff Corey Kiner and right up the gut. He'll be stood up after reaching the 22-yard line. A gain of four on the play. Second down and six is Zach Woodard. Another tackle for the senior out of Thomasville, Alabama, at middle linebacker. Chris, that's pretty much a summary of the entire season. LSU offensively just has a hard time converting their success into points. They may have some success moving the ball, but they just, other than a good field goal kicker have a hard time getting it in the end zone second down and six now at the 22 of the Tigers again they'll go back on the ground to Kiner he'll spin away at the line of scrimmage can't get loose eventually able to pull him down as Jahaziel Lee the senior out of Ponchatoula and he'll set up third and about four Tiger seven for 12 as the Warhawks send in substitutions from that far sideline Tigers trying to convert here. Ball placed at their own 24-yard line. Get another five-wide set. Empty backfield. Johnson with time. Throws and catch made by Besh at about the 33. Up across the 35. Brought down eventually at about the 40-yard line on a gain of 16. Besh will check out as he was drug down by two Warhawk defenders. Looked a little gimpy as he made his way to the near sideline, but another great catch, another great run after the catch for Besh to make sure the Tigers' drive stay alive. First and 10 at the 40. Two wide to the left, one to the right side. 
Corey Kiner remains in at running back and Kiner going to get the carry went right cuts back left across the 40 moves a couple of defenders to the 41 only a gain of a yard any time of year fans whenever you're ready to cool it down count on slow melt ice colder cleaner and longer lasting for more info check them out at slowmeltice.com that's s l o m e l t i c e.com under three and a half to go third quarter Tigers trying to build on a 17 7 lead. It's where we have been since late in the second quarter of action tonight. Sprint out for Johnson. Pressure breathing down his neck. He'll drop it off to Palmer on the far sideline. He's going to be short of the first down. Makes his way up to the 48 yard line. He'll be about two yards shy after the seven yard gain. It'll be third down and two. Again, Johnson, good decision. Able to get some separation from the pressure off the backside. Palmer just opens up near the sideline. Johnson hits him on the run. Third down and two. Crowded line of scrimmage here. Motion Thomas. Handoff Ty Davis Price going the other way to the left. He'll get the first down and into ULM territory. Down to the 47 yard line on a gain of five. Well, they're getting good hard running from Ty Davis Price, and they need it right now. LSU's got to make some first downs, continue to move the ball down closer, and then convert into the end zone. That's the thing that's missing tonight. First down and 10 now at the Monroe 47 yard line. Kiner checks back in, and the freshman back right up the middle. Picks up five yards to the 42 yard line. Ty Davis Price on that last run, 13 carries, 68 yards tonight, leads the way for LSU. Tigers with 340 yards total offense. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter, but only 17 points to show for it. Two receivers right, one to the left. Chris Hilton Jr. again, the freshman. Johnson stepping away from pressure, throws on the run, gets it to Thomas at the 34 yard line, middle of the field. He'll break it near side, breaks a tackle at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. Brian Thomas, the freshman from Walker, Louisiana, his second touchdown on the season. And the 42 yard strike extends the lead 23 to 7 LSU on top. And he is another one of those young receivers that can step up and really become a game breaker. LSU's got several of them, and if they can get them all experienced enough and healthy at the same time, they can have a chance to have a gangbusters group of receivers next year. So Cade York trying to make it an even 24, steps onto the field. A minute 29 to go, third quarter action. Tiger fans with something to cheer about for the first time in a while. Kick by York is up and it is good. That'll make it 24 to 7. And we've got a timeout on the field. Tigers extend their lead 24 7 over Louisiana Monroe back to Tiger Stadium after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Do you have Medicare and make less than $1,615 per month? Or do you have Medicare and Medicaid? You may be eligible for extra benefits you're not getting now, and you may be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan from People's Health. Don't wait. If you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan from People's Health today, your benefits may begin the first day of next month. Call 1-855-410-7761. That's 1-855-410-7761. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Tiger fans, did you know that Rouse's Markets has their very own digital coupons? Digital coupons are coupons you can access online. Get offers for your favorite national brands at www.rouse's.com and redeem them at any Rouse's Markets. With Rouse's Markets digital coupons, there's no need to keep track of paper coupons. Everything is online. Just present your phone number at checkout. Digital coupons, just one more way you save shopping at Rouse's Markets. Official supermarket of LSU Athletics. 
Walk-On athletes put everything they've got into the game. Walk-On Sports Bistro puts everything they've got into bringing you game day with a taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine like po'boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp. Plus, fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. It's all made from scratch with ingredients you can't help but crave. Catch the Tigers on over 70 big screen TVs at one of their 20 restaurants throughout the state of Louisiana. Visit walk-ons.com to learn more about their story. Walk-On Sports Bistro. More than a Restaurant. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At HE Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. H&E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rental, sales, parts, and service. Third quarter action continues. Presented by H&E Equipment Services on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU's offense gets on track. Took a while since their last touchdown, but take over, go eight plays, 82 yards. Eventually, Brian Thomas Jr. gets it in on a pass from Max Johnson. Thomas with his second touchdown on the season. And LSU makes it 24 to 7 after Cade York finished with the point after. Fan Centos proudly helps local Louisiana businesses stay clean, safe, and ready for the workday for over 35 years. Chris, I'm going to hop in here before LSU kicks off. So Jack Besh injured his knee nothing major he was limping a little bit I said possible maybe a mild sprain is, is what i've been told I, I think he's done for the evening no sense here in a 24-3 game put him back in with a&m coming to town uh, i think you let him rest and hopefully heal up this week something tells me that will be right on the money considering you still have at your disposal, Malik Neighbors, the aforementioned Brian Thomas Jr., some veterans, and Jeray Jenkins, Kirkland, Devontae Lee. Really no need to have Bash out there. He's played well tonight, as we've all become accustomed to. Five catches, 46 yards. As Atkins with the approach, kicking towards the south end zone. Going to hang up in, nope, going to find its way. Thought it might come down around the one, but into the end zone for a touchback. 129 to go here in the third quarter. ULM on Black Friday will finish out their regular season, taking on the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette in the Battle of Louisiana, Monroe and Lafayette. Of course, Billy Napier out of conference today, went up, beat up on Hugh Freeze on the road against Liberty today. No problem with the Flames. LSU will be back here, as Gordy just mentioned a moment ago. And their finale against Texas A&M ought to be a good one. First down and 10 at the 25 as the Warhawks take over. And Rodriguez, here's another sprint out to the right, and he'll throw this one at the feet of the intended receiver. Jared Sparks. Again, you had to wonder how much mobility would Rodriguez have after that horrific injury earlier this year. It's been sprint out and handoff tonight. Second down 10 at the 25. Motion the receiver at the snap again sprint out to the right. The throw going to be grabbed at the 29 yard line. Nice catch by Derek. Will Derek had to spin around to his right. Got his hands up there right as the ball arrived and he makes the catch and picks up the first down dancing down the far sideline. 12 yard gain. One minute remains here in the third quarter. First and 10 at the 37. Rodriguez will take the snap. Here's the option pitch. Right side Malik Jackson going to be grabbed at the 40, but he carries. Jackson. A defender up across the 42, gain of five as Desmond Little got to him, but couldn't stop his momentum. Gain of six, it'll be second down at four here for Monroe. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Rodriguez is going to empty the backfield, send two receivers right. 
three wide to the left side. Here's the snap to Rodriguez. Quick fire throws it into the sideline incomplete. There's a flag out a couple of flags out as Darren Evans was on coverage. The intended receiver was Zach Jackson. But pretty good coverage by Evans and Rodriguez wisely just throws it away. Now the flag is back at the 35 behind the offensive line of the Warhawks. So we'll see what it's all about from our crew chief David Smith coming up momentarily. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 90 on the defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 90 on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Double whammy there, and Jacoby and Guillory, the freshman out of Alexandria, hands to the face and then roughing the passer. He was determined to get to Red Rodriguez. <laughs> he must have worked him over on that play. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard somebody two personal fouls on one play. That's 30 yards of penalties. So they decline the first. They'll take the second. It puts them at the 42 of LSU now with 15 seconds remaining before the end of the third stanza. And they'll keep it on the ground. And Malik Jackson is trying to churn for yards. Gets inside the 40, just shy of the 39. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. So after three here at Tiger Stadium on a late Saturday night, LSU leading Louisiana Monroe 24 to 7. Fourth and final quarter coming your way next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Support your LSU Tigers with Hancock Whitney, the official bank of LSU athletics. From game day to the offseason, Hancock Whitney LSU credit and debit cards are a big win for any Tiger fan. Want to get your paws on these cards? Well, apply online or visit HancockWhitney.com slash LSU. Hancock Whitney Bank, member FDIC. All accounts subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Welcome back to Acme Oyster House Action. Looks like a fried crawfish tail story of oyster shooter champion, Steve. Yeah, I'd say char-grilled in an herb butter sauce, Bob. Truer words never spoken. Setting the soft-shell crab platter for all of us. Well said. A game of onion rings. Craw puppies versus hush puppies. Indeed. This team never misses on the food. Jill? Oh, can't argue with crab cakes and gumbo down here, Bob. One team, one stomach. Thanks, Jill. Back after this tasty commercial message. Me Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Hey, LSU fans, did you know that Planet Fitness is the official gym of LSU athletics? That's right. And as an LSU athletic fan, you can get a special offer of just $1 down at any of the six Baton Rouge area locations with offer code PFLSU. You'll get free fitness training, tons of cardio and strength equipment, and a totally friendly staff. Planet Fitness is a comfortable place to go at your own pace. You can find out more at planetfitness.club slash LSU. And go Tigers. The difference is putting in the extra work to get better. The difference is spending the extra hours to get it right. The difference is fighting for the extra yard to get the win. At Delhi DeBosia, we're proud of all the student athletes who give that extra something that makes them tigers. If you've been injured, we're ready to go the extra yard for you. That's the Dudley DeBosier difference. Demand Dudley DeBosier, official partner of LSU Athletics. 444-4444. Baton Rouge, responsible attorney Chad Dudley. Fourth quarter action continues. Presented by J&J &J Exterminating on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We get set to start the fourth quarter of action tonight here at Tiger Stadium. LSU up 24-7 over Louisiana Monroe. Fourth time ever these two teams meeting on the gridiron. LSU's won all three of the previous meetings. And Gordy Rush, Doug Morrow, question I would pose here. Conventional wisdom would tell you that hopefully in this type of game, starting the fourth quarter, you would have a comfortable lead. Now 24 to seven is, could be a tough hole to climb out of for ULM, but I don't think you feel safe if you're LSU with again 15 minutes to go. And Gordy told us from the outset the coach O said earlier this week they were leaning towards redshirting Garrett Nussmeyer and therefore he would not play the rest of this season. Now, as it turned out, he actually was under the weather, didn't even dress tonight. So you're down to one scholarship quarterback and Max Johnson. Matt O'Dowd would be the backup. 
We've already seen Jack Besh have to come out. Hopefully he's going to be all right. As Gordy said, just maybe a sprain in the knee area. But I mean, you're going to have to continue to play this game with a very important game coming up. Well, TDP has had a pretty good night running. And you might want to work him out a little bit at the beginning of the first possession this quarter. See if you can run that clock a little bit while maintaining possession of the football so that you don't run the risk of another interception. ULM back to work. Rodriguez going to keep it off the left edge after faking the handoff. He took a shot in the back from Damone Clark, but good news, he hops back up after reaching to the 37-yard line. Clark with six tackles tonight. It'll be second down and seven as the fourth quarter is underway. Check that third down and seven. Rodriguez looking to throw. Looks back to his left, throws towards the sideline, waiting for it, broken up at the 25-yard line. Looked like there was a chance to make the play. Damone Clark was on coverage down the far sideline. The Warhawk receiver actually found it first. I believe it was Jackson on the wheel route. He found it first, but great play by Clark to get his hand in there and, and knock it away. Spectacular play. I mean, as the ball got there, he stuck his hand in there, just knocked the ball away from the receiver. Fourth down and six. We got movement, and they'll stop the play. They were throwing down that far sideline. The catch was made, but again, play halted as there was movement really on both sides of the line of scrimmage. We'll see after they settle it out who the assessment will go against. But speaking of depth, you mentioned Ty Davis Price. First, we'll get the call from David Smith. So it goes against the Warhawks. But LSU a little depleted in the running back position as well tonight. Of course, TDP, your starter. We've seen Corey Kiner tonight. Josh Williams with a couple of snaps in there because Armani Goodwin, we were told, scratched for tonight. Again, depth has been an issue all season long due to a really incredible, uncanny year of injuries. Fourth down and 11. And again, Rodriguez and company going to stay out there down. 24 to 7. Rodriguez running out to his right. Now plants and throws. Down the near side hash. Jump ball. Grabbed at the 11 yard line. ULM has it and converts the fourth down. Down to the LSU 10 yard line. Fred Lloyd Jr. Surrounded by three Tigers. High pointed the ball first. Pulled it down. And the Warhawks still in business. And that should never happen. That is like a Hail Mary. A long pass on fourth down. You know they have to complete it. Rather than just go up and bat it away, LSU let the receiver make the catch. Malik Jackson going to get the call on first down, the handoff going left tackle. Down to the six-yard line. Will be second down, goal to go from the LSU six. So all that conversation we had to start the fourth quarter looms even larger now. There's still 13 minutes and 40 seconds in the fourth quarter. It's a 24 to 7 LSU lead, but now the Warhawks, after the big fourth down conversion, are right there, knocking on the door outside the LSU five. Second down, goal to go from the six. Again, they'll go on the ground. That will be the backup, Andrew Henry, Henry, able to make his way to the three, just dancing around some Tiger defenders right there at the front. Finds a little bit of a seam. Now it'll be third down goal to go. They mark it just outside the LSU two. Rodriguez sets up in the gun. Two receivers right. Again, the running back, Henry, going to get the carry, and he'll be cut down. Line of scrimmage, that is all. B.J. Ojolari having none of it. Comes back across and drops the running back quickly. And interesting, they've stuck with Rodriguez. And again, he's played well tonight at times. But their real dual threat, Chandler Rogers, we saw him on a couple of drives tonight. He's more of a threat to run the ball with the ball in hand at quarterback. But they're going to stick with Rodriguez, who lines up in the shotgun. Fourth down goal to go from the two. Andrews, the single back to the right side. Try a little trickeration, a little reverse, throw back to Rodriguez, and the pass in the right corner of the end zone is incomplete. Well, they lined up quickly. They certainly got the play call in. They knew what they were going to run. Rodriguez took the snap, gave it to Jared Sparks, who then was trying to throw it back to his quarterback. And I think maybe Rodriguez stopped his route a little too soon. The throw not necessarily high, but because he stopped, 
Trying to go up for it, he couldn't hold on. And well, the Tigers a, will take over. It was a reverse pass, like like the Philly special that was running the Super Bowl. One of those reverse passes, and the pass was overthrown to the receiver, although he was absolutely wide open. Didn't have to be well thrown. They could have thrown right in the middle of his chest. Didn't do it. 12-18 to go in the ball game. LSU dodges another bullet. They continue to lead 24-7 back in a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network. He's got a seam. He's down the near side hash. Tiger fans, if you've ever wanted to listen to the LSU Sports Radio Network while watching your fighting Tigers on TV, now you can, and it's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Watch the Tigers and listen with the LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility, but it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all ship right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. Fourth quarter action continues. Presented by J&J Exterminating on the LSU Sports Radio Network. H&E Equipment Services fans, the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics, call them at 877-700-RENT or visit he-equipment.com today. LSU leading 24-7 over Louisiana Monroe. Second time tonight, the Warhawks, fourth down, goal to go from the LSU 2 First time around in the first half, the throw was short to the one-yard line. It was complete, but it was a turnover on downs. This time, perfect play call, perfect timing. They tried the reverse pass. The throw back to the quarterback, Rodriguez, a little high. And again, if Rodriguez just carries himself farther into the end zone, he catches that without having to jump. But he stopped about a yard into the end zone, went up for it. Didn't have the elevation to pull it down, but it wasn't anything LSU did defensively. It was just non-execution by the Warhawks. And LSU was lucky that uh, they were able to get away with this good luck. Let's hope they can get it out from away the end, uh, away from the goal line. They'll start first down and ten from their own two. Johnson, once again for the second time tonight, will take this snap about six yards deep in his own end zone. Ty Davis Price back there to block. He'll stand in the pocket, let it fly, and just out of the reach of Neighbors on the near side hash at the 34-yard line. Neighbors had the step. But the throw just floated a little too far out in front of him. It'll be second down and 10 at the LSU two-yard line. Fans, winter is coming. Lower your utility bills with an efficient, reliable train. Visit trainsouth.com to find a local dealer to provide a free estimate on one that will fit your home and wallet. Begin saving now because it's hard to stop a train. Tigers line it up with 15 on the play clock. Second down, 10 from their own two. Now Ty Davis Price on a wing to the right side of Johnson. A low snap, but he'll handle it and give it off to TDP who gets to the two, but not much after that. They'll give him forward progress to the three, but only a gain of a yard before Quincy Ledette Jr., the freshman out of Orange, Texas. Got both big arms around Ty Davis Price. The Calvary eventually arrived, and he goes nowhere. Third and nine from the three. Be careful. Careful. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, I just want to be careful here, Chris. 20 seconds on the play clock. You'd like to get it inside five and nothing too risque here, right? If it's not there, check it down, run the ball, punt the ball, and play defense. Your defense is playing great tonight. So third down and nine. Here's the snap. Handoff going to be Josh Williams. And again, 
pretty vanilla there. He'll run to the right side, cross the five to the six yard line, well shy of the first down. They'll have to punt it away. 11-15 clock moving here in the fourth quarter. LSU tonight, 388 yards total offense, 319 through the air. Johnson, 22 of 31, has two passing touchdowns. Fourth game of the year, over 300 yards passing for the sophomore quarterback. But as Doug Morrow puts so succinctly, LSU's running up and down the field. They just haven't found the end zone. Enough. Atkins to punt it away, eight yards deep in his own end zone. Takes a bounce at the 44 of the Tigers and then off the bounce, taken at midfield by Boogie Knight. 44 yard punt with no return. And ULM will start with half the field to work with here. Still down only 24 to 7. Tiger fans say fan zone into your contour voice remote and enhance your game day experience all week long. You can play games and you can win prizes. Cox, we're LSU fans 24 7. TV decides they need a timeout. We'll take one with them. Took them a moment, but they're out there. We'll be back in a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance all without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. The time is right, the part is just begun. Have a good time, strong. Ford F-Series has been keeping the good times rolling as the best-selling truck in America 44 years straight. And with the smartest F-150 and most capable Super Duty ever built, this dynasty will keep right on rolling. Drive the new 2021 F-150 at your Southern Quality Ford dealer. Proud partner of the LSU Tigers. Based on 1977 through 2020 calendar year sales. There's a saying that was born in Louisiana, and it's being heard all around the country. Pass a good time. It means whenever good friends and family get together, good times and great food are definitely being passed around. Whether it's in the kitchen, on the grill, at the table, or even in the great outdoors, Tony Sachery's famous Creole seasoning is always part of the celebration. So grab a little green can and pass a good time. Tony Sachery's makes everything taste great. Fourth quarter action continues. Presented by J&J &J Exterminating on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Louisiana Monroe still hanging around here on this Saturday night. 1043 remains in this game. The only SEC game ongoing on this late Saturday. LSU up 24 to 7. Warhawks will have the football first and 10 right at midfield after another punt by Avery Atkins on the night. Checking the Cox scoreboard. Again, all of these games final. Georgia rolls today 56-7 over Charleston Southern. Kentucky no problem with New Mexico State, 56-16. Mississippi State puts down Tennessee State, 55-10. Texas A&M blows out Prairie View, 52-3 in Bryan College Station. Good game today between Alabama and Arkansas. Some mistakes by the Crimson Tide. Left that door open for a while, but Alabama wins 42-35 over Arkansas. Missouri in overtime. Goes for the kill shot after tying the game 23 all. Or rather, yeah, 22, 23, 22, I should say. They went for the kill shot in the first round of overtime. Got the throw, made the catch in the end zone. Two-point conversion was good. Missouri wins 24-23. South Carolina upends Auburn at home tonight, 21-17. Ole Miss, no problem with Vanderbilt, 31-17. And Tennessee blows out South Alabama, 60-14 to on Rocky Top. First down and 10 at midfield. Rodriguez with the snap. Here's the toss. Goes to Malik Jackson. Jackson on the near side hash. Runs into some Tigers and gets to about the 47-yard line. A gain of three. Again, LSU in great pursuit that time. Mike Jones in the area. Second and seven upcoming here. Clock moving. 10-18. Now they'll switch it up again after Rodriguez took the first down snap. They'll bring in Chandler Rogers for the third time tonight. He's the running quarterback and a quarterback draw will get it down to the 45 before being hammered down. Nice tackle there by 
to Quaylen Roy along with Neil Farrell Jr. When he dropped, he dropped in a hurry like a sack of taters. Two for 11 tonight for the Warhawks. It'll be third and five at the 45 yard line. Trip receivers to the left side. One lone receiver to the near side and Zach Jackson. Rogers with a single back and a wing to his left takes the shotgun snap stands in the pocket now flushed out to his left and it'll be grabbed and brought down back at the LSU 49 yard line. Desmond Little picks up the sack first of the night for this LSU defense who came in fourth in the SEC in sacks with 31 on the year that sack brought to you by train it's hard to stop a train and after getting the football back at midfield net some after that possession they lose a yard fourth and 11 at the LSU 49 and we'll see Devin McCormick again Palmer inside the 10 awaits on this punt tries to angle it away takes a bounce at the 18 inside the 10 inside the five and ULM going to down it right around the two yard line so a 48 yard punt they may mark it at the three but nonetheless LSU going to start back deep once again we got a timeout on the field LSU leading 24 to 7 a stalemate here at Tiger Stadium 845 remains in this one back in a moment on the LSU Sports Radio Network Bridgeway Hospice is the official hospice of LSU athletics Bridgeway Hospice would like to thank you South Louisiana for allowing them to care for your loved ones help them celebrate 10 years of local hospice care by asking your health care provider for Bridgeway Hospice they come to you in home assisted living or nursing facilities now with three locations to better care for your loved ones in the greater Baton Rouge, Acadiana, and Plaquemine areas. Bridgeway Hospice says stay safe, go local, and go Tigers. Welcome back to Acme Oyster House Action. Looks like a fried crawfish tail story of oyster shooter champion, Steve. Yeah, I'd say char-grilled in an herb butter sauce, Bob. Truer words never spoken, setting the soft-shelled crab platter for all of us. Well said, a game of onion rings, craw puppies, versus hush puppies. Indeed, this team never misses on the food. Jill? Oh, can't argue with crab cakes and gumbo down here, Bob. One team, one stomach. Thanks, Jill. Back after this tasty commercial message. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Louisianians know life here is filled with joy, and sometimes a little uncertainty. No matter your stage in life, know that you can rely on the strength of the cross and protection of the shield. Your card opens the door to a large network of top doctors to care for you. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana has been helping Louisianians get care for generations. With the right card and the right care, you can get back to what you love best. Fourth quarter action continues. Presented by J&J &J Exterminating on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, start your journey to greatness with a fantastic deal on the 2021 RAV4 and Highlander. Visit your local Toyota dealer or Toyota.com today. Toyota proud partner of LSU Athletics. Been kind of sloshy tonight. Maybe the best way to describe tonight's game. LSU heavy favorites coming in against Louisiana Monroe, but again, they've been up and down the field offensively have the Tigers. 391 yards, 319 of that through the air tonight. But the end zone has been hard to find 24 seven they lead over the Warhawks LSU will have the football and they will start once again deep in their own territory the last drive started at the two after the punt downed inside the five it'll be first down and ten at the LSU three yard line. Chris Hilton John Trey Kirkland will line up out wide to the right Devontae Lee in the slot and Cole Taylor out wide to the left. Play clock has not yet been started by our officials as they just get the TV timeout clock off the field. They'll stay ready for play as Johnson lines up. He'll stand three yards deep in his own end zone. Ty Davis Price leading rusher tonight back there with him. He'll get the carry running downhill to his right across the five tripped up as he made his way to the eight yard line a gain of five yards for TDP who just keeps adding to his total tonight he's got 74 trying to reach that century mark and something tells me LS you'd be happy if he can keep this clock moving and keep turning on the ground 
Handoff again. He's going to be met at the nine. He will only get a yard gain. So it'll set up third down and four. And LSU nine of 15 tonight. Again, also not a bad number. Offensively, you can pick and choose some pretty good stats tonight. But just unable to finish the deal on most possessions. 752, clock moving, fourth quarter. Third down and four for the Tigers with the ball marked at their own nine yard line. Two receivers left, send three receivers right. Johnson again by his lonesome in the backfield, steps up, shouts instructions, now stands back in the gun. Here's a quick fire on the screen and trying to get it to Hilton. It's incomplete at the eight yard line. That play never had a chance to get started after the incompletion. Hilton couldn't hold on. And again, LSU will be forced to punt and an opportunity for Louisiana Monroe to enjoy some good field position once again. At halftime, these two teams fairly even time of possession. Now in the first half, LSU had some quick scores with some quick possessions, but since then, been plenty of snaps defensively for both teams. They come after the punt. Atkins just gets it away. Boogie Knight backpedaling. Calls for the fair catch, and he will have it at the 42-yard line of the Warhawks. So, ULM will try their hand at it once again. And I get a chance to remind you, Tiger fans, shop Rouse's Markets, official supermarket of LSU Athletics. Rouse's Markets feels like home. Perfect place to get everything you need for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. Again, LSU get to spend Thanksgiving on Thursday as they prepare this week to take on Texas A&M Saturday night here at Death Valley. LSU hoping to hold on to a victory tonight to reach five wins on the year, which means next week, just like tonight, a must win if they hope to get to the postseason and avoid an out and out losing record or a non winning record for the second straight year. 7.22 to go. Warhawks start at their own 41 yard line. Handoff Malik Jackson and Jackson grabbed from behind and pulled down. Jaqueline Roy made the tackle. Pickup of two yards to the 44 yard line. And again, ULM has been limited offensively. A couple of gadget plays tonight, but other than that, it's been run left, run right. A couple of option pitches and some sprint out passes from Rodriguez. Rodriguez back in there at quarterback, second down and eight. At the 43, steps to his left and fires far side, catch up around the 45 yard line. And actually says at the 47 of LSU, and it's enough for a first down, picking up nine yards. That's a long throw. Boogie Knight hauls it in, the leading receiver. Started his career at Akron. First down and 10 at the 47 now of LSU. Two wide to the right, one to the left side. Rodriguez takes the snap. Sprint out to his right. Mike Jones giving chase, and he'll throw this one nearly intercepted, but it's out of bounds near side at the 33-yard line. Looking for Boogie Knight. But you could tell Rodriguez could hear the footsteps pounding behind him from Mike Jones. Which is another kind of silver lining to this season. Jones, as we mentioned, transferring in from Clemson, wanted to play the inside backer, just never came to fruition. But he has shown the propensity to make plays running down ball carriers all across the field. Kind of taking a page from Damone Clark and Micah Baskerville. Those three have played very well together down the stretch. Second down at 10, Rodriguez throws it. Catch made at the 40, bouncing off an initial tackler. Is going to be Fred Lloyd Jr. with his second catch of the night. Eventually, the Tigers able to stop his momentum at the 37-yard line. You know, Chris, that, that's been interesting, the Mike Jones Jr. story. You know, they, they ran a 4-3 at Clemson, and he played a lot in nickel packages. He's more of a nickel back, and with this 3-4 conversion, he's got a chance to show he's an NFL prospect and an outside linebacker in a 3-4. Third down and a yard. Malik Jackson going to get the carry. Going to be hit initially at the line, but maybe falls forward depending on the spot. Jaqueline Roy, a great job getting in there, getting his hat on the ball carrier. 
It was on this near side hash looking at the chains and our referee David Smith will go ahead and roll it a first down for the Warhawks. But you talk about some of the young names again almost what you have to do at this point of the season with the way the year has gone. Jaqueline Roy Jacoby and Guillory they've shown flashes this season. They fake the reverse and Rodriguez on first down throws down the near sideline but well into out of bounds territory looking for Zach Rasmussen the tight end out of Anna Texas. But just name it you know you started to see these guys certainly maybe get more reps than you expected. Certainly because of injury. I mean you're without your two All American corners you got Darren Evans Cordell Flott who's played well. Dwight McLaughlin. Radar Jones the sophomore out of Mississippi. What else can you do but look to the future. There's some young Tigers playing well with the opportunity they've been given this year. Second down at 10 at the LSU 37. Still just over five minutes remaining. Here's the option pitch Jackson trying to get to the outside and he's going to be caught and pulled back. Again the Tigers great pursuit to the football Jones Clark and Baskerville the three aforementioned linebackers not allowing Jackson to get anywhere no gain on the play it'll be second down and 10 at the 37 all he did was run from the near side hash to the far side hash it'll be third down rather third and 10. Yeah, Chris the speed that those three possess really has added to the LSU's defense in just in the past three or four games. It's been a totally different defense. Rodriguez quick hitter far side. It's incomplete. Had two receivers stacked to the left two to the right one in the slot. Rodriguez decides to go to his left looking for Jackson. Couldn't connect. That'll set up fourth down and 10. And no surprise. Warhawks will keep the offense out here with under four and a half to go. They're one for three on fourth down conversions. All out blitz. Rodriguez hit as he throws. Diving for the football and making the catch inside the 20. Diving for it. Bailing out his quarterback is Will Derrick, the junior out of Shreveport. As Rodriguez got absolutely tattooed when he delivered the ball. Looked like it would maybe be out of the reach of Derrick. But fully extended, he gets his hands on it, cradles it in, makes the catch. And that'll set up first down and 10. So their second fourth down conversion of the night. And that's not going to please anybody on this LSU sideline. Under four to play. First down and 10. Warhawks back in business. Go on the ground, trying to stretch it outside again as Andrew Henry tries to get to the boundary. As their flag is down at the 20 yard line. Again, he had to stretch it out before turning it upfield. Looks like that could be in the area of holding. Holding number 66 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Peyton Dunn, the freshman out of Brandon, Mississippi. Too much grabbing over there. Trying to give his running back some room. Chris J. Ward tapped his hat. Didn't look like he was injured, maybe just gas. So he came out for a play. Todd Harris is going to check in at free safety for the Tigers. Another sideline report powered by your hometown John Deere dealer, Sunshine. Remember, stay undefeated in the field with a John Deere powered by Sunshine today. First down and 20. Ball moved back to the 27 yard line of LSU. Another switch at quarterback Rogers looking downfield has a man wide open blown coverage. They go to the tight end Rasmussen. 27 yard touchdown. And the Warhawks celebrating as they tighten the game slightly 24 to 13. So Rodriguez orchestrates that drive. They check in Chandler Rogers. He throws the touchdown pass, which is his ninth of the year. Rasmussen now with his third touchdown. And again, still things keep you uneasy here with three minutes and 20 seconds and a chance to make it a 10 point game on this point after. Just have not been able to put them away. Kick is up and the kick is good. 24 14, three minutes and 20 seconds remain in this game. Marathon on 
Saturday night here at Tiger Stadium. 24-14 LSU leads. Fourth quarter action will continue after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our Lady of the Lake, just like LSU, is anchored by deep roots put down almost a century ago. We share a singular vision to advance health, education, and research to serve the incredible people of Louisiana. Our partnership with LSU is inspired by our passions for knowledge and our commitments to our community and healthy Louisiana families. Together, there's nowhere we can't go. Our Lady of the Lake is proud to be the health care provider of LSU Athletics. Hey, LSU fans, did you know that Planet Fitness is the official gym of LSU Athletics? That's right. And as an LSU Athletic fan, you can get a special offer of just $1 down at any of the six Baton Rouge area locations with offer code PFLSU. You'll get free fitness training, tons of cardio and strength equipment, and a totally friendly staff. Planet Fitness is a comfortable place to go at your own pace. You can find out more at planetfitness.club slash LSU. And go Tigers! At Southern Air Heating and Cooling, their top priority is customer service. For over 25 years, Southern Air has been dedicated to providing honest pricing with no surprises and passing along their savings to you. Now available for a limited time, their special fall discount. Get a professionally installed new AC and heating system, $72 a month or 0% interest for up to 72 months. Supplies won't last long, so visit their website today, southernairnow.com. Southern Air, official partner of LSU Athletics. Fourth quarter action continues. Presented by J&J Exterminating on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 24-14, LSU leads by 10 over Louisiana Monroe. Three minutes and 20 seconds remain on the fourth quarter clock. And while we have a moment, let's pause 10 second station identification. This is Fighting Tiger football on this, the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. Hanging out on a late Saturday night along with former Tigers Gordy Rush, Doug Morrow, Chris Blair. Game has not been pretty tonight. They've got three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. LSU leading by 10, 24 to 14. Checking the Cox scoreboard. Let's take a look around the top 25. Clemson today upsets number 10, Wake Forest. When's the last time you heard that? 48 27 at Frank Howard Memorial Stadium there in the hamlet of Clemson. Number 17, Iowa gets by Illinois 33 23. Of course, maybe the biggest story of the day, maybe a big surprise, was the battle in the horseshoe. And boy, oh boy, Ohio State now, after a lot of people left them for dead early in the season when they dropped the game to Oregon, they had no problem today with Michigan State. 56 to 7, the final, and it was never close. Again, upset in the SEC, South Carolina 21-17. They put down Auburn week before the Iron Bowl. Alabama gets by Arkansas. And again, one of those surprising scores. Mizzou at home in overtime beats Florida 24-23. Looking for the good hands team here. And the onside kick on its way. And the Tigers dive for it and come up with it. Looked like Chris Hilton coming up to make the grab securing the football not a bad onside kick Gordy Rush had a chance but great job by Hilton to get in there and wrap the football up and go to the ground yeah I like the misdirection on it and then ULM did a great job of taking out the, the lead person for, for LSU it went to a secondary receiver it's how you draw it up Hilton just made a good play so it'll be first down and 10 after the onside kick try recovered by LSU it'll be at the ULM 45 yard line Devontae Lee out wide to the left. Chris Hilton wide to the right side. LSU content to keep it on the ground, of course. And Ty Davis Price inside the 45, just shy of the 43-yard line. Picked up two yards. Got 78 yards on the night. And they have not come easy. Again, the inconsistency in the passing game, which at times looked very good. Again, Max Johnson has thrown the ball well, maybe more so early in tonight's game. But it was a welcome sign to see the confidence, see the decision making, 
22 of 32, 319 yards, two passing touchdowns, but the running game has been three yards here, four yards here. Longest run from scrimmage, I believe, 13 yards for Ty Davis Price. Second down and eight at the 43. Johnson rolling out, the left-hander looking downfield, directing traffic. Now we'll chuck the football, looking for Hilton, and it's incomplete in his hands, but he couldn't hold on down around the 12-yard line. Pretty good coverage by the Warhawks, but Hilton had a chance. Incomplete sets up third down. And eight for LSU. Still two minutes and 26 seconds. And what's amazing is there has yet to be a timeout called by either team tonight. Both went into the halftime locker room with three in their pocket. Right now, each team with three timeouts here in the second half. The big worry this week, great performance and a loss against Alabama. Heartbreaking loss last week where the defense played lights out for the second straight week is on the ground it goes. LSU will pick up nine yards and have enough to get the first down. They're going to be short. It was third down and eight. It'll be fourth down and yard. So it's fourth down and a yard. So it'll be a seven yard gain for Norman. Fourth back of the night, Corin Norman getting a chance to run the football. Stops the clock with two minutes and 20 seconds as the first timeout for the Warhawks taken. Timeout brought to you in part by Paragon Casino Resorts, Marie Showroom, bringing you today's best live concerts and comedy. Come turn your night up at Paragon Casino Resort. This is how we play. Beginning to wonder if I could even talk about Paragon tonight. Thankfully, Terry Bowden eventually calls the timeout. <laughs> Two minutes and 20 seconds remain in this one. Hope you'll be back here next week. Tiger Stadium, LSU, Texas A&M. Fourth down. So fourth down and a yard. LSU would just like to convert, keep on going, and they go to the steady hand of Ty Davis Price, hit at the line, but spins away, and it looks like he'll have the spot he needs at the 35 of the Warhawks. They'll move the pile, get all the players out of the vicinity, and place the ball down. Looks like David Smith, our crew chief, just waiting to give the indication. They'll place the ball down at the 35. He'll take a gander, and it is a first down for the Fighting Tigers. What I was saying, Doug, earlier was you had the excitement, you had the momentum. They played lights out against Alabama, lost the game. Played lights out last week defensively against Arkansas, lost the game in overtime. How could you replicate that with these young men saying, hey, it's the Sun Belt and ULM coming in for a third straight week? I think LSU suffered a little bit of that tonight. Not taking anything away from Coach Bowden and the Warhawks, but the Tigers not near as inspired, really on both sides of the ball, as Ty Davis Price again will carry for a couple of yards. Another timeout taken by the Warhawks. Brought to you in part by Paragon Casino Resort, where the action's exciting, the flavors are enticing, and the mood is always inviting. They're there when you need to get away. This is how we play, and who knows? May talk about Paragon Casino Resort a good bit here <laughs> down the stretch. But my point again, it's hard to get those guys up with this type of matchup. It is what it is. And coming off two heartbreaking losses, pretty big challenge for the coaching staff this week. Well, fortunately for LSU, they have a 24 to 14 lead because they pretty much offensively were about as productive tonight as they have been the last two games. That is, they don't get points. They move the ball between the 20s, but don't get any points out of it. Tonight, they got some points, and they were able to keep the other team down to 14. But those are not good signs for anybody. Uh, you know, the LSU played hard, but they got to play better than this. Second down and eight late in the fourth quarter again. No surprise handoff TDP runs right into the pile. Maybe got to the line of scrimmage. That's about all at the 33. And once again ULM refusing to take those timeouts with them on their way back to fun row. They call another one. Timeout brought to you by Paragon Casino Resort. Your home for big action in the Bayou State. Stop by anytime. Let's get it started. 
this is how we play. Now, hopefully, Gordy Rush, LSU gets a couple of the guys who were unable to go tonight healthy. Hopefully, Jack Bash, who, as you said, kind of came off in the third quarter. Hopefully, he's going to be all right because they're going to need the energy, but they're going to need personnel next week against Texas A&M, a very, very stingy defense. Yeah, absolutely. They got Eddie Ingram back tonight, and hopefully you'll continue getting some people healthy. Look, next week's going to be a ball game. And I think you're exactly right. It's tough to come after those two games, Alabama and Arkansas, beat up a, a game that you're expected to win and also knowing that A&M is next week. You know, football coaches will tell you it's about this game. It's about this game. Players look at the schedule. They know what's coming up next week. You're playing for a bowl game. There's no love lost between those two teams. And I think it's going to be a close ball game next week. Third down and eight. Ball at the 33-yard line, middle of the field with a minute 41 to go in this game. No more timeouts for Louisiana Monroe. Hand off to TDP again, just charges forward down to the 32 yard line. A gain of a yard, it will be fourth and seven. In under 90 seconds now. LSU doing a little calculation on this near sideline as Max Johnson stands back looking to see what the call will be. They can run the clock down to 50 seconds and then make a decision on fourth down. And it appears that will be what they will do. So we'll wait another 12 seconds or so. LSU again having all three timeouts. And they will use their first of the ball game tonight. Timeout brought to you in part by the Draft Room at Paragon Casino Resort, the best place to catch every major sporting event while enjoying an extensive beer list and fan favorite food menu. At Paragon Casino Resort, this is how we play. So Patrick was close. They could run it to 50. Ed taking no chances. Burns the timeout with 53 seconds. LSU looking at fourth down and seven. If you haven't had a chance to get out to see some LSU basketball this year, you certainly are missing out. Tigers will be in action with Will Wade and company on Monday night. Really good challenge. Tough mid-major in Belmont coming in. And then Kim Mulkey and the women's basketball team in-state meeting with Tulane on Tuesday. Be a 50-yard field goal tries. They send out Cade York with 53 seconds remaining just inside the far side hash, kicking towards the north end zone. Kick is on the way, and the kick is good. Add another 50-yarder to the ledger for Cade York. That will make it 27 to 14 with 46 seconds remaining in this game. You'd obviously love for the score to be more lopsided if you're an LSU fan, but from a coaching standpoint, Doug, Cade York, as good as there comes in college football, missed earlier tonight, 44 yards, very well within his range, but you can get a chance there to keep that guy pretty confident, comes in, knocks down the 50-yarder. And this is a tough kick because everybody expects you to be able to make it from there. It was only a 10-point lead, now it's 13, and now it closed it out because there's nothing that ULM can do about that. That is because of the field goal. Not only that, but it makes one of our jobs easier probably when the game is over. <laughs> Tigers go eight plays, 13 yards, two minutes and 34 seconds. That is your Caesar Sportsbook scoring drive. Extend the lead 27 to 14. Avery Atkins is going to kick it back with 46 seconds, but the ball would not cooperate. Falls off the tee. He'll reset it again. Here's the approach. Avery puts a foot into it. And once again, Boogie Knight will watch it sail into the end zone. And with 46 seconds, ULM will come out. See what they can do as LSU looking to pick up their fifth win of the season. ULM would fall to four and seven. And both teams back in their respective conferences next week. Friday, day after Thanksgiving, it'll be Monroe and Lafayette battering, battling for the University of Louisiana moniker. LSU will be back here taking on Texas A&M. So you come in this week, you need two wins to be bowl eligible. 
We're 46 away, seconds away from accomplishing that first step. As Chandler Rogers empty in the backfield, takes the snap, and the quarterback runs up the middle of the field. Gets 11 yards to the 36-yard line. A first down, Jay Ward eventually coming up from the safety spot to put him on the ground. 37 seconds, clock moving fourth quarter. Moments in this game, ULM had their opportunities to climb closer. Just couldn't connect on a couple of key opportunities as the throw out to the far side is a three-yard gain. Makes it second down and seven as Jackson hauls in yet another catch. That's his second of the night. Down to 13 seconds. Rodgers with the snap. Drops it off. Malik Jackson, a swing pass to the running back, and Micah Baskerville shuts that play down soon, forces him out of bounds at the 39-yard line. And that will be the final play of the nope. He's out of bounds, so it'll stay with five seconds. They'll have to snap it one more time. LSU will send out the prevent way on down the field. LSU will burn their second time out of the game, second of the half. <laughs> time out brought to you in part by Paragon Casino Resorts. Marie Showroom bringing you today's best live concerts and comedy. Come turn your night up at Paragon Casino Resort. This is how we play. Five more seconds. 27-14 LSU with the lead over ULM. A reminder, you can stuff your stockings this season, play $100,000 Happy Holidays from the lottery, went up to 15 times, and you could win up to $100,000. Visit your favorite lottery retailer, ask for 100,000 Happy Holidays. Must be at least 21 to purchase. Yeah, Chris, LSU went happy with that prevent defense. Uh, the DBs, the, the prevent guys were down near the goal strike, the goal, the, uh, you know, the end zone, that was about a 75, 80 yard pass. They're now at the 25. <laughs> They're at a more reasonable depth for prevent. Well, they may be a little gun shy after that Florida game. They're going back as far as they can. Here's the handoff on the final play without a penalty. And up across midfield will be Malik Jackson. He's pulled out at the 47 yard line. The horn will sound, and this one is in the books. LSU puts down Louisiana Monroe by a final of 27 to 14. Tigers again pick up their fifth win of the year. Warhawks will head back North Louisiana, now four and seven in the 2021 campaign. Tigers a winner tonight. Final again, LSU 27, Louisiana Monroe 14 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hello. Oh, so glad you could make it. How have you been? And with whom am I speaking on this fine day? Uh, Joe. You sure about that? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Joe. So what are you looking for today? Something fun. Joe, have I got the perfect thing for you. You do? I do. October scratch-offs from the lottery. Sounds great. Introducing the October scratch-offs from the lottery. Match three tripler win up to $3,000. Gold win up to $12,000. And lucky seven where you could win up to $100,000. Pick up all three today. Must be at least 21 to purchase. With Early Paycheck, you can get your direct deposit up to two days earlier. That's another reason banking with Capital One is the easiest decision ever. Even easier than deciding to open the biggest birthday gift first. Happy birthday to you. Which one are you going to open first? The pony. Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is banking with Capital One even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. No fees or minimums on new consumer accounts. Capital One and name member FDIC. This is Richard Zuschlaw, CEO of Acadian Ambulance Service. On behalf of all the Acadian employee owners, please be careful while driving. Always use your seatbelt and never text and drive. This is Richard Zuschlaw, CEO of Acadian Ambulance Service. On behalf of all the Acadian employee owners, please be careful while driving. Always use your seatbelt and never text and drive. Welcome in to the Fighting Tiger Post Game Report on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Here again from the booth is Chris Blair. 27 is more than 14, and for sure in 2021, the Tigers happy to take it tonight. They defeat the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks out of the Sunbelt Conference. LSU with the win, picking up their fifth win of the season. 
They now will get ready next week. Back to SEC action to finish out the regular season. They'll host the Texas A&M Aggies right back here at Tiger Stadium. And Doug, we talked about it a good bit in that fourth quarter. LSU did not seem like they were super inspired tonight. Again, offensively and defensively without some key players and key pieces. But after two heartbreaking losses where they played so well, it was just hard to get that energy back up tonight. Something tells me it won't be near as hard, regardless of the outcome of next week's game, to get this team ready. That's right. In retrospect, now that the game is over and you've won it, it's probably better that you were flat because it's going to be easier to be prepared for the game next week because that's going to be a tough game. Texas a has got a really good team. So LSU is in about as good a position now as they can be. But it was ugly tonight, ugly both teams. Uh, but it's over, and LSU won it, and that's what is important right now. Again, LSU, it's an old cliche, but you get the win, now you have your destiny in your hands. And as it turns out this year, the destiny is hoping to get to a bowl game, hoping to send out head coach Ed Ogeron on the shoulders of his players with a bowl victory. That's got to be the talk, or at least in the minds of the players, all next week because they get one more shot against an A&M team. LSU moves to 4-0 all time with the win tonight over Monroe. 27-14 is the final. Step aside. We'll come back, continue on the Fighting Tiger postgame report, take a look at some outstanding individual performances. Much more to come your way as we celebrate a Tiger win tonight, 27-14 over Louisiana Monroe on the LSU Sports Radio Network. It takes true grit to wake up every morning dedicated to a higher standard of work. At h and &E Equipment Services, we're leveraging our national fleet of equipment with a local approach, working closely with customers to understand their needs and provide them reliability, fair prices, and the support of a first-class service team. We're an equipment company run by equipment people. Where others stop, we continue. h and &E Equipment Services, the higher standard in equipment rental, sales, parts, and service. Hey LSU fans, we're just talking about what makes the Tiger Nation so different. For starters, no one else gets as loud and wild as we do. No one else loves the teams and the players like we do. And no one else has a mascot as cool as Mike the Tiger. Whatever it is, we love it. Because at Dudley DeBosier, we believe different is good. If you've been injured, experience it for yourself. The Dudley DeBosier difference. Your man, Dudley DeBosier, official partner of LSU Athletics. Baton Rouge, responsible attorney Chad Dudley. Excuse me, do you know how long halftime is at an LSU football game? 14 minutes. 15 minutes. 17 minutes. Um, 12 minutes? 15 minutes, right? Um, I'm pretty sure 10 minutes. Actually, halftime at LSU lasts 20 minutes. Any idea how long it takes to complete a mortgage application? An hour and a half. Uh, two hours. Uh, probably like three hours. I'm going to go with 45 minutes. It could take a couple of days. Actually, at Assurance Financial, you can apply for a mortgage in less time than halftime. Wow. Really? Seriously? Find out more. Visit them at assurancemortgage.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 70876. Welcome back to Acme Oyster House Action. Looks like a fried crawfish tail story of oyster shooter champion, Steve. Yeah, I'd say char-grilled in an herb butter sauce, Bob. Truer words never spoken. Setting the soft shell crab platter for all of us. Well said. A game of onion rings. Craw puppies versus hush puppies. Indeed. This team never misses on the food. Jill? Oh, can't argue with crab cakes and gumbo down here, Bob. One team, one stomach. Thanks, Jill. Back after this tasty commercial message. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. This is the Fighting Tiger Post Game Report on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time now to name some outstanding individual performances. Glad you're still with us on this Saturday night, LSU. Able to get by Louisiana Monroe, the final 27 to 14. Time now to take a look at some outstanding individual performances. And Doug, we'll start with our built Ford Tough special teams player of the game brought to you by your local Southern quality Ford dealers. Well, special teams is the first pick that we're going to go to, and it'll be Avery Atkins averaged 49 yards a punt and threw a beautiful pass that got intercepted off a fake kick. <laughs> so that's just kind of Lanyap for it. 
He had a great game. He's still 50% passing on the year. He's one That's for right. two, but he did the job using the foot tonight to be sure. He is our special teams player of the game presented by Southern Quality Four Dealers. Now on the defensive side of the ball, not quite the performance overall that we've seen the last two weeks, but our defensive player of the game brought to you by Centos, proudly helping local Louisiana businesses stay clean, safe, and ready for the workday for over 35 years. This young man, Doug, already has his LSU degree in hand, played well tonight, made some key stops. Cam Lewis with seven tackles, six, I think, uh, individual tackles, solos. He's become better and better and better and much more instrumental in the LSU overall defense as the season's gone on. Congratulations, Cam Lewis, our defensive player of the game, brought to you by Cintas. Now the offensive side is always brought to you by H&E Equipment Services, the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. Young receivers, great future ahead of them individually, great future ahead for LSU. One of them showed up big time tonight, especially in the first half. Keshawn Boutte's heir apparent. Malik Neighbors, four receptions, 143 yards, a 67-yard touchdown reception. That's 60, He's, yeah. You'd be a great one. 67-yard touchdown reception for Malik Neighbors, connecting with Max Johnson. Longest play of scrimmage for LSU here in 2021. And Malik Neighbors is our offensive player of the game, brought to you by H&E Equipment Services. 27-14, to 14, LSU with the win tonight. Take a timeout, continue on the Fighting Tiger postgame report. Run down the full game stats when we come back on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Chris Blair inviting you to become part of our LSU Athletics podcast world. For the very latest on the Tigers, whenever it's convenient for you, catch Cody Warsham and number 18, Jacob Hester, for the Hey Fighting Podcast.